PKA 668 with our guest, Josh Palalt. Taylor? This episode of PKA is brought to you by ferrodistro.com, Freeze Pipe, and Lock and Load. A bunch of wonderful sponsors we'll talk more about later. Josh, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here as always, guys. Did you have a baby? Yeah, November. Have I not been on since then? It was right uh, around that time. Wow. I, I know I had buzz hair Almost last a time. year. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Boy or girl? It's a girl. My second girl and uh, hopefully final child. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully. You know, they, you know. Might, they know what causes that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, uh, <laughs> uh, I like to think liberalism. I haven't, I haven't been snipping the liberalism. No, <laughs> I just, stole uh, my toothbrush and she's pregnant enough again. for me. I like to think is two of them. <laughs> it was like a Drake thing. Somebody stealing the condom out of the trash. Uh, yeah, we got we got two babies now. She's almost a year old already. The other one's three. Um, Congrats, man. Last time I was on here, man, I just realized earlier that I look wildly different every time I've been on PKA. Last time I had a leather jacket and a shaved head. And I remember Kyle was like, you look like you're fresh out of American History X. Uh, <laughs> first time I was on, I was like 25 pounds heavier than I am now. Like, man, it's wild that just having fast growing hair and fast changing weight oh yeah dude if you scroll back you. through the history of the show it looks like i've been five different guys yeah that's like, a, just, i already feel like of, that about myself so i can only imagine fans. yeah <laughs> oh, that, that was if i were my main gauge if I were like it's drake, great losing weight feels good if i were like drake and i had dirty whores going through my trash can for used condoms to impregnate themselves mm. taylor would be on full-time salary to give me cum condoms like every day no i need one tonight bro i need one tonight <laughs> just so that just so that I could eventually get to paternity court and be like, huh, weird, huh? And just see the look in her face, just see the look yeah. in her eyes when she does. She said, but, but I took it from the trash and th- oh, that would be- it was his assistant. Oh. That puts Taylor at great risk. But they'll never guess. Tell them who Taylor they'll never is. suspect. Yeah. <laughs> he just he just Taylor? needs a, a DNA scapegoat. He's not going to yeah. sell me down the river. You know, I, I would get Alex Rose. Someone twenty three and me six gum. years from now, and now Taylor's I, I in the a black out there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little vengeance because then you're like, aha, you had your your pussy blown out by a big headed baby for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine no, oh my God, I can put that together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my seed has got to make crime. giant children, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a hate crime, though. If it was the wrong race, it'd be even funnier if it was just a tiny Asian child. <laughs> you could accuse the trying to like, figure oh, this out. No, he could, Kyle could still be the father. Asian skips a generation. <laughs> Damn it. They're trying to True. do math on it, making a Mendel Square or something. No, no, no. Zach no. Has he's fascinated. They have a bill on the table that one night stands will no longer give the availability for paternity and child support. What? Where There's do no they have this bill way. and who has this bill and what happened to it after they tore it up and threw it away? Because because they hit you up for paternity when you for, for all sorts of crazy things. Like like you could act. There are cases of, of 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 women of men being raped and then having to pay fraternity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there are cases it, where the man wasn't the father and he still had to pay paternity. Yeah, like it, That's it is. It is a yeah. Like she cheated, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah, you're still on the hook. Yeah, you're kind of being dad like." I'm while. gonna kill myself in front of you and your whole family. <laughs> <laughs> the kid that's I'm not you ruining was. Christmas. You try but to do not that to me. before I spend all the money. <laughs> <laughs> be, be like, after I credit Max, I'm showing up at your Christmas Eve mm-hmm. at, in your family's house, and no one there will ever be able to look at. A I'm Christmas gonna buy tree things again. exclusively that you have no value for, <laughs> like, like restaurant <laughs> food, movies. <laughs> i mean there's like that paternity do you remember uh there's that black guy the black kid who like looks nothing like bill clinton but claims to be bill clinton's kid they're like every once in a while they like you see something about that where like they'll they'll write an article and like sometimes (laughs) depending on what side it is it'll like show a picture of this guy and then bill clinton and people will be like damn almost spit an image and it's like <laughs> he looks nothing like Bill Clinton he's on the saxophone <laughs> yeah yeah that was, that would oh be, he was like dress he's got a, a big mac and a saxophone in his That'd hand be hilarious. clearly bill clinton yeah big mac and a sax. And I think Bill his did girlfriend a lot of looks fucking, just like monica but i don't think that guy has a case and then i guess you could go the other way because there's the, there's people who have to be careful about their condoms and then there are people who are who want as many illegitimate children as possible. Who's that? Who's Elon that guy Musk. who's got like 15? Elon's got like a like nine or something. That's small time. Doesn't and Nick Cannon? Have there's like, like a there's like a kids. rapper Nick or, Cannon got or hella. in the yeah. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon has like how Nick Cannon's many, got a ton of kids. How many offspring does that man have now? 
and they all got wild ass names too. <laughs> He's got like twenty kids by like. 15 women does and he pay all the child superhero support? names mm. yeah he's happy yeah, he's so. making a legacy <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how he sees is. it yeah I, I don't think there's any women who say that elon didn't come through with the child support um there is something about him fussing in a state where there's no cap i think in california like there's no cap and he's paying like a million dollars a month and it's like this is insane oh, wow. but um but uh, still, yeah, Elon Musk is building a legacy. He wants to have lots of babies. He doesn't need relationships with these babies. And he pays for the child support. He just likes his offspring out there. Good and Good if him. you're hoping to like have a nuclear family with Elon Musk, then you know you, you pick the wrong guy. <laughs> but... If you're like, you know what? I get like a million dollars a month for 18 years. Yeah. And uh, and he gets a kid and we both agree that this is a win-win, then it could be. The worst thing about him is using like punctuation in his kids' names, like dashes and stuff. It's a joke, joke. but it's like, that's That's not a good joke. There's nothing wrong with that. So first of all, you know, nobody what? Would, you, would you name your son like Zither and then like a yeah if he was and... heir to the greatest fortune on the planet sure he can be called shit pile if he wants to it can be anything that's what a I'm bad saying name is, yeah nobody like, what about yeah, like but, Thomas? But, but the girls would be like oh I gotta get that shit pile energy in me like, like they wouldn't care because you're worth <laughs> 80 billion dollars or whatever I look you could have picked a better name what I'm suggesting is it's just some shit on paper to like look cool nobody calls that kid that they call him fad or something a, a reporter was like, X. "Hey, how's tr- Trick Nine Double X Delta?" And, he, and then Elon's like, "You mean Bill? What? <laughs> yeah. Huh? He's like your son? Oh, I, I forget. Yeah. Every, yeah, every time he's, Elon he's gets good. a temporary password, he's like, "That's a perfect name." And then he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> That's a sick line. Then, lowercase Q. Throws it in there. Yeah, lowercase Q. <laughs> There's that. I think he has like three kids with X in the name, which is like he's a big it's, fan it's of. It's not that unique anymore once you have three kids with X in the name. Yeah. Should be at least, or I guess by ratio, what's he have? A dozen kids? I didn't think Elon had that many, and I thought they were from ex like Nines. married marriages that had eventually not worked mm. out, but like marriages. Whereas Nick Cannon is like spreading the I seed. Mean, he, he's yeah. having like a baby born every week, right? Like he's <laughs> like, he's he farming. could host his own like baseball tournament. Got him lined he, up. Like multiple. There'll teams. be a time ten or fifteen years from now when. Oh shit! It, it'll be like you know when the Holocaust, when they had that huge field of people, and it's like these are the children that Oscar Schindler saved, and it's just this huge ocean of Jews that he that that Schindler said it's going to be like that. But Nick Cannon's children in like 30, 40 years, it's going to be a sea of people. So yeah. Elon Musk has eleven children with three different moms, and I'm reading now to see what his relationship with the moms. I don't think he married all three women, but I'm looking. That's less than I thought. I thought it was at least like four or five different women personally. Yeah, yeah, for I mean, 11 I mean, kids, I thought it was more than three, but I was wrong. Yeah, I was and actually, cool, I thought it was like, less than 11. I always wanted to name a kid, like, or not wanted to, because I had the opportunity, but like yeah. XP, XXJQA, XXUXQL, but all of them are silent except for Paul. Like just P-A-U-L and the rest of the letters are silent. <laughs> and then you... That's what he looks at. Like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, it's going to be like, right? yeah, the, the A, the R, both Qs, the D, the L, that's all silent. Just yeah. wait, your name's Paul apart. Your name's Bob? You don't yeah. pronounce yeah. the question mark. <laughs> the upside down question mark is not oh, a, actually pronoun- pronounced there. <laughs> is there no part of you, Josh, that's like you want to try for both? Try for a, a boy also? Or you're like two is the number in your head. Like whatever I get rolling the dice is all good. Yeah, it was pretty much. We, we kind of wanted to feel it out after number two if we were going to try for a boy once we found out it was a girl. And um, man, two is enough for us for now. I can just say we got a lot on the plate with two. Our three year old is manic wild all the time. And um it's just a little too much on our plate man for our own like sanity i don't think three is the answer right now i think we can get our hands full with two sure i looked I up imagine. the musk thing because i'd be curious if i was a listener his first five kids were with his first wife and his next six kids were with two girlfriends one of which okay. was an employee okay uh, oh i know uh i know one of them i mean it just makes sense and one of them uh, um it's probably hard to meet someone who's not an employee for him uh, I think one of them is, <laughs> is trying to get their kids back from him right now or something. They're saying that he won't let her see the kids. There's always some contention with Elon Musk and, and one of those women in particular because he has that trans child mm-hmm. and there's the whole debacle there that, I don't know, we see like not even half of the, the, the real story, but it seems very uh, uh, contentious. You know, I, I think that person changed their name. 
so that it wouldn't be Musk and wants nothing to do with Elon. And Elon blames perhaps liberalism slash that person's mother for, you know, putting the trans evil in him or, or whatever, story. you know, and you don't know, maybe that's what they did. Maybe, maybe she just kept getting them vaccinated over and over and over <laughs> until they went trans. 55 boosters. Are you crazy? <laughs> How much fluoride have you put in that kid's water? You turned him trans. <laughs> you turned him gay, straight, and then trans again. What have you done? Did a little turned inside out from all that vaccine. Yeah. I didn't get any of the boosters. I didn't. I didn't really see a need. It just kind of. I don't know. The news stopped reporting, so it seems safe. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of getting a booster. Huh? I, I got. I got one booster last <laughs> year. I, I was going to Mexico. There's going to be all these flights and stuff, and people in Mexico City. And, mm. So I got a booster. Dirty. But <laughs> um, you can get your flu shot and COVID booster together. I was like, I might just do that. Yeah. Does that not kick your ass? I haven't tried it. When um, I got a flu shot, I feel kind of sick. And the second time, when I got a COVID booster, I only got one. I felt sick then. I could imagine both of them at the same That's time. That's how you know it's working. Me. Shut up. I use it as an excuse not to lift weights that day. So it's not all bad. Uh, I need to go get another you just booster. Get the workout. You don't yeah, have to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just got my booster yesterday, guys. I'm getting another one tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I got my booster this month. Thank you for I'm my fucked. excuse. <laughs> yeah. You guys got to get, it, get up. Well, I got one coming up in a few months. So I can't go work out today, guys. I'm sorry. Or tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, dude. So my new fish tank came in yesterday and uh, it's it's pretty big in my mind. It's about two feet tall on a three foot stand. And uh, then it's four foot by three foot. Right. So it weighs four hundred and eighty eight pounds and it came and I've been so excited. I waited seven months for this thing. I've been waking up every morning and the first thing I do is crack open my laptop and check its shipment status. And, you know, just for seven months, nothing happened. Anyway, it finally arrived yesterday and it is my Christmas. I'm just like checking it out. I set up the stand almost immediately and now I have to get the fish tank on the stand. It weighs 488 pounds and uh, I'm like, I'm going through my list and, and like most of the people that I'm thinking of are either like a little incompetent or not strong. Like the most competent people I know aren't good at lifting shit. You guys would have been great. Like it, imagine you had to carry a couch down the stairs. There are some people where you'd say, nah, I, I'll just go solo on this. Right? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to power it over my head like an ant. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then there are some people, you you know, you would just get it. If they had a suggestion on a twist or something, better than average chance is a good idea, et cetera. Yeah. So I'm going through my list and I'm just like, I, I think I'm going to go solo on this. And uh, you know, not totally solo because Jackie's helping me. Like, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to put this on that. Hold that still so it doesn't move while I put the tank on top of it. And uh, Jackie is just going wild watching me like tip this 488 fish tank, 488 pound fish tank, like on its edge and working up the, their garage is like two steps to lead into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like muscling it over that a step at a time, making it go. I have unlocked a new kink in this woman. She is just all about me. Move. Like today, I brought down a reclining chair because we're gonna put it in that room, and she's just like, hmm. "Oh, that, that is <laughs> yeah, a very tactical corner. kink of hers." Does she also <laughs> love when you mow the lawn and do the dishes? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. You ruined it, Taylor. <laughs> it's ruined now. I oh, bet if you got some Atlas stones, she'd get bored quick. <laughs> Suddenly you're like moving your own go kart and she's like bored. Like couldn't you yeah, be bothered? Well, but, sure. so you move her recliner downstairs. Out of me carrying or just lifted big heavy bulky shit around. Women do tend to get like the that. uh get the aquarium installed. So to I spent today um doing the plumbing. The plumbing's kind of complicated. There's a, another 60 pound or 60 gallon tank underneath it that holds all the filters and stuff. And what I've gotten as far as running to Home Depot, buying all the appropriate fittings and dry fitting everything together. But it was time to do the show. And I'm like, I don't want to rush the glue up or anything. That's that's it's for another day. What's it going to yeah. weigh with the water in it, man? How many gallons? All together. See, the question is almost wrong. But like, there's like 160 gallons, but there's mm -hmm. some rock and sand where the... Yeah. Water isn't, which is it displaces the gallons to lower that number, but it's even heavier than water. So, uh, 
If you just do 150 times nine, that'll probably get you pretty close. So a big that. number. Yeah, That'd and then big. add about it's 350. 550 pounds to that. And it's salt and water. Does that add that much, actually? Yeah, yeah. Salt water is heavier than fresh water, but I hopefully work that in. I don't know. Pound a gallon or something? I like think it's much? 8 versus 8.8, .8, something like that, or 8 versus 8.5. 8.8 was so easy for calculations. Yeah, I know what? it's heavier. And I guess it depends on the... I guess it depends on the... Why is 8, it, eight easy? That's a very complicated number to me to multiply to, by things. Prove it, Kyle. 8.8 .8 times 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a, you had a zero. Move you called my bluff. Over. I'm out. <laughs> um, but anyway, maybe 1,500 pounds, roughly. Yeah, and I guess it depends on the salinity of the water, obviously, too, because you see that Dead Sea uh, mm. shit on YouTube where the people float and they're right. just barely depressing the water because it's so salty, which is why yeah. nothing's in it. It's way saltier, it's though. The dead like, sea. fish can't even live in there. Oh, it's the Dead Sea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you guys are right, but the, um, the salinity of ocean water is super-duper consistent throughout the entire planet. Okay. So you go to the Dead Sea, it changes, but it, in the ocean, it's really consistent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I look so I forward to seeing, seeing everything installed. Yeah, I hope it doesn't crash to the floor or anything, but I should ah, be sad. Yeah. Nah. That would suck. That would be like, like, seven a, months. A, like a crack in that tank would be cataclysmic. Like, yeah. I, it's, it's really, I mean, the, the car was just struck by lightning. I'm not sure which is a bigger problem. It's because you talked about selling your soul to the devil a couple weeks ago. <laughs> That's what it that. is. Things have yeah. been going wrong. Apparently, Were you the car. Apparently, it's hard to sell yourself no. soul directly to Satan himself. But there's like sixteen demons or something. And mm. I, I was reading up, and like each one, you would go, you would approach that demon because they provide help with X, Y, or Z. There's like a the same way. You're like, oh, this is Saint Christopher. It's for when you lose something or whatever mm -hmm. that nonsense yeah, yeah. is. There's like a demon for uh, like gaining power over people, or maybe a demon for gaining possessions. There's, there's like 16 or 18 of them. I imagine so the still... demon that gives cash just has a line out the door, right? That mm. like also oh, health issues, maybe financial value comes to mind, but yeah, the health but, uh, issues but... demon. Yeah, that that seems like a risk. Yeah. Yeah. Do like there's any, uh, any any actual um, <laughs> you know demon worshippers out there who would like a fresh soul? Um, let us know. Um, I'm currently looking around for someone who's interested. Looking for a good deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, Josh, would you sell free? your would you sell your soul to the devil for something? Because Kyle and I are are big time team. Don't sell your soul let to me, the devil. Let me lay out and the Woody scenario. Woody doesn't care. Woody treats it like it's some blase thing. Yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me let me lay out the exact scenario. So no, don't I think say, it won't get competitive offers from the Tooth Fairy. So I'm talking about I'm talking about getting a guy episode. in the call who's an actual like demon worshiper or some sort of grand wizard of them or some such and and he <laughs> enter into a contract mm -hmm. with Woody and meanwhile Woody has a piece of paper that I've mailed him that has the contract written out and then he he lances his thumb puts a little bloody thumbprint on there whatever sure. and uh, agrees to sell his soul to this man um for the as a middleman for the devil I suppose or some demon um and you know make the whole thing official and I was just saying. I would not do that. <laughs> no, I don't think so, man. I mean, like, theoretically, I've never been, I don't remember ever having been just a soul. If you're signing this contract, that, mean that, that means it exists. You're going on to somewhere. If that's true, this paper proves it or whatever, then I don't want to risk the ownership of that. Wait, I don't wait, know. I'm just going to sure take my odds. this contract odds. doesn't just prove that the buyer's stupid? And that, I mean, if that's things. the case, then sure. But I mean, if we're talking about this supernatural paranormal scenario where you know you're going to get this result that's for the your point. soul. I'm not sure. No, yeah, we don't no, I know. Am not sure. I yeah. am 99 percent sure that my soul will not then be in possession of a demonic otherworldly being. Oh, OK. So you're saying I'm just in case. Sure. But this just is, in case. Yeah, this is like a PKA I buckle up, motherfucker. That <laughs> <Yeah>. claims <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a car accident in my life. Every time. Clickety click, clickety clack. Buckle it up. Not True. selling yeah. my salt any, 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 no. I guess, I guess you got a good point. A it's a little bit too high risk for potential reward there. I guess you got a good point. Even if you take that philosophically, if it's a 1% chance, you know, of this eternal thing going on, then maybe you're yeah. right. Maybe you shouldn't trade it for the next okay, 50 years of success, way. you know? Let's mm -hmm. say that you're not selling your soul. Mm -hmm. That um, Selling somebody else's? Done. Immediate. Death or $10 million. <laughs> it's not 50-50. 99% chance you get the cash. Would you roll the dice on that? Nah. How do you die? Instant, Quickly. Instantaneous yeah. death? Yeah. Like, just, do you uh, know that you got it wrong? 
It'd be like the Thanos, hit the button yeah. fall. Where you do oh, sort I, of a, a painless honest, look, turn into dust. I didn't think I'd make it this far. And this oh me too. <laughs> the world, the world you didn't think of, you'd make it to 37? Oh, I thought I, I didn't think I'd make it to 30 like 10 years ago. I thought uh, you like, were gonna blow yourself every time up. I, every time I pulled ago. that trigger, I was like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you did you know, almost like, die like, a couple times. That's true. I figured something would happen. I just but, recently um, saw on Twitter yeah. that video. Oh my god. It, it crops like, up like, every like, once in a while, and everyone's like, like "Where's you, FPS Russia? I wish he would come back." <laughs> if you think of it like, um, if you think of it like that, right? Where like I don't even know I've gotten it wrong. I'm just gone. Yeah, why not push the button? Why not push the button? You'll never know what happened. E either A, now you've got ten million dollars, or B, silence rides over. You do that silence. a fifty-fifty shot. You would hit that button. I thought he said ninety nine. No, no, I said ninety nine to one. Oh, oh ninety nine to one. Okay. I give you better odds than that, Taylor. <laughs> That's like seventy five. <laughs> and I pull it twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's, like, That's an twice. interesting question. How many times would you pull it? Is ten double million or I, I, I'd get my ten. I'd be like double or nothing. And you, and the devil would be like, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> like no, I get an extra. Account. So I want a one up like Mario, motherfucker. I get a one up, <laughs> extra life. Bling, up in the top right of the corner of the screen, or you get the salt and ten million. And he'd, be, he'd be like, "Shit, I got this guy's a good bargain." One of those steel, with those souls that I already took off somebody. I could get it if we go on a roll against Satan. Oh, man, what do you value a one up as? A one up is worth way more than ten million dollars. Yeah, he's true. gonna he's gonna bamboozle you. Like, I you, don't you, get in a you don't want to get in a negotiating battle. Why with do you the think devil? the one up is so valuable? Like, what? What happens when you're nine lives, say, right? You die and then it's you like you watch. fall over dead and then you stand right back up. Good as new. Okay, okay, Kyle. And hopefully they replace the kidney Shockingly, failure or whatever. You made it yeah. to 81 years old. You can yeah. hardly remember your name. You drool a little bit and you don't yeah. walk so well. You die. I use okay. Now you bounce back, you drool a little, you can't remember your name, and you don't walk clearly, so well. What kind of deal is Mario this? 3, Mario World? <laughs> I, he's he's running around, fucking swinging that feather thing, doing his spins. He gets he hits uh, one of those plants, Potter plants or whatever, falls. He's little Mario again. Now he shrinks I'll just down. Be little Kyle again. <laughs> I'll die as the eighty-one year old, and I'll fucking one up, like I'll boo -boo, and I'll be little Kyle, and I'll be like, shit, let's do this again with our ten million dollars. We took off twenty million dollars. We took how, off how, how little? <laughs> like you need to find new parents. I want to be eight. I want to be you eight years be old because at eight years old, you're physically strong enough to like. Manipulate the world around you. You could pull switches and knobs, and door handles, and everything. And <laughs> but but, dude, you could walk right up to anybody and punch them in the dick, and they can't say shit. Not only that, you're an eight year old worth twenty million. You're like Macaulay Culkin. You're you're you're. <laughs> this is the this is better it's than anything shit. you could imagine. Now, yeah, I'm absolutely. I'm pulling the button twice, Woody. That's my answer. I'm pulling it twice. If the devil will give me the one up <laughs> and let me be childlike Macaulay Culkin, who punches people in the dick with twenty million dollars. I, I don't want to be eight. Deal. I want to be sixteen because I can't mm. wait eight years to come again. And <laughs> to come and wait. Again. What do you I'm mean? Eight years wait. old. You just I'm have gonna... to wait three years. You just. Right, so, so, so which is worse? Which is worse? As you're as an eight year old with an eighty year old mind, is it worse to find yourself some nine year old poon or to like find some pedophile out there who's down? Ooh. Those are both reprehensible. I don't know. My just all all was, <laughs> if you're down and you have adult like competency and thought processes, you're practically doing the Lord's work by satisfying this guy's needs. Wait, so you're not even like getting to enjoy childhood again in your own scenario? Childhood? You, like, My brain in that body. Fuck childhood. Did you have fun? <laughs> yeah, a lot of. Oh, let's do high fun. school all over while we're at it. Get the hell out of here! No, we're not doing school. School. You're gonna be taken into a foster home and abused, and Satan will be laughing. And that then they're like gonna the, the state is gonna claim your twenty million because they don't just let that hang out on the account for an eight year old. My British, my British lawyer, Mr. McGovern's, <laughs> whatever I say, he has power of attorney over me. But my other dude, fucking Franz, he'll kill that motherfucker if he says anything I don't like. So the triumvirate that I've created with me at the head, we can do anything legally speaking as an eight year old millionaire. Not at all. You're eight years old. Franz <laughs> is going to be hammering toothpicks under your fingernails until you give him the password, and then he has twenty password. million, and you're eight. That's just not what. Bat, what world are we living in where a password gives away my fortune? A bank account, like whatever. I, I got cash. I haven't invested. 
I deserve to lose if I haven't invested my <laughs> in properly. What are we doing with a one up? I haven't invested. Oh, come on. I don't know if you can have an investment account at eight. Hmm, Power I don't of think attorney. You can. Yeah. He's That's calling the shots. Right. We're making all this happen. My, so you, I, you have I, kind I, of a blank <laughs> check situation going on here. Actually, that I movie didn't pan out like, either. I think that if you can prove you um, are earning your own living, you can like get all this adulthood stuff ahead of schedule. Yeah, I, a, I forget the word for it, but that's, that's emancipation. What's up. Like mm, that? that's about leaving your parents. No, uh, like a financial version. Yeah, yeah. I know. Financial. I, 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 so I hear celebrities doing it occasionally. You have got those kids who are like, "You're taking all my goddamn money. What are you talking about? I'm the one in makeup at five a.m. since I was seven. That used to yeah, happen I, to every single child star. Like so it's like the opposite of a conservatorship. Yeah. It, yes. Or it would be the opposite yeah, of that. It, it, a non. I, I know that. That retarded NFL player who was in that movie where Sandra Bullock... You're going to have to narrow it down. He's from here. Okay. Michael Orr. Blind that, side. Uh, that slow-minded NFL player who Sandra Bullock made the movie about. You know, she comes in like, oh, sugar, you're so big and strong. I bet you play football if you just had a white family take care of you. And he did. And he went to the NFL. And they've had a conservatorship on his ass his whole life. That movie came out when I was a kid. They, they just took the conservatorship off last week. <laughs> yeah, he's been how long has he been family. in the what NFL? saints i don't know how long he played i don't know his career but i know the man like was in the nfl and the movie see here's the thing fuck the nfl like unless you're like a big time guy you're not making that crazy crazy money that movie made like 150 million dollars or some shit mm. you know that was a huge deal and it's his story it's uh it's pretty wild he's Wasn't like radio there, uh... if radio could play ball was there not a part of radio I, I have not seen radio in so long. No, radio could have told well. me that he had some kind is. of uh, skills, didn't he? No, radio he had just, good vibes. He's like Forrest Gump, basically. Oh, no, no, Forrest could play ball. Um, yeah, he no, he, basically in radio, Cuba Gooding Jr. went full retard, and he paid the price. You know, that didn't do very well, because he can't play ball. He's more of a mascot. It's like Rudy, except they never let him play. They just cheer him. Lift him up Didn't on the he, like, he pushed a, a shopping <laughs> cart around like a homeless person with like a ham radio in it. And, yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I remember the most. He had that ham radio at that like time. I radio. thought Cuba was a good actor because I had seen um, Men of Honor with Robert Down. I'm um, with um, um, I can't think of um, it's where he's uh, he played it's the true true life story of Carl Brashear, Brashear the first African American Navy diver. And it's not like when you it's it's a reconnaissance diver or uh, um, not not rescue maybe it's reconnaissance rescue and recovery something like that. Mm -hmm. they, but they they send him down into terrifyingly cold waters in those old timey suits. It's a really good movie. But then he made like eight more stinkers. You ever see Snow Dogs? I did, yeah. but I saw it when I was like eleven, and so I remembered being like, "This is this is all this right." Is dope. Yeah, yeah this is I was that good. age. And then, like a year later, I was like, "That's lame, man." <laughs> but I do remember seeing radio around that same age, maybe a bit younger, and even having the perspective at that time to be like, "Ooh, mm, th this is a little ham-handed here. Like this guy's <laughs> really, really retarded." In this a way that Forrest well. Gump is not even close to. No, like Forrest had like Some a half sense. dozen pretty impressive skills. He was great at ping pong. Ping -pong. He was really fast at football. He did. What is a baffling ultra marathon across the country? Seemingly mm -hmm. came up a uh, uh, designer, the the smiley face guy. That was an accident. He was a he ship's captain and a multimillionaire. You added yeah. Yeah. Look, so he was a good in, investor and a ship. That was one of my favorite shrimp. parts of the of the story is that Forrest was the only um, shrimper <laughs> who was dumb enough to be out shrimping in the hurricane. Yeah. So his was the only boat that survived because everyone else was lost at their you know moorings or whatever mm -hmm. and then now he owns the whole shrimp industry because he's the only one with a fucking boat left floating uh, <laughs> i like that little part because it kind of made sense some of the other stuff it's like i don't know have any of you guys ever read the book me. i read no. the sequel yeah. dude first it's one of the worst second. books i've ever read in my entire life he's <laughs> in, in the book he's a math savant he becomes the world chess grandmaster he goes to outer space <laughs> <laughs> whole kit and caboodle he becomes a professional wrestler and a rock star smokes a lot of pot it's insane and it's very very loosely related it's amazing to me that they took that and cut out the garbage acid head part and made it into one of the best american films ever because that movie Did, is a, i mean the book's a clusterfuck in the book was he more or less retarded than in more the movie? 
more. He was basically like non-functioning other than math. He, he was pretty much at the point where he stumbled into all of these things. He was a hyper genius for math, and that's why he got sent into space. And then he crash landed on his way back from space and lived in the jungle with cannibals where he learned how to play chess from one of the cannibals and then went on to win the gr- Grandmaster Championship because it was a math problem in his head. The, the cannibal the tribe knew how to play chess. They had chess. Yes, they had chess. And they also he also learned how to sign language with a chimpanzee that lived in the jungle with him. So it's they, an that, insane that tribe, book. That tribe skipped some steps in like the Civ <laughs> where like they just like no we don't need pottery or archery <laughs> I was gonna call just straight pottery. to strategy yeah. games yeah yeah it was like they had had some kind of leak you know they had like fabric clothes and things they'd had contact with society or something and it was just the most absurd and i remember reading it going this is how did they make this movie out of this what genius had this vision yeah. to go take out the the stoner parts and you got an amazing story here because the rest of it's in it the the movie is in the book there's just way more i was shocked by what a foul mouth forrest gump had in the second book there's like, a second one yeah i wanted to know what happens <laughs> next that's why i read it like I, I didn't want i did i read watched the movie and then i was like i need to know more about forrest gump when does he stop so, running <laughs> it was a terrible second book it sounds like it was right there with the first uh he cursed a lot he became a pig farmer he had some brilliant idea to put the poop in a cave system but then the methane gas like caught fire and exploded the entire city like from a from below and the all the poop came over everyone and the just landscape was destroyed. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was, was nine was full of gold. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds be, about right. You want to hear a sad story? I heard this today. It's how sad. It's a little depressing. So in the 60s, uh this uh this guy became the first person to ever circumnavigate the globe in a rowboat, not a rowboat, a, a, a sailboat solo. Mm-hmm. And um he made a pit stop in Australia. He, he left England, went all the way down uh, Africa, um, past Australia, around Cape Horn of South uh, um, America, and then back up, right? It's by himself. And nobody thought it was going to be a big deal, but the public really clung on to it. It became a big news story. And uh, the newspaper that had paid him a very small amount, actually, for his story did bonkers sales because they had the guy's story that they could print and publish. So they were like, we got to get some more of this. We've made a ton of money off this guy. It didn't cost us anything. Let's sponsor our, a new race around the, around the globe. Um, but this time, no stops. That'll be the new thing. And we'll, we'll like whoever gets the best time gets $70,000 in adjusted monies. And mm-hmm. uh, money. So it brought out the best in the world, like a dozen of the best um, solo fucking uh, sailors in the world. They had these wild accomplishments that they had all achieved in various um, fields of, of sailor sailing. Uh, one of them had been in the Navy for many years, just all sorts of stuff, except for one guy. This guy needed the money, okay? This guy was an, an Englishman who uh, he had a business selling navigational gear for boats. It was failing. And the loan that he had taken out to start his business that fed his family was being called upon by by the man who'd given it to him. And he's in this real pinch where he can't pay that man. He can barely feed his family. But here's this opportunity. He's an engineer by trade or, or by education. And, uh, and so he tells the man who, who's wanting the money back, I don't have. It, but here's what we could do. I can win this race. I'm an engineer. I can design a boat that's better than anyone else's boat. I can sail it more uh, efficiently than anyone else can. I can win this $70,000 and more. And the guy thought about it and was like, yeah, all right. I will pay for your boat. I will, whatever, wherever you need, I'll build your boat. You do the race. But if you don't win, you pay me back for the boat. So now it's a no-lose situation for this guy. You know, he's, it, whether, whether he wins the race or not, this guy's getting his money back. He's, he's happy to do it. So he starts building the boat. But it's quickly getting to the deadline for when he needs to leave. Everyone's left at different times, but there's a, a window. Oh, they're going to okay. time you. But they're like, all right, from May to October, you know, in those five months, you leave. And I think the prevailing winds or currents or tides or something have something to do with it. It's like, hey, you know, this is our window to do this thing. It's sure. a 10 month race, it's a 10 month race, solo. Okay. Cause we're not stopping in Australia this time. So the newspaper wants to make a big deal of this thing, they, they get everybody fired up. They got like 100,000 people there to crack bottles of champagne and see this guy off, and he is fucking terrified because the boat's not ready. The boat's not ready. 
and he's begging his wife without saying it out loud to give him an excuse not to go. She says he cried all night the night before in bed, weeping aloud. And I said nothing. And she, 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 she's like, she's like, I should have said something because he kept saying, boat's not ready. The boat's what a not bitch. Ready. The boat's not ready. Mm. So they're like, hey, how about we want you to leave from this port, not that one. And he's like, why? It's 100 miles extra for me. They're like, yeah, no, but that's where the crowd can get biggest. We've got we can put every, there's a hotel there for everybody to stay. And there's a big there's a big port that everybody can stand and see you leave. So they did that. 100 miles is nothing. We're going around the fucking planet supposed to take three days two weeks later he hadn't made up those two weeks and everybody's like oh shit this is our guy this is our guy because everybody else is like halfway to the bottom of africa so he takes off and he's right away something breaks like as hmm. he's leaving they're like oh look at that that broke he fixes a little takes off over the horizon it can things continue to break they have his hmm. journals his 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 log books it's just like one thing after another Another screw fell out of the, the wheel down to two. Just all this crazy shit. Like, like he, he's using Morse code. Um, I don't know how that works in the water, but somehow he can, he can communicate with that back to England. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't know how that technology works for the, in the 60s, but basically he's taking on water and he knows he is. He's, he's, getting, he's getting like 30 gallons a day uh, and, and it's trimaran in the in one of the uh, morans, what do you call them, the pontoons or whatever. Yeah. And then seventy five gallons are leaking into the boat every night when he rests. He, but but he can't quit because it's it's this huge embarrassment. He's 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 terrified to fail because they've got the whole country invested in him. They're cheering his name back home. So he realizes he can't win. He realizes he can't even make it to the to like around Africa. So he basically decides. That if he fakes his log books and pretends like he went around the world and just hangs out in the southern Atlantic for, for months and months, then when the other guys come around, he can just fall in behind them. And he doesn't want to win. He just doesn't want to be humiliated. He just wants to finish. He wants Ish. to finish. And and there's and he figures like nobody's gonna look into my log books that heavily because I'll be like eighth place. There's a dozen of us in the race. Four drop out right away. Then three more sink. Then finally, the four remaining make it around Africa. And this guy's losing it. He's been at sea for months and months in the South Atlantic by himself, treading water, basically chilling. And, and he's like, oh, finally, he radios back home, lets him know like, oh, I'm in fourth place or fifth place. I can't win, but I can finish. And they're like disappointed, but it's OK. And then the Frenchman who's in the lead says. Making sailing a contest is against everything that sailing's about. And he turned around mm. and he started sailing around the world in the opposite direction. He said he wanted to do it again. And he did. Um, badass. <laughs> Damn, the badass that guy heavy. was cool. Uh -huh. And then, so now <laughs> it's like, but now there's like an Englishman and like some other guy still ahead of him. Mm -hmm. One of those guys, they both like sink or quit. And so now it's just him. Oh, one of them makes it. The other one sinks. And now he, everybody's looking at him. He's going to win. He, it, like based on where he's, he's telling him he is he's because one guy was prepared for it and took a smarmy French approach and turned around <laughs> like the, the other and 11 so, sank. And so you can see in his log books, he realizes they're going to find me out. I can't go home. So he sells West and he slowly goes insane. And his writings in the log books are like something. It's like poetry mm. mixed with the insane ravings of a madman and a mathematician. So he's, he's so smart that, that there's like these there's equations everywhere. And, and I'm sure they mean something. Like they, they said that, that cognitively speaking, it was much more difficult, all of the for, forging the logbooks than actually just navigating around the planet. They're like, that's a hard thing to do, navigating around the planet. But what he had done, forging all those logbooks and, and the math required was way more difficult. They found his boat, wasn't in it. They got his journals. And they sold him to the newspaper. <laughs> oh my god! His family got Damn. nothing. <laughs> of course. And, uh, what what shitty newspaper body. was this? Some need a boycott. I don't recall which. <laughs> <laughs> it was so sad. But, but they've got Taylor it. will never buy that paper. <laughs> Not once will I buy the Washington Post of 1805. <laughs> the oh god. Yeah, that sounds it, like no one was ready by for the this way. race. It's 1960 something. It's like mid 60s. Oh, so like well into the time that sailing around the world is like whatever. They were the first people to do it. Like, like you're yeah, doing oh, it. Oh, in a sailboat. Sail. In a sailboat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, well no, by yourself in a cell oh, phone. Kyle's yourself. saying that people hadn't been doing it solo until then. Oh, yeah. by the way, uh, ham radios can bounce the signal off of the atmosphere, and it just ping pongs off the Earth atmosphere and goes far beyond line of sight. Did they use Morse code v- using mm-hmm. that? Yeah, it's part of the ham radio. I I have a ham radio license. I'm kind of a if, Renaissance man, if, <laughs> and uh, saying, yeah. you have to learn Morse code to get some of the higher levels of ham radio license. Oh, if he's already to, cheating I, his it. way through the entire race. Like, why could, wouldn't he just be like, you know, easier than forging these books is just pretending to have lost them. Hey, I was taking on so much water, it soaked my oh, log book and totally it destroyed it. Like, like that, that is so much smarter than, but also I like the idea that if I'm ever in a situation like that, I'm absolutely making up math and writing it all over <laughs> whatever place I am. And like, yeah, how long do you think? And he'll be like. <laughs> like, there's there's a lot of threes in that section. You can honestly, tell that he just kind of got honestly, bored. <laughs> honestly, if one of us was writing the crazy math, they'll call Miss Jones the third grade math teacher, and she'll be like, "Nah, <laughs> yeah, right." All they need to know is like order of operations, and like this guy's retarded. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's doing. I would he's draw something that looks like math. Yeah, yeah, yeah like like, 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 like you imagine math. Looks you're like. just doing basic algebra. Yeah, that's. I heard in Oppenheimer they had a. Uh, actually, I saw the podcast of the mathematician they hired for Oppenheimer, because there are some people who get really upset if like the equations on the chalkboard are inappropriate for the scene for the group, etc. <laughs> Apparently, Goodwill Hunting has like bullshit easy math in it, and they act like he's a Fields Medal winner. Let me give something. you an example where you care. All right, it's a hockey movie. They got plays on a chalkboard in the background. Now you care. Okay, that's fair because I, I drew the pl- yeah. I drew the plays instead of someone who knows. It's just X's and, and squigglies. It's just X's. There's there's nine there's players. There's too many. There's too the many ice. X's and not enough O's. I, I would draw up the flying V <laughs> just for people who know that know. Yeah, the flying V. <laughs> that would be that would have been a good end to Miracle, where the American <laughs> teams like flying V, and then they just immediately humiliated because they go. I don't think Miracle on Ice team. is the best hockey movie. It's a good one. Definitely um, a good okay. uh, inspiring Newman, sports it, movie. The one with Paul Newman. Slapstick, just, maybe? I slap shot. Like, uh, slap, slap shot. Everybody I, loves that but me. I, dude, when he puts a bounty on, they're like, you can't put a bounty on. It's like some beer league. You can't put bounties on people. I just did. Yeah. <laughs> and then those yeah, brothers I, I like come out shot. with their teeth knocked out and shit. During the, they start the fight before Hanson the anthem brothers. plays. And yeah, they, they're <laughs> bleeding during the anthem. Like, that's a good scene. Did it bother you <laughs> that the Hanson brothers didn't look tough? Like, nah. they look hockey really. tough to me. They, they look really. like skateboard kids who were, who were like down. Yeah, they did yeah. look like skateboard kids who would a, fight. A lot of their like slap shot toughness was like Danny, or not Danny DeVito, fucking uh, <laughs> uh, that little guy from the fucking casino. Uh, Joe the Pesci. Fucking, Joe Pesci. It was like Joe Pesci style oh, toughness guys. where like the, the brothers, the Hanson brothers weren't like a lot of their fights weren't like squaring up and throwing mm-hmm. dukes. It was like waiting till the other guy skates by them and then taking a dome shot with their stick to their temple. And then everyone like basically being like air bud rules where they're like, well, it is beer league, you know, <laughs> keep keep going or minor league, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely I, my favorite Taylor, hockey movie, slap shot. I, never in all my hockey years. And I'm not that big a hockey player, but I played. Have I seen anyone or heard of anyone putting tinfoil on their knuckles? Is that a thing ever, anywhere? No, or there's what? no way that's a thing. Like, it wouldn't add any mass or anything. They would, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't make it, it hurt. They would oh. tape up their hands, which is a fighting thing, so it kind of made sense. Yeah. But they would put aluminum foil in the tape, if I recall. I don't know and what yeah, good that I, would do. I don't feel like that would help. And I don't, I don't think you're allowed to tape your fists up in the NHL. Like they really? would probably like see that as a penalty. It should be a penalty. Like there's already fighting in it. It's the only major sport with fighting. You shouldn't be able to tape your knuckles. It needs to. <laughs> it needs to have some sort of sense of pomp and circumstance. There's a reason <laughs> for the fights in hockey. If you don't know hockey, you might just be like, oh, it's a dumb sport where they allow fighting. I remember I got into an actual argument with my junior English teacher because like she started like saying in the middle of class like and hockey like there's no reason for the fighting it's just barbaric it's just ridiculous no other sport has it and like already she and i did not see eye to eye and like we had a probably 15 to 20 minute like debate that became a bit of an argument 
about mm. how wrong she was. And she had no knowledge of hockey other than that she hated the fighting part. And so she had no answer to like the. Let me ask you this. Steve there are hockey. other leagues where fighting is more penalized. I don't think there's very much fighting in international hockey. Mm. Are the concerns, uh, for people who don't know, they basically say fighting stops people from taking runs at their best player because the guy mm -hmm. who takes a run will get beat up. Fighting stops people from doing stuff like slashing to the helmet or poking or maybe just you know, jamming you with the butt end of the stick. Um, all these things have consequences in the form of your team's tough guy dropping the gloves and beating you up. And mm -hmm. they say it keeps players in line. But there are other leagues with less fighting. Do those bad things happen a lot in those leagues? In those leagues, like it's also a different culture in different leagues. Like Europeans, like it's not nearly as physical a game. A lot of that comes down to the fact that NHL is on smaller ice surface than the larger European style ice. And mm -hmm. so it's just a different play style. A lot of it is that Americans and Canadians in particular play the game of ice hockey very very heavy and very physical canadians in particular like for a long More time a canadians lot. just ran rough shot over people because i'm like you might anticipate like oh the russians they're so tough and all that like they're still european hockey players and so like a big problem for russians coming over here back in the day when they first started was like they'd get slobber knocked by some big ontario boy who'd been training for that his entire life the philadelphia so, flyers basically the flyers with the game that the was Broad street bullies fucked them up. That's the worst thing for my argument pro fighting because the, the Broad <laughs> street bullies had no, they didn't even try to win a lot of the time. They were a great team, but when it became clear they were losing, they're like, you know, we could, if we take out, let's do a little mental math here. They only have five <laughs> starters. What if they had two starters? Like, <laughs> that's good for our team. Cobra so, Kai method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheat and knock I them out. I, I think yeah we've talked about that before. I would guess the um, the stakes are higher though, right? And and if you're playing in the NHL, I would imagine there's a lot of money on the line if your team Definitely. wins or loses. So I don't know mm. what they're playing for in Europe. Just they're just smaller. Also leagues. money and 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 I think you yeah, but it's that Olympics. European money. Is People that... tend to care about the Olympics quite a bit. That's true. Yeah, yeah. true. When I was younger, I thought it was allowed to fight. I always had that stereotype as well until I was about 15 or 16, and I knew a guy who was really into hockey. He said, no, they're not allowed to do that. Sometimes they kind of look the other way because they just want them to get it out and get it over with, but it's not allowed in any capacity. Really, yeah. the penalty is just very oh, okay. The penalty is yeah, very weak. That's another way of putting it. Five for fighting. Yeah. Like that, that's, the, that's the reason there's a band called that. But yeah, five minutes for fighting. It's, it's one of the most fun parts of hockey. And like what I like about the culture of fighting is – that refs will get chewed out and booed if they are perceived to stop it too quickly. And announcers, <laughs> like if there's a fight going on and there haven't been a few good, you know, throws yet, they the announcers will even be like, "Oh, it looks like the ref stepped in a little prematurely there." And they're like, "That's right, Tom. It looks like they just got fighting, and uh, I don't think that's going to do." Like, they only got one I, swing. I love <laughs> that. It's like no, like at least let them each eat a couple hands, and then yeah, you can kind of tell when they're over it. And then they give each other a little side hug and a back pat, and they say, you know, good ruck or whatever the fuck, and then yeah. they just skate back to the their bench. So it's a wonderful thing. That's how. That's why there's the Canadians are so aggressive in the NHL is that they don't have like, I don't think they have a military. Uh, <laughs> like they, they, that's oh. where they get it all out. They get it all out on the ice. That's why they're the best. Testosterone You're muted, guys. They yeah, are talking as if that's even remotely true. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's no military. There's no II. police. I don't think they. Well, they have, have police. Boxing. They got these mounties. But but after <laughs> the World War guys. II, they that's had to sign an agreement that they would they wouldn't have an army anymore. Like like them, Germany and Japan all had to disarm. Yeah. The Axis. Well, powers. I mean, Japan had to because of like a an imminent threat. Canada did because it was embarrassing our side of the aisle. We were like, <laughs> guys, come on. Like, the Mexicans are looking. <laughs> yeah, the Mexicans are looking, and the Mexicans are making fun of us. <laughs> I do love we're, that. We're I, I love army. that scene in, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when um, it, Brad Pitt tells Leonardo DiCaprio, "Don't cry. The, the Mexicans will see." <laughs> 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 like gives him his sunglasses so the Mexicans won't see him fucking crying. Josh, if you were to improve any of the four major sports, make it more fun, more intense, what would be a rule change or two you might throw in the mix? Oh, man, I don't know too terribly much about sports, but I'll say that uh, football, when the ball hits the ground, is still live like rugby. That makes it intense. That's why I enjoyed watching rugby. I don't know a ton about it, but um, 
Somebody fumbles in American football, still live. Pile on it. Get it. Go. I That'd get be it. interesting. No. And they also make it a wildly different game. It would. See, and yeah, yeah. They also wear don't wear pads. They wear, you know, they take their ears and they wear a cup. But they're doing the same tackles that I as far as I can tell, for the most part, you know, similar tackles and stuff to American football. So um, you know, since I'm not the one going in the mix, let's take the pads and the helmets out too. Hey, eh? do a rugby style, a rubber helmet, tape your ears up. That'd be interesting to see for the first season they implemented that because like immediately the game would shift to smaller guys with good cardio. Because mm. you can only have so many four hundred and eighty pound like monsters right. running it around. Like I, I know all those guys are athletes. Like even the biggest, fattest lineman is unbelievably strong and and like a, a real fast. athlete. He would succeed in anything. Mm. They're they're fast for their size, but like those plays, those highlights where like a defensive or a, a D lineman or whatever like picks up the ball and starts running it. And you immediately feel like like they run the way I do in a dream, where they're just like <laughs> kind of like slowly ambling uh, there towards the fucking uh, end zone, think, and you can see everyone around them just flying. Is that finger supposed to point that way? No, that's when uh that guy got knocked out. Uh, year, see, this right? is what I don't like about the N- N- NFL. The fucking gang signs on the field, like, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's screaming in pain. You don't see that in baseball. <laughs> No, you don't see that in baseball. America's America's pastime. Kyle, so how on a scale of one to ten, how scared are you of the Phillies? Um, I got three, I guess. I think your I think your odds That's are seven percent. I, I think I think your odds are seven percent to to take the series. Seven? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of teams, you know, still left. I think it's something like oh, that. I, I thought I I didn't understand what I was thinking of the series involving the Braves and the Phillies alone. Yeah, I only care about winning the series. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I but, actually, but we got, but yeah, the Phillies it's fun because my team's up against off. yours. I wonder what the odds are. I think the twentieth um, is when it starts. I think Atlanta's like a negative one eighty five. Um, so you'd have to bet one hundred eighty five dollars on Atlanta to win, and then if they do so, you get a hundred dollars. Um, Zach says Braves are plus three hundred, but I forget how that plus minus. The, I've learned it. I times. promise you, we're favored. I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, I, I would think you are. Um, but the plus 300, minus 185, these things all don't mean enough to me. Yeah, so... Um, we need to get into sports gambling so we understand it. <laughs> that's illegal in my state anyway. I you, I, I think if it's um, 300, then you'd have to bet 300 um, on the Braves to win, and you'd oh. get 100 back. Okay, okay. Uh, now it says Atlanta's minus 175, which I think is maybe what you said before. 185 is what I'd seen. Oh, yeah. okay. So anyway, it simplifies. To 100. Atlanta has a 63% chance to advance. 64. Yeah. I get so, that way more. Yeah. Man. That. <laughs> They're the number one seed. They're the number one seed. Their best team in baseball. Um, broke a bunch of records this year. Some silly records, but but also Did they get the home one run. Uh, I don't I don't think they got the one for the whole team. I could be wrong about that, but mm. they set uh one guy set a franchise record for home runs. He hit over 50, and then um Acuna Jr. Went for it, did a 40 70, which is a brand new thing. They it 40 40 was the thing, right? Like, yeah, it's 40 40 season, 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases. And he like tacked 30 on what you normally yeah. like, brag he, about and set he a record. Founded the 40 70 club, yeah. I, him and the commissioner's new rules set, of course. I'm not blind to that. It's, it's obviously he wouldn't have stolen 70 bases without the new rules. Uh, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of them that kind of combine together to make stolen bases easier, but. Yeah, it's going to be a fun series. Looking forward to it. Atlanta's got home field advantage throughout the entire, you know, playoffs and the World Series because they won that. Um, so it'll be. I don't it'll watch be neat. baseball. We just, I occasionally read about it. Uh, that, that's how I follow sports mostly. And yeah. uh, but I did watch the highlight of the Phillies hitting a grand slam against the Marlins. That's how they kind of had an insurmountable lead ish in the closeout game. Cool. Anyway. There's a shot clock kind of on the pitcher now, so they they have to keep the game moving. And it, I love the idea. I think it's good for the game. I think it's it's been great for this season. But in that moment, I didn't like it. The dude hit a grand slam, and the next guy's up there, like swinging away, and the crowd's like still talking about the previous play. Like it was a little fast. But I didn't know they implemented a change like that. That's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that the trying to people saying baseball is boring. I'm guessing. It's to speed up the game. So now they, they cut like an hour off the game times, but they score more runs in that shorter 
um, game. They did a bunch of things. And oh, um, when wow. they go to extra bases, they just throw a fucking guy on second. <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> they, uh, they really wanted to like speed the game. They, they should have made these changes that. like 105 years ago. Wow. Then it wouldn't Very feel so case. weird. Um, yeah. Your, uh, your first baseman for the Phillies, uh, his mm-hmm. name's escaping me. Is it Bryce? John Crook. Um, well, they just moved uh, him to first Pablo because Martinez. he had Tommy John surgery. The the Phillies the guy, guy Bryce Harper mm-hmm. thinks yeah that guy's fun <laughs> that you've got one of the more fun guys in all of baseball as far as a um, good on the microphone and mm. on social media and like the way he handles his business on the field he's that guy who was like screaming at the Cubs like like you're a loser organization <laughs> or, I think it was the Cubs it might not have been but but just he's super mm-hmm. hyped up and this year um, he had, he's a big deal I think he played right field before um, had Tommy John surgery which is a on your on your elbow, elbow or shoulder elbow. or whatever mm-hmm. and uh, usually something for pitchers but i guess he had to have it and they moved him to first base because it's uh gonna be easier on his arm i suppose but he's been really good at first so um he's definitely my favorite philly uh, which isn't saying hmm. much i think john uh, crook an equally fun to watch philly was their first baseman in like 1996 so i only oh. know him because he like <laughs> guest starred in an aqua teen hunger force episode once <laughs> Like, that's, that's all I know about John Crook. But um so yeah, I was looking was uh Josh at at your your Twitter just poking around what you've been up to. So we talked about that the Mexican alien shit uh, yeah. a few weeks ago when that got big and immediately me Woody and Kyle were like this is the horse shit ridiculous like clearly not real. Where did you come down differently? Did you think for a bit that it might be legit? Oh, and I immediately thought it was bullshit. I immediately, oh, okay. that's the first thing that I thought. However, um, once I saw the further scans and stuff and with, uh, allegedly, um, you know, them offering these new findings of these supposedly different ones that don't have the backwards fingers that I see going around. Um, I look forward to seeing other people investigate it. I don't think it's a waste of time. I'll say that much as much as people, you know, I, I, I got really attacked on Twitter for that because everybody thought I was saying, I thought they were real. I don't think they're real. I think there's a lot of suspicious shit surrounding it. And um, I definitely think that they need to release them to some actual people that I trust, like let, you know, Harvard or something see it. And they're they're apparently taking steps towards that. All that I wanted to say on Twitter was that um, people saying these look fucked up. I, I was saying that what they're saying is thing that is theoretically, allegedly not from Earth doesn't look like it's from Earth. Therefore, it's fake. So, but it did look like it looked, I thought it looked it, too much it like it was from Earth. It, it had little like nostrils. A little, oh my god, that thing looks. All right, if you were buying those at Home Depot as Halloween decorations, you'd be like, "What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I'm not paying fifteen dollars for this. It doesn't even look like anything. They are so garbage. They look so fake. They're clearly some sort of cast fucking stone or something or paper mache. They're bullshit. And like, like they they should. Those were scans from before and with the eggs on the inside and that stupid thing in the chest. Look at that. Come the f- Why is its head shaped like that? Like, like that's have a huge so brain, man. That's, that's what I'm saying. It just don't look like it's that's what ET's head. Head. Can you show us fucking, E.T.'s head? It, it's a lot. It looks exactly like E.T. If Almost they showed me a squid, like a big squid thing with like a fucking leather, wearing a leather suit. <laughs> it had mm-hmm. an iPad in its tentacle or something that looked like it was made to be held with a Look tentacle. <laughs> I could believe that. That's so better. Right here. Too. Come, this come is better than on. that. Like that. And I'll this tell you this: everybody says that thing is like friendly looking, and they loved it. That thing scared me as a kid. If I saw that in real life now, <laughs> I'd beat it to death. I'd beat it. To, they'd be like, "War has begun with the fucking Neptunians." Because <laughs> blow up the Earth. Kyle yeah. killed one with his bare hands because it came at him in his backyard. Dude, if I were in charge of the the fake alien psyop, and they like brought that little like paper mache nonsense to me, I would be like, guys, I am not gonna let you humiliate me here. With we, <laughs> we, this back to the drawing board, you have it have four fingers like a Simpsons character and little nostrils and like a chin and eye. Like no, no, no. We need to you know get back to the drawing board here. <laughs> that's better. No that's better. That. It's not a lot better. It's clearly a person. I mean, with that's a helmet on. that's somehow exactly. worse. It's clearly <laughs> that's a <laughs> thing that, that, that that's alive. That other thing was fake. This is a person, at least. Um, I, I like, I'm open to the, the <laughs> idea there being some like aliens or maybe some sort of alien technology. Like maybe they sent one of those uh, with a von Neumann probes or whatever the ones that replicate mm. over and oh, over. Yeah. And, yeah. Sure. And maybe they, maybe they sent a little little probe here and it's just zipping around. I could believe that maybe. 
I don't know. I just there's hair on that one. What the fuck? Are we well, that's just a, a, it's a mummy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's just They're not a mummy photo. That's just a person with partially preserved. They, they like sitting dropped, with their knees by their head. Dropped right? Frank like Reynolds' the, wheel. Yeah, they're like all, mm -hmm. all bundled yeah, up. They're... Like maybe they used to. Interesting, the hair though, huh? You know, it is I, ever... it I know rot, that right? hair doesn't rot that easily, mm -hmm. but that's really intact. Yeah, I don't believe that's real either. I mean, those knees look. I've never seen a body that had kneecaps. Oh, like they didn't they haven't fallen off yet, you mean? Like what's, what's gonna that. hold those? It in? looks so silly. I, I don't know what that what we're looking at, but that doesn't look like a real thing to me either. Um, no, that looks fake also. If like, if like you guys, how did they like, get ever... the... Go ahead. There's like fragile, supposedly ancient pottery below that. How did they get the dirt out of that without shattering what's clearly broken fragile pottery? It looks like Very it's my setup slowly. Up. Maybe. No. I don't know. That looks fake. Fake. That's how they do with archaeological digs. They go real slowly it, with a brush and stuff, you know. What, if they if they had a piece of an alien, if they had an alien body that looked real, like like I could I could get on board. But everything I've ever seen looks so silly, just so silly, and and not even close. the The stuff that's compelling is that footage from like what is it the the Teddy Big Roosevelt foot? or whatever that that naval vessel that's got the the thermal camera right on the fucking weird top shaped flying object, and they're you've got them like talking like it's moving x amount of knots, blah blah blah. Indeterminate. Oh yeah, like the blah, UAV blah, blah, videos. Like, like yeah, they're they're talking about it, and they're naval officers who are clearly confused about what they're looking at. That's compelling. I don't know what the fuck they're looking at either. Oh, like, like that, that guy who was flying around up in the air, and like stuff kept popping up on his radar, and it was moving in ways that they didn't know how to understand. That might Similar be part of it, but I'm talking about vi the video of the. Of it was the, a Navy video that he's talking uh, about. I, I just think. call it the spaceship, the video of the fucking spaceship for a, the long one where they're tracking it for minutes and minutes. And then instead of being like this, it completely changes its orientation and, and turns like sideways, like, mm -hmm. like, like longer, you know, I top wonder, to bottom. Like, did they see it with the naked eye too? Or did they see it through the camera and the infrared? As, as fast as it was moving, I doubt that they saw it with their naked eye. I, I only ask because half of these things get explained by like, oh, it's the way that you're viewing it. Like it, if you put a speck on my glasses, I'd be like, holy shit, this sure. thing moves in a way that defies yeah. fucking physics, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's a speck on my glasses. And that happens yeah. with lenses. That happens. It, lens flare, for example, is like those rainbows you kind of see around lights. Um, but sure. sometimes there are artifacts that like make little bright triangles. <laughs> you know, Counterpoint. On I doubt they were looking at it with a telescope. I thought they were looking at it with the most expensive piece of optics that in this case buy. Yeah, in this case, it was, highly, it was radar it, you equipment. You say it was old? Like something. a couple years ago. Like, th there's oh, an interview okay. with the guy that from on the boat, like a naval officer on YouTube. I was watching it earlier. He's like, I was on the Teddy Roosevelt during the oh, Drosden event Roosevelt. or whatever. And mm -hmm. I was, I, and, um, but but so it's recent, you know? And it's, again, I that to me speaks a little bit to the whatever the fuck is going on of it, is that if this wasn't some like kid's iPhone that tracks something funny. It's right, it's like, military equipment. It's the best mm -hmm. equipment there is for looking at things flying equipment. in the air. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, what does that piece of equipment do normally? It it finds things that fly really fast in the air that don't want to be seen. Huh, so it's made for this. Yes. And it's having a hard time. It, you can't figure <laughs> out what it yeah. is? We have no idea what that is. And the if we're talking about it, I hear you. It tells you what things are. It's like, I think my skepticism just has me latching on to any other explanation sure. and leaving it over the alien thing. I think yeah. the most likely scenario is that there's a branch of the that some branch of the military or someone in our military is using is using some cool shit and not telling the the guys that are that when it's way below their pay grade. Why would that guy on that boat need to know that they're flying their magical flying donut shaped um, unmanned vehicle tonight? Maybe I the, imagine they'd shut that down though. Like if you wanted if, to like test your your cool new toy. What's the use in flying it to Russia where they shoot their own shit down and then and, and like shoot their own men because they're so incompetent? You'd want to fly it around one of our boats, like who's got the good shit, right? And and then that way, if they accidentally shoot you down, it's like, oh, let's go recover. We're in safe waters and everything. It just seems like if you're testing your new scary shit, you'd test it on your own people. No, I think you'd want to fly it around Russia and China and then just like, like every few weeks, you zoot around there a little bit and then you go back. And then you like hard scope their media and like their our spies tell us and then they're like really no, nobody saw anything. Russia didn't see anything. Oh, China China, China saw something. Okay, well now we know they got they got fucking something over there. Yeah, I just don't American believe in little green men. 
mostly because I'm so afraid of them. I can't, I can't hmm. believe, I can't live in a world where they exist. They, right. I remember an Independence Day. There's that newscast you kind of hear in the background. They're warning people not to fire their handguns at the craft. I'd be that guy. I'd be out there. Mm. <laughs> Look, we gotta go. Come Hit the craft. <laughs> like, when, Take off, pop it off. I, I, I don't like it's gonna help. I, I'm sorry. This, I saw this fire one in the sky. sucks. This one looks awful. Like, is this carved out of wood? So that, that's what like, I was about to say. It's like ivory or something, isn't it? Isn't like that one weirder? Or, I'm sorry. Isn't that one real? This? What do you mean real? Is it a, a real? Is in, I don't know that it's extraterrestrial, but it, it they did a DNA test on it and they found it to be 92% like humans. Yeah. At first, 8% of the DNA did not match with human DNA. An improved analysis says it matched at 98%. So it's. Mm basically a human or what else matches 98 percent fetus monkeys no, mutations. Be 100%, right? I, I don't know. it's definitely I mean, human i mean you uh, people have sent in like lizard spit to 23 and me and they're like you're french like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> people have literally done that so like yeah if they're if this is this is definitely like a human with that's what i was getting it's human yeah. or i don't know enough about genetics if if you were to say that monkeys match 98 percent, i'd be like well what Taylor is this knows. supposed to be is there an article to correspond with this like there is he linked found? it it's on cnn oh, just above it um it just uh, summarize like it for shit. me kyle oh yes instantly the i will article. yeah they're Look comparing at his little, it uh, glasgow smile on the right one it's six inches yeah. tall i think it's Wait, a six is it yeah, look at the fabric. You can uh, see the fabric. It's a conundrum made by perplexing features. It's only six inches tall, You're but right, initially, oh. initial estimates of the age of the bones were consistent with a six to eight year old child. Um, Ten pairs of ribs rather than twelve. The uh, fuck? Okay, well, a human with this level of problems, I'm not blown away by missing ribs. So, uh, purportedly, this was found in 2003. Uh, it was found in a deserted mining town called La called La Noria in Chile's Atacama region. It has uh, thought to be ancient at first, but initial analysis conducted analysis conducted in 2012 proved the skeleton was only about 40 years old. So, I mean, this is just nonsense. I, I just I just don't yeah. believe this. This is somebody's dumpster baby. Why are aliens so heavily invested in South and Central America? Mm -hmm. Like there, so it's so many of them are like Argentina or Chile or somewhere around there. Peru. Like, yeah, Peru. How often is question. it that a Canadian finds one? Why is like, it that never? since we've started having video cameras in our pockets, there haven't been more aliens captured, like on camera? Right? Yeah, it used to be, be you'd go more. camping and home, people but... would have like alien abductions. Now that everyone has a video camera, the alien abductions have dropped That's, dramatically. That got yeah. rid of all. That got rid of a ton of the horse shit, but it also left some stuff that I'm not. I don't have a good enough eye to ever tell. Like if you go on uh, the UFO or the UFOs plural subreddits, you'd be like, "Shit, I don't know if that's all right." So maybe that's an alien, or maybe yeah. this is someone really good at editing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, but you, you gotta be careful. In there. See videos on there of a craft that like you can't I explain saw it. One, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Can't explain that." Better go to the comments. And they're like, "This is a commercial from 2019." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this is a this is a clip from a video game. This is Photoshop. This is editing, and it's like oh, I don't. I mean, it, it's so good Dude, you can't tell. I mean, CGI. I guess, is things so get good. me a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, the one there's some Ukrainian footage of a jet that like dodges twelve pieces of anti air and then like hits its bomb and zips off into freedom. And I'm like, holy smokes, this is intense. And they're like, that's Arma Four. That you know, you you totally <laughs> bought it, <laughs> and I did. I gotta play Arma Four. <laughs> right? Best advertisement ever. It's and then uh, there's another one. I guess there's a guy just like, oh, the humanity as gigantic waves roll in, and then he's like, what, what? There's a person surfing on it, and the wave <laughs> like comes crashing. You see him, he's killing it, and then he's like, oh, oh no. And then the way, like the the breaking part of it, catches up to the guy, but then he pulls through and gets free again. He's like, "Oh my god, it's a Powerade commercial!" But if you see it, <laughs> you'd be fooled too. It is outrageously yeah. good. Do you rem there's an old commercial where there's a uh, like some African might not be a commercial, it's an internet clip. There's like mm. three or four African like warlord looking motherfuckers with AKs and camo on, and a monkey comes up, and they're all, "Oh, look at the little monkey!" And they give it a gun. And they think it's so funny. And then the thing fucking picks the thing up and goes, da, 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 da. And they're all <laughs> running from the monkey. And he looks like I've he's operating the machine gun. Not well, but like 
he's figured out if you squeeze it just right, it kills. And then, then it, then like maybe the cameraman falls over or something like that. And mm-hmm. I was like, the fuck was that, bro? Because <laughs> I don't know. You I, fell I, for that one. I know exactly the video. The you thought a, 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 a thirty pound monkey was wielding an AK forty seven like that? It was not a thirty pound monkey. It, when he picked it up, it looked. It might have been a baboon, a baboon or, or a chimp. It was a monkey that could handle a firearm. <laughs> <laughs> so one of a kind. So. <laughs> What was it? Did you t- do you know the origin of the video? Yeah, I, d- I honestly don't, but I guarantee okay. it was a commercial, commercial. Or, or or something. Mm-hmm. I, I think I bet it was a like a teaser for a Netflix movie where animals get smart and take over. It was some shit mm-hmm. like that. Uh, animals the one that didn't fool so me, of course. Smart. The miniature giraffe, like like the the mini giraffe that was like ee! like your pet. That one didn't get me, thankfully. Um, but <laughs> you know, I, the uh, I, so I am addicted to this one Wings YouTuber. I think his name is Brian Cox, the guy, <laughs> he's yes. British. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, physicist, physicist, I think. Anyway, he's convinced me that we might be alone in the universe. He's talked about alien life, and and by the way, when I say life, I mean intelligent, complex life, not viruses yeah. and amoebas and stuff. Yeah, somebody could talk to. Mm-hmm. Sure. So he says the universe is 12 billion years old. Apparently, we know this. Uh, all right. Earth is about 4 billion years old. So a third of the universe's entire span of existence. And Earth has had basically a stable environment for 4 billion years. That's Continuous how long it took life. for... Um, you know, the, the amoebas and specks and whatever to evolve into humans about 4 billion years. And he's like, it is very possible that 4 billion years of stable, like life providing planets is rare. Mm-hmm. And when we look around, other planets have more comets and you know, suns get bigger and smaller and the climates change in dramatic ways. And earth has been pretty much stable for a third of the universe's existence that doesn't happen much. That's why we're not talking to other people. Could be true. I'm yeah, only as good as my source, rarer. but I bought into it. And and yeah. he's very convincing. He says it better than me. I think that in that case, I think I've seen that video. He was addressing mm. the answer that what they call the Fermi paradox, you know, about how mm. theoretically, if the universe is infinite, that means there's infinite planets with infinite stages of life. And some of them out there should be able to manipulate what we call space time, surely. Um, so I think it would have been I would have imagined that was theorizing. I remember that, but um, I love Brian Cox, man. That dude is completely awesome. He explains things in a really great way. He's become a big favorite of mine over Neil deGrasse lately, <laughs> by the way that he breaks things down. Uh, I do remember that clip. And he much. said, and he also pointed out that in 4 billion years of a constant chain of life on Earth, we don't have the technology to leave our solar system yet, despite having four entire billion years of a chain. Now, that being well, said, we had a mass was- extinction event that happened and life kind of started bumps. over. But, yeah, true. So We've got a lot. I- I think when you say so, everything he said, I'm sure makes sense and, and is true. Uh, the only thing that I would say is like I, I think the Earth had a bunch of ru- I think for like a billion and a half years it was like on fire, like molten. In the beginning, you know, it was a while before the, like the surface wasn't just a big molten pool of rock. And then it's because at some point the something hit us and became the moon. Like 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 mm-hmm. something big hit us and we de- coalesced and then a blob came off and became the moon. Mm-hmm. We know it did. They can. T- it's it's fun. There's there, there's questions. They're like, well, how do they know? How do they know how big it was? Well, because if it'd been any bigger, it would have hit our core and stolen that iron away. But there's no iron. The, the moon doesn't have an iron core, so they know it didn't penetrate what we would think of as like the proto Earth, the first Earth before it got yeah. hit. You know, so, to, to go all the way to the core. Is the moon the thing that hit us, or is the moon a piece of Earth, or a little of both? both. Are there? So are there? elements I'm, I'm asking i don't know how to ask my stupid question but are there things on the moon that you don't get from earth because they came from a meteorite i would assume so um i, I don't know anything about that but i've seen a mm. simulation like a computer simulation of of like what they think it would have looked like and you just got like a smaller ball hitting a bigger ball but then they just become this weird flowy mass of like molten glass and then a blob mm. sort of like flicks off and slowly falls into an orbit it was really. It was really. Would the Earth to still be at. like so nice and round after yeah. that collision? Gravity, gravity does that. Yeah. Rounder, like the, right? the whole thing like multinified and then went back into a sphere again. Yeah. Well, there's plate tectonics as well, right? So the of course plate tectonics. It's all, it's all always eating itself oh, and replenishing, on. right? 
mean, you know, how plate tectonics work. That's not oh, don't I act like that's I, above I just didn't. Head. I didn't think about uh, how that. Yeah, would I think Josh. Knows, though, like with gravity, like if you take something in zero gravity, like a, a drop of water in zero gravity, it's going to form a sphere as it just floats there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They and also, a video I saw about it also demonstrated something similar to what Kyle's talking about, and it was like they slow mo a drop of water, and they showed that when the you know the drop hits. It sinks deep down into it, but then there's that splash back, if you will. Mm. And they said that basically the same thing would have happened with a planet, and that that's why you see spikes in the middle of craters on the moon and stuff like that, and probably something similar on. Oh, okay, here we go. Is that the one you were talking about, Kyle? Um, what? Yeah. Well, I mean, more or less. Yeah. Now it's, it's gonna looks, get its maybe own it's gravity just because of like the quality that it looks. <laughs> yeah. So did a lot of these form into like that belt of? What is it called? The Kuiper Belt? Is that like the like the Kuiper asteroid belt, is belt that's super around far us? Or super yeah, far away? I don't the Kuiper so. Belt is the one that's super, super duper far away. I don't know how... I, way Do we not have than, many asteroids? Just We don't have there's anything a big belt around us. So don't think belt or like a congested thing of them like in Star Trek, but between Mars and Jupiter, there is a sphere of asteroids, not a, a, a ring of asteroids that's yeah. going around the solar plane with us. Mm-hmm. But okay. it's a loosely packed. You could, when, when you see them navigating asteroid fields and you see they're everywhere, that's just crazy silliness. That's, that's, it doesn't take an especially good Starfleet pilot to navigate the asteroid <laughs> fields in real life. Miles and miles apart. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like you wouldn't see one from the other, probably. If you were moving at like, like relative you a, speeds, you need a telescope mm-hmm. and like some knowledge to figure out. Well, they're at impulse there. speed, so that's not that fast. I think it's, I don't know how fast impulse speed is. That kind of sucks. We only, we only get one. Moon. They do though. There's like a there's a handbook that lays all that stuff out. I think even Mars has multiple moons, and we're a one moon bullshit. We are planet. a three moon planet. Oh shit! We have three now. We have three. Impulse no. speed is 167 Penny. million miles per hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, you seem confident about it. Okay, what are the other moons' names? There's the moon. Well, you don't even know the first moon's name. The moon. Luna. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> you know what the sun's name is? Eddie. Also Luna. N- no. <laughs> Sol. 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 S O L, right? Because it's the yeah, solar yeah. system. We have Sol. three moons. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking way. Is it? This is like one of those bears. Why are you Googling not betting then? Because I don't. <laughs> Wait, are you saying Earth has three moons? Three. No less than three. I'm going to go to the bathroom I... while you look up the, the three <laughs> moons. <laughs> no less than three? Josh, you seem to know about this. How, how do we. How'd we well, miss not, the other two? Google now that he's got his, one. He's got his headset I'll off. I'm just going to say I'm buying into the <laughs> troll. I don't know anything about any extra moons. Unless there's like a technical definition of like a large satellite. Maybe he's referring to, I'm just throwing this out there, James Webb Space Telescope and Hubble. Oh, shit. Maybe he's like loophole definition. You know, a satellite is a moon. Stand rather by. than a moon being a satellite. After more than half a century of speculation, it has been confirmed that Earth has two dust moons orbiting it. Oh. Which are nine times wider than our planet. What? I, that's not a moon like oh, I know of. Wait, that what? That is bullshit. That is a technicality. That's not a moon. Is it like, orbiting Earth or is it orbiting the sun? What's it orbiting around? Uh, let me look more carefully. I thought it was Earth. Well, I mean, I guess everything's revolving around the sun and the solar system, yeah, but, but you know what I mean. Yeah, the, 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 it says dust Earth has two dust moons orbiting it. So the direct object is Earth. Where would those that's have come it, from? Um, they dust. Coalesce into a real moon because these are not. That is bullshit. These don't. These do not count. One hundred percent, they do not count as moons. Are we going to say Jupiter has fucking ten thousand moons? Because I got a bunch of dust around there. We have to have a line, folks. Saturn has like infinity has- moons because it's a ring. Damn it. Yeah, exactly. You There's can't no count end. every speck of that as a moon. A moon <laughs> yeah. has to be something you could land on. Like I'm if with you that. can't land on it, then like we're just we're just doing fucking nonsense here. Could we possibly argue you should at least be able to see the moon you're referring to from the surface of the planet that you're talking about? I think that's fair too. Like yeah. otherwise, it's like that's so far away. Is that even ours? Like yeah, that, that's the moon. Really that's, I mean, that's that, the but... suns. That doesn't belong to us. We're not claiming that. Okay, well, let's not say that we looked this up and then I'll take Kyle's bet. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now that you know, I'll now take that your that... bet. There's one moon. Uh, by the way, rule set: dust moons don't count. Dust moons do not count. We and even the... amongst ourselves yeah. the rules of the moon. <laughs> There's no way that like astronomers even are are set on this this moon <laughs> definition of dust moons because that's insane. Just a big cluster of dust and nonsense gets to count as a moon. That's stupid. I mean, Same way Pluto like should be a planet. Is the Pluto atmosphere should... a gas moon? It's going around yeah. Earth. I mean, yeah. Mm. We have a gaseous moon too. It completely envelops us. Who, who knew, man? Wow, it's called the atmosphere. 
No, we got five <laughs> moons. Just for fucking uh, the words don't mean anything anymore. Just, just <laughs> throw moons around. I, I want like there to be backwards. like a bitter war between astronomers and people who follow astrology, like <laughs> <laughs> like vax and anti-vax people, and just like just totally fucking go with your gut. They should. You should. I mean, this this is definitely a gut thing. Mm. There's no fucking way you can't just count a cloud as a moon. We all have an understanding of what moons about. are. <laughs> the Kordalewski cloud or whatever. I, I already closed that window, but that's what it said it was, <laughs> and it was way further away than our moon. It was just a pith, just a pith, like a like a little cum stain in the the blackness of space. Isn't everything just a little cum stain in the blackness of space? Ah, uh, yes, that's <laughs> that is what what's his face? That guy that wings likes a lot would say. We are all just cum stains in the blackness of space. You don't like Carl <laughs> we Sagan? Are, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know anything about him. <laughs> yeah, Carl Sagan. <laughs> I remembered what he sounded like, kind of. <laughs> but I, I don't really remember liked, anything um, about him. What was that special? Um, it's um, Cosmos. Cosmos, thank you. Because hey. I loved when they remade Cosmos with um, Neil deGrasse, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. Uh, I, I love that so much. If, if you want to learn some sciencey space stuff get real high and enjoy yourself there's animated parts of that where he i don't know he goes back to some italian inventor who was trying to finance a thing it's, it's good it's educational it's amazing uh i mean it worked it works for for all kids ages eight and up <laughs> it's, it's, it's great i decided i'll take your bet 10 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely three moons not according to the, I, I don't know I haven't googled it just now, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I, couldn't, I couldn't possibly know that I'm going. You didn't Google it. That's why you up the ante to ten million. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I Gigantic from... dust moons don't count for the purposes of this bet. Yeah, yeah. Oh. We, but we definitely didn't Google it. Oh, we're gone. <laughs> because no. they're not. And by the way, don't go back and watch it. That would be cheating. <laughs> no, there's definitely two more moons. I'm sure of it. <laughs> No. I uh, I saw that who was gonna I think Prada is is designing the NASA's new spacesuit. Uh, I'm almost positive yes. that's accurate. You want to bet me on that one? Uh, can they just go back to the moon? <laughs> can they just go back to the fucking moon instead of getting stylish um, with it? I totally believe you. I mean, they need some new drip to go to the moon, man. They design oh, shit, you, you know. Need, they need no a moon outfit in 2025. <laughs> yeah. Who would you? I I mean, I'm hearing Prada, and I'm like, this is. It sucks. Don't they make ridiculous? I want Tommy Hilfiger to make it. Aren't they the people or... that did the Nazi uniforms? No, well, Hugo, Hugo Boss. So. Hugo Boss. I'm sorry. Take it back. That's who I want. Hugo sorry, Boss to design the to design the space suit. I'd be okay with a Carhartt space good. suit. You know, if I'm going to space, I want Carhartt involved. I want. Yeah, tell I, me I, you're I, Southern I, without telling me you're Southern. I want, Wait, I want a space suit ones? that's there for the long haul. It might not be stylish, but it's going to keep mm -hmm. me alive on the moon. So Prada is designing these. That's not even cool. Why are we surrendering right Prada? away, Prada? <laughs> That's a French astronaut. Fucking losers. <laughs> they got like... Let them like know it's for the American pants. space program, not the French. Yeah, the white flag. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, Joaquin. like, we've been had I actually if these that. are our new I don't like astronaut the stripes. uniforms. It needs some, like... You know what? If I were to design a spacesuit, space it would have um, stripes that give the astronauts a nice V-shape. Yeah, take yeah. that waist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, look like, that they, waist, look, man. they look like sloppy idiots up there. These and guys look like Brock Lesnar without muscles. Looking, I want them to like have some. <laughs> that okay. looks more. That looks this, more like what I was expecting. That's, that's definitely right. better. Oh wait, this is China. This yep. looks like what the villains wear <laughs> for sure. I don't. I don't like this a bit. Like like that looks like the bad guy in a video game. Green guys. Right? Yeah, he's got too many <laughs> eyes. Too many mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah, it's a big. It's just glass. I see. Th I don't know. I see three like little light things. I'm. I'm thinking their eyes. Well, that would be embarrassing if we'd be, if we'd paid Prada to design our moon uniforms and China, who is probably just beating people until they design something they like, <laughs> and they have better ones than us. And they look sick, and we look like and nerds. they look cool, and we look like <laughs> stupid nerds. I, That's exactly nerds right, on Josh. The moon? Yeah, we don't want to be nerds. Already, every astronaut is a fucking nerd. So exactly. we need to make sure that they look cool up there. So they inspire. We need to go respect. back. No more scientists. Let's bring on the test pilots. Yeah. Let's teach Let's oil drillers to, <laughs> to go <laughs> to the That's a moon. genius idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> Lumberjacks, like a cooler class of people. You just send like one or two of those guys up with the astronauts. They handle the boring math. And then you have like a compelling story of a normal guy traipsing about. <laughs> no way the, they the do cosmos. math up there. 
There's no way they do math up there. There's just no fucking way. You don't think so? And if they had some math to do, <laughs> I mean, I call a guy who can do math, right? <laughs> All the guys on Earth with the calculator. Like, 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 why do we need the math guy in the space capsule? Is all I'm saying. I, like, like, I we guess can... you're right. I have fun as me as an astronaut. Where like, this is the worst astronaut we've ever had. Whenever there's a problem, he just defines it as incalculable and moves on. Yeah. <laughs> well, he covered every wall of the International Space Station in incomprehensibly dumb math. <laughs> Travelers just, log. A lot of multiplication signs. Like <laughs> it's like it's like just like what a child would do. It's like nine times eleven divided by four plus six. E- it's just the basics. <laughs> just the basics. Long <laughs> that anyone can do with order. <laughs> That's what it would be. Did am I the only one who doesn't care at all that they found Tupac's killer? I didn't oh. know they found Tupac's. I killer. mean, I think it's interesting. There was you an arrest know? made apparently for Tupac's murder. Yeah. Yeah, they, I heard about that. They got yeah. to Tupac apparently. What I guess they I didn't care them? enough to read the article, and like, it, I wonder how they opened the cold case again. Did they get tipped off, or I I heard them go through it. They were talking about they had known that this guy was in the area. Like they've got a real like good timeline of where so many people were because there was some event going on. Forgive me, I don't remember exactly what everybody was doing that night. But there was like a thing in Vegas, like a a show or a performance, and they had they got it tracked down to where everyone was, you know, during that period of time. That was all the you know celebrity people and their entourages and stuff. And I guess they had always thought maybe something of this guy, but I didn't care either. I just didn't care, not even a little. I mean, it's cool or whatever. I I mean, he damn near. If it was Jada Pinkett, now that would have been great. Like, because Jada (laughs) Jada Pinkett Smith was the one that had killed Tupac, and they arrested her. For snitching about them having sex, I could get on board with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> revenge. I mean, yeah. Will Smith is just. I mean, now, now, Smith. years down the line, you know, back then I was like, "Come on, surely, you know, surely Jada didn't do that and all." You know, uh, now we have more information a couple decades down the line. Yeah, she's just an awful person. <laughs> apparently, like, like she's a lot more stand by your man kind of gal. It looks a lot mm-hmm. more realistic with you know a couple more decades of life living after that. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know why she's not what I cared. Will's You're right. Like, why is Will still with her is a better phrasing. Uh, like, maybe I, there's blackmail. Scientology. Ooh. Scientology. I don't think they're Scientologists. Are I they? hope not. I've never heard of them being Scientologists. I just it seems like a good career move. But, if you're I mean, in Hollywood to go Scientologist, <laughs> it I used can, to be. Not anymore. I don't know that when I they got the the raper from that '70s show, so that that's a clear sign their power is not what it once was. Masterson was a Scientologist. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. he was a Scientologist. They, they were hi- they were covering it up and hiding it through the years, and telling the women that they needed to go for like auditing or whatever. Like, oh, he apologized. What's the beef? Wow. Like, they would literally have meetings like that. Like, Keep well, here's up. your raper. He's here in the meeting with us. I know I didn't tell you'd be here, but surprise, <laughs> he's got something he wants to say. I'm sorry. And it's like, Aww. I'm very sorry that your body thetans influenced mine and forced them to influence me in the way that they did so that, you know, your aura was inflicted uh, upon and no one likes that. So sorry. Or whatever. No, no one likes like, well, case closed. Right, honey. <laughs> and it's just like, well, we can't paint there, all of Scientology fucking... like that because of a yeah, few okay. bad eggs. You know, Tom oh. Cruise is a Scientologist and he's an American hero. Yeah. Is he? Touché. Yeah, he's yeah, an American hero. He's in those movies I haven't seen that uh, <laughs> military enrollment or something. That's that's yeah. actually true. Tom Cruise has done more for the armed forces than the average person by a factor. The general, million, right? like, I, I I bet he's gotten so many people to sign up for uh, for the Navy or the stupider people to try to sign up for the Air Force. Wow, <laughs> I, I never thought of that before. But yeah, he plays a lot of military roles, huh? Not There's the a lot of guys driving trucks for the Air Force because they watch Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be like Tom Cruise. They're like, that's actually the net. Yeah, sign right here. I was yeah, going to say, right do you here. think that, because Naval Aviator to me is as cooler, cooler than Air Force. Yeah. And that might be because of Top Gun. I think that the, well, I don't know how it works, but I would just guess that like those are the guys who get to do shit. A lot of the times, like if you're on an aircraft carrier, they might s- sell you up within striking distance of wherever the fuck is stand, and you get to fly off some missions, then land yeah. back on the boat and eat like real chow and sleep in your cot. And that's all—that's al- almost as good of a gig as, as those guys who are out in Vegas fucking 
dropping shit with a drone and then like going home that night to their house, drinking beer in the backyard, like smoked a lot of Afghanis today, honey. A <laughs> lot of them. That's that's got to be a not very fulfilling way to go to war, though. You serious? Like, because you, you like Call like, of Duty, I guess. The way that like that. Predator like, missile imagine, inbound. Imagine like a SEAL Team Six guy or like a combat Marine is like at the it's barbecue scary. you're at, and he's he's given his war stories, and you're like, yeah, there was this one time <laughs> my my internet almost went out. <laughs> the Wi-Fi flickered and almost bombed the daycare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and one time the internet did go out. That Navy so to SEAL go is going to be like, dude, I went there. Shit got real. I got three kills. My team <laughs> got 18 kills and we got out. And he's like, 18 kills for your whole team? That's a slow day for me. Yeah. You know how many no weddings risk. I took out last month? <laughs> yeah. Those Arab weddings are packed. And he took out all of them I, with approval I bet of some the of those government. guys have crazy kill records for sure. That's what I would want to do. That's that's the number one job in the military, if you ask me. It's operating a drone from safety, wherever that is. Like maybe you got to be in Germany or or maybe you've got to be like quasi in the battlefield. Like like it's it's right over that, right over that ridge. That's where they are. But like you're still the safest guy yeah. out there. Yeah, I don't that, think you should be able to thing. yeah, I don't think they should be giving out medals. For the drone guys who are like in Texas, what? <laughs> like what? I don't know about Purple Heart. You fucking <laughs> <laughs> my ACL. My, ah, my carpal tunnel. You get a paper cut. <laughs> gaming desk. so hard. All right, Purple Heart Purple for Sun. drone operation is hilarious. <laughs> I love that idea. I like that you would fake a thumb injury or like a hangnail to get one. <laughs> you get $4,800 a month for the rest of your life because you hurt your thumb on the keyboard. Because that's how it works if you're in, like, I'm sure you've seen those examples. There's the one guy in Band of Brothers, I think, who's got four purple hearts. And one of them was for lancing a boil on his ass that he got while in the field fighting the enemy. It's like, I don't know, man. I don't think we're going to count that boil on your ass. So, like, I, I, I shed blood and service my country in the field of battle. Say I didn't. Well, you're actually technically. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I that heard that in cheating. Vietnam, that medals got much easier to earn. It was part of like a morale effort. Hmm. And oh. I also there were way more people, percentage wise, who were injured and wounded. Right. Uh, then they, okay. the amount of time that they were in combat was yeah. way more. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm sure it was both. I'm sure they're like. Hey, we don't have any bonuses or beer, but we got medals. <laughs> uh, can we go home if we get a medal? Oh no, we're gonna Are you sure you can't get beer? Ahead. But also, yeah, you get hair testing in Vietnam. You know, like it was not a popular war at all. So uh, makes that would sense. Suck. They might start dishing out the medals. I guess try and make people feel like, oh, we're rewarding the soldiers. You know, stop spitting on think, them, please. I mm -hmm. think Vietnam's my second favorite war. Like World War Two okay. takes the cake. Like that's the fucking favorite. goat. <laughs> At Wait, war all II. time wars? You live both of your first American top two wars. are in American the 20th wars. century. Oh, okay. Okay, American okay. Wars. American wars. No, like, like like Napoleon's fucking fucking champ champ. That was a right? cool war. You gotta yeah. you gotta go back to that. <laughs> he was the champ champ. <laughs> champ champ. champ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he like conquered Europe. And they were like, oh, ha, 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 get out of here. And he's like, I'll he became the king of Italy at one point, just throwing another <laughs> W in the mix. You know what they did to him after he like slaughtered all of Europe a couple times? They gave his own island to retire on. Like, like what the fuck? Like, like, like get out of here. Yeah, they Come banished him, if I'm not mistaken, right? Banished like to a, his own <laughs> private island with, like, a castle on it. Like, like it's like a good. war hall of fame that he got Jesus to go live Christ. there. But, yeah, uh, Vietnam is... I didn't know he had servants and stuff. That's a silver, that's a silver medal war, uh, war there. Now, I, I know people like, to, oh, America lost. Come on. Like, like, like by, by, what, by what measurements did we lose? I, I, I don't think we ever lost we a win? battle. Kill death ratio battles one, you know, like like all right, we all show up here and we fight it out. Yeah, I and feel like Kyle's we, playing. We're still for here, AD and they're ratio, all dead. And the Vietnamese played for wins for you know. So at the end of the day, they played domination. They owned more land. They sure. won domination, and Kyle got a good KD and thinks he did well, but he didn't. But yeah. what if the, what is the ultimate goal of why we went to the war? You know, are we trying to? And I'm not saying that specifically for Vietnam. I mean, in general, would that not be considered the victory is to obtain what your initial military goal was, you know, if that's toppling an empire or whatever it may be, well, taking yeah, over a capital know. city. However, yeah, that if you don't achieve that goal, it then defaults to the KD ratio and domination. And by that, we won big time, baby. America. Yeah, it's our well, space I mean, race. Uh, I mean, you if you know, look at Vietnam today, <laughs> you winning. know, like they're democratic and I'm sure they've got, or not, um, I don't know if they're democratic or not, probably, but, but you know, they're, they're Who definitely cares? on, they're capitalist. Um, Right. Yeah. And and they seem to be on team us 
it's interesting. I always hear that when Americans go there, they're like, hey, don't shoot they're, my cousin. Welcome I had to back. look it up. <laughs> back. Vietnam is a socialist republic with a one party system led by the Communist Party. So that's but, pretty. That doesn't sound good. I mean, to be no, fair, you, <laughs> that's, that's, we that is a hell. <laughs> I'm down with that and all. I get that. But I also say that most communist countries or quote unquote communist countries have no choice but to engage in some form of capitalist trade with capitalist countries. You know, so they're like functioningly they're capitalist. But in regard to oppressing their people, they're socialist. Yeah. yeah, But if all it takes to like qualify as capitalist is like some form of trade, then every nation is capitalistic. That's a good point. Yeah. I was thinking more of like the global market of exchanging currencies and things as opposed to, you know, them trying to be self-contained and we can take care of this ourselves. But that's a very yeah. good point. I mean, bartering is bartering. It is a part of you all know, trade systems. Or what existence. surprised me, the third largest weapons exporter on the planet is South Korea. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Russia than South Korea. Huh. Apparently, us, they us got Russia and then South Korea? Yes. For exports. South Korea is probably going to be ahead of them this year. Ahead of Russia, I, uh, I think I heard yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah, because Russia is not exporting anymore. Yeah, yeah, they need their guns. And, and South Korea yeah. apparently makes really good shit because they like South Korea and North Korea have been prepping for war for seventy years. Their stockpiles are enormous. The North Korea tends to go with huge stockpiles of shitty stuff, and South Korea tends to go with smaller stockpiles of more high tech stuff, which is why their exports are interesting. Yeah, Europe's arming itself right now. Uh, <clears throat> Poland, in particular, is building the biggest ar- like military in Europe right now, and um, they're buying our. Exp- they're buying a mix. It seems like they're like, ah, I like uh, the South Korean radar jammers, but I love those American planes. You got any of those South Korean body armor? That's the good shit. They're like taking <laughs> like they're they're. I'll take some of this and some of that. Yeah. So they bought mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff from us, and I know they bought a bunch of stuff from them. And, it, and when I say a bunch of stuff, they're buying like three hundred million dollars worth of shit at a time. It's great. They should buy from every country. They should play every side, so they always come <laughs> out on top. Mm, Have a no. little bit of Russian stuff, a little Korean stuff, a little American. So the stuff. reason they're not buying Russian stuff is then you become well, yeah. dependent on Russia to maintain your shit. And if they're the people attacking you, you're in a tricky spot. Come on, Matt. I thought I thought Russian shit was super easy to maintain. Because it's like harder and like you need parts though, right? So like, like the Russian, if you if you if you uh if you have a whole fleet of MIGs and Russia and and you're going to war with someone who's an ally of Russia, even like one of the stands or something, then Russia will be like, oh, no more parts for your helicopters and something like a helicopter that needs all that air maintenance that needs new whatever the fuck some and new rotors oh, or whatever. Yeah. It's like we need those or we can't fly them. The U.S. did that to um. Iran back in the day, Iran had a lot of U.S. planes, F-14 mm. Tomcats, I think. Like, oh, wow, good luck. Shit out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> you could, you got about 500 more operational hours before they all need an O-ring that only we make. You know, and immediately yeah. they just had a bunch of junk. Tanks too. Apparently, it's super common for tanks to get damaged but not destroyed. So mm. you know, you just haul them back, fix them, put them back in service. But if you don't have parts, you're in trouble. Tanks are so cool. Formal warfare. You know, yeah, at the start of the Ukrainian war, there was a conversation about whether tanks were obsolete because they kind of seemed that way. It seemed like it, they were super expensive and hard to make and just a big investment, and it wasn't that big a deal to break tanks. But uh, as it's carried on, it turns out you need tanks. It's been, uh, yeah, the war keeps, it continues on. I, I, I really hope that it just never ends. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big... <laughs> <laughs> fan of the war fan is the well, word fan uh, is the uh, word bad news for you at this rate ukraine takes all their territory back in just 67 years what so, <laughs> yeah. eat, eat your heart so out is, it, is, is nothing moving over there now so, 67 years all right the, the short answer to that is yes it's not it's moving very much the the long answer is russia has a lot of their defenses kind of stacked right up on the front line and Ukraine is making progress at piercing that front line, but very little. But it's you can't say what I just did, which is, oh, it's going to take 67 years to reach the sea. Because once you really properly penetrate that front line, then you can pick up miles per day. And that is the way sex. it's trending. But yeah, slow start. slow start. But then, you know, once you break through, you can probably get all the way to uh, the sea. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they're kind of breaking through. Let's hope that that 
turns into better land let's, games. Let's hope they stop funding it with all of our money. That would be great. Maybe, yeah, maybe no, spend a little I'm here the for our people. Yeah. That's not what they'll do. That's not what they'll do at all. They'll just do a tax cut for corporations or something. Yeah, that's what they do. Money well spent. Pour it into another proxy stuff. war. Loving it. This yes. is our fate. This is the best proxy war we've had. Maybe you're ever. crazy. This is, better. this is like Afghanistan one when we were given the stingers. Yes, to the, the, the Mujahideen, the gallant men of the Mujahideen. <laughs> yeah. and those fucking Russians we're came over, yes. and, and Afghanistan Rambo. panned out so well. I mean, not for the Russians. Yeah, Taylor. I don't think anything ever went I'll wrong. Bring up from Afghanistan that. two when I'm talking about Afghanistan one. I mean, it's uh, a I think series. He's bringing this up is nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, but that's why you're five. you're crazy if you just want to fund this shit forever. Against the Love common it. advice, I forgot nine eleven, and it was a really good idea to fund the Afghani's. Yeah, we should fund this as long as they want to fight. Um, you're it's, crazy. It's, it's beautiful. It's a great thing. No Americans are dying, Taylor. It's just a little. It's just pennies. It's just pennies. You know, not pennies? a big deal. Yeah, pennies. You know, don't, don't worry about it. Enormous thing. sums of money. Tiny amounts of money in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> it's so it, much it's money. It's like, like, like Kyle's right though. Like, here's how I think of it. Here's how I think of it. Not only are we, because our weapon systems are doing so well, all those countries around the world who are seeing the planet a bit destabilized right now are like, give me a billion dollars worth of American shit. Give me a, give me two billion of it. So we're, so we're selling lots of weapons right now, which is a great thing. Wait, your problem was that the money wasn't going to going to go to American people, but it goes to Halliburton and Lockheed, and so it's like good now. Yes, yes. So wait, wait. You money wanted to go to American direction. people, like but now that it goes to American people, you're not happy. Come on, That's, those aren't American people. Those are some are. Giant they make a, fucking they make the shells in Alabama, companies. Taylor. They make the shells in Alabama. Why don't we fix our fucking roads and get universal healthcare? They make healthcare? the shells in Alabama, Taylor. Do you care about? Oh, now it's big business and infrastructure, but the poor some bitch in Alabama that's making artillery shells. Give me fucking health care. Getting triple. Overtime, goddamn it, Taylor. This is great for our economy, which needs it right now because we're about to slip into that recession they've been talking about for half a decade. It's, it's one, <laughs> but this one, time it's one, real. One, this time it's real. We promise. <laughs> the economists scream, and I don't know anything enough to disagree. But I, this is wonderful, Taylor. Like, like our enemies are bleeding. Like, like, all right. So think about it this way: we were already going to spend X amount of money on, say, national defense. That's based on our the threats around the world, right? We're like, we need to be able to fight. Uh, um, a, a global war on on two different oceans, right? That's been our like military mantra since World War II. Every day the Russians get weaker as a military. That means we don't need as big of a military anymore. Now I'm not saying they're going to cut the military, <laughs> but, <be> silly. <laughs> but but if a war were to pop off between us and Russia proper, man, it's going to be a weakened Russia. It's going to be a mm. weakened Russia. They look bad in front of their al allies. It's easier for us to make deals and bully China. And when little territorial things, because none their of, none ally of these Russia are looks tangible so and games for Americans, though. Tangible. You want tangibility and like geopolitics? This is fun. This is James Bond shit. This <laughs> no, is no. You want you, you we want better. Roads you know they sent a commando in shit. on a jet ski the other day, and he got yeah. Killed. We could do that at like a fucking show off the that coast. guy's ass right now. <laughs> it wasn't our guy though. That's the best part, Taylor. It's their guys. They just want some spending money. I can't believe you guys are still in favor. I love it. I love it. Long. I can't oh, yeah. wait till we really start giving them cool shit. I'm glad the Abrams tanks are about to arrive that they've been training on for a whole fucking year. I can't wait to see that. We've never one's never been destroyed by a hostile like like fire. I think never they've arrived. Happened. Well, I I, I, I want to see them on the battlefield. I want to see. I've okay, already yeah, seen yeah. propaganda of like burnt ones on the battlefield for months. Just and they're like movies. Like in movies, <laughs> just, they don't just, have Abrams in movies. They dress up chieftains and oh, stuff. I watch I wanna, combat footage. <laughs> it's yeah, movies. But, this yeah, is great. I don't know what not, your not beef a very is. good ROI. Like, like, like uh, well, you, you it's don't the like best American ROI dollars ever. Actually, get it, getting some. It's it's some not. Work done. We spent such. A, it's like three percent of our defense budget. Goes That's to so like, much it's money. A tiny amount, uh, but it's like compared to our defense budget, it means nothing. And we're just. It's not like we're giving them new Humvees. We're giving them Humvees that we would have otherwise sent to like police or just mothballed what were we going to uh, do with those 20 year old shows, humvees taylor? that were who gonna are we be... going to artillery strike taylor who we could have spent it on something else taylor we're giving them artillery i'm just it saying. doesn't yeah i don't I, have, I feel like you're locked up and it has to right go to now. the army they make them in alabama they make the artillery shells in alabama and they make the fucking anti-tank rockets in alabama and there's a guy a dude in alabama named fucking pete or some shit and he's got more. He's got double overtime because we're funding Zelensky. 
And I like We're that. Printing money and inflation is what's ridiculous. New? That, what's new? It's $33 trillion. Did you know that's the deficit? It's going up every day. Trillion. More than ever know, in a, a yeah. day, a, a no couple days cares, ago. No one cares, though. That's made up money. A trillion's an impossible number to even fathom. I don't care. <laughs> it's definitely point, real money. <laughs> it's, it's I don't inflation. think it is. I don't believe it is. I think once you get to 33 trillion, we're at the point where everyone knows that, like, hey, if we were to actually try to make the U.S. pay, we would just start some sort of a global war with us, right? And then they would change the, just like press delete and ask if we wanted peace, right? Like, like I, I think it'll be okay, Taylor. Make it 35 know. trillion and let's kill some Ruskies. Can we get like Genius. universal health care in there? It's for, now, for example, no, there? Taylor, we don't have money for universal health care. We're not being Taylor. ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Universal health care can only happen, though, if we get those borders under control, because I'm not paying for all those Did you Ukrainian see that war Biden, victims. Like, all right. You lose your uh, limbs and in Crimea. I'm not, I'm not paying for that. Okay. I'll give you the bombs. He's building the wall. You get a peg leg, maybe. He's building <laughs> the wall again. He's going to throw it up. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, there are like some rules he just waved and he's building the wall like fuck it apparently this is a place where mexicans are crossing the border and they would benefit from a wall and biden's for it actually okay <laughs> build two I, um, walls. because because i do my research even far, further left than woody uh, <laughs> biden said they asked biden do you believe the border, border wall works nope it will not help i did everything i could to take that money that had been appropriated for border walls and do anything else with it but i can't it's beyond my power and so it will be spent on a wall that's biden's take on the whole thing because he, he did it to avoid to, the shutdown because he it does not want that situation where the republicans would be like so you're building the wall huh did you use trump spe specifications or is this a fancier wall that you came up with oh it's it's trump specifications oh oh so he did 500 miles of it. How much have you put up? Well, we're we're building it right now. So it's, it's just not a good conversation. It's better if he can be like, oh. there's nothing we could do. Trump ordered it. The money's already on the way. I can't divert it. And I don't think it'll work. That's a I generally don't stand. like the idea of a wall. It's not that I don't like the idea of a border like or an enforced border. Mm -hmm. But walls seem really asymmetrical in terms of like the cost and benefit. If, if you build a Ballard wall like those things, 15 minutes and a cordless angle grinder gets you through it. They're if you make it four foot thick and stone, then it's a trillion dollars and a ladder defeats it. Like there, a wall just doesn't provide the benefit that it's cost. I mean, the goal was never to, down. for people to show up like a video game and be like, I can't get through this hedge. Like it was to slow down crossing so that border control could get there. And that's feasible. They should for them I don't to know slow it they, down, at least, for sure. I, People I, don't, yeah, I just don't know why they can't use, like, infrared cameras or something for a much more cost-effective way to get people to the right place. Uh, they just need to start people turning to people out. away. I, I, like, I think yeah, the I amount mean, of infrared cameras you would need would, would be just in, in, an operator. One every quarter right? mile on a tower Operators or something like that. I think they already have those infrared cameras, and the, the purpose of them, they do. Like, I the saw them on my is trip. that, like, you the wall slows people down. Walls absolutely slow people down. That's why walls are everywhere. You want to prevent people and slow people from entering. Yeah, they just they built like, a, a, they the wall that's between fucking Poland and um, and um, uh, Ukraine is pretty ridiculous. No, it was between uh, Belarus and whatever fucking country that they were allowing all of those people to flow through. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember there was a there was some sort of a political thing where like they were sending all of the. The Belarusians advertised in Africa <laughs> so that people would fly to Belarus and then they could pump them into, and I don't remember who the country right next to him is, but they mm. were doing that to them. And so that country came to engineers in America and asked about our border wall and they <laughs> built one to stop that from continuing to happen. I can't remember that, what country that is. I don't fucking Why know. Why don't we get in the wall business and build the absolute best walls in the world and then sell walls to all the countries that want them? We need moats, people. Stop with the walls. Moats are clearly the answer. We've already got Why the not Rio both? right there. But it, the what crocodile maintenance will alone will drain the yeah. economy. Now I, we're helping I, the, the You don't have to maintain them. There's a fresh supply of food. I'm a lot more no, no mercy with this whole thing than I think the average person. I see them as invaders. Anyone who steps across that line. I, if I invaded Mexico on foot, I would expect to maybe get shot. That would not surprise me in the yeah. slightest. If I was shot by a Mexican for invading their country across their fucking border. Mm -hmm. We already agreed what that border was after the Mexican-American War. 
when we bullied that smaller country and took a third of their space. Maybe maybe it's okay. time for War Two, <laughs> the Mexican American would, War. We should Electric push it Google back War. a little more. I think that that would that's what I would do. If I I'm just want Baja Kyle, California. I Let's say take Cancun. I, in the in the <laughs> in the interest of national security and the safety of the American public, we're pushing the border back. It's not good the way it is. We need a demilitarized zone, and so we're going to take forty miles of Mexico, the entire length of the border. And that's not Mexico anymore. That's a DMZ. That's a neutral zone. And uh, international law doesn't apply there, by the way. And Meanwhile, there's like just... so much population right up against America. Like Tijuana. Oh, those am- they're Americans Sorry. now. Got to oh, go. Shit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say 40 miles in and you got a lot of that's Mexico. That's why it's a DMZ. <laughs> They've got to evacuate that area. They're going to get pushed further back into Mexico. See how they like it. Dude, <laughs> yeah. if we're talking politics. Have you followed the House of Rep lately? Um, uh, I, oh, I, getting rid of the house. I don't Good. Was, I hope. I, I hope they shut it down so we can't waste any more money on Ukraine. So here's what I need you to explain to me. What here's the part I'm I'm foggy I'm on. I, I don't yeah. understand this. Who who was the speaker of the house? His name Kevin was McCarthy. McCarthy, and he is a senator from California, right? Where Maybe I'm not sure. He's a Republican senator. I uh, Republican I senator. Oh, I'm, I'm, House of Representative. I, I said senator. Made a mistake. Oh. Okay. Okay. So he's from the house. So he's a state representative from somewhere, a stand. And California. he was the speaker of the house. Cal- I thought it was. Uh, so he's uh, speaker of the house. I thought I read that he lost his like job as mm-hmm. a representative. Like mm-hmm. I know he's not the speaker, but he doesn't get to vote as a representative of California anymore. He has considered retiring, being like, "All right, you don't want me to be speaker anymore." Okay, but. He- I'm gonna tap. I'm gonna leave this. Put on paper. But no, he's, he's still the yeah. He still has his from job the 12th sure. district of California. Okay. Yeah. Well, then the article yeah. I read was just terribly confusing. Misleading. Again. I didn't understand okay. that. Yeah, they met, they're like he's been ousted from from government, and it's like, like uh, what, what he can't vote anymore on. Good. Like, get him out of here. So Kevin McCarthy uh, has eight roughly people on the Republican side who seem to be impossible to please. And uh, they're all like in this Freedom Caucus, these far right guys who aren't they don't really compromise. Now, the Republicans don't own all three houses. So, like you have to compromise or all three uh, like branches of government. So I'm looking for. So you, you can't just have exactly what you want. The Senate will clearly not agree with that. It's run by Democrats and neither will the White House. But these guys are like, I guess they just wanted to keep trying, shut down the government, throw a fit until they get their way, which wasn't likely to happen. They're outnumbered. They don't own it. So, um, and it seemed like it was personal. One guy voted against him. He said he was going to pray on it. McCarthy made fun of him. And he's like, well, fuck it. I'm done praying. I'm oh. voting you out. Um, <laughs> Matt Gates. it seemed I like personal. that. Like, yeah, that's he great. gave Matt Gates everything Matt Gates asked for. And the Lord it seems like what Matt Gates <laughs> really wanted. He's going to run for governor after DeSantis terms. end. you can only have two consecutive terms in Florida. So um, Matt Gates is trying to get famous enough to be the next Florida governor. And that seems to be his primary motivation for leading the charge to get Kevin mm. McCarthy out to be like, okay. I am going to fight for you guys, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the problem is they don't really have a plan. They don't have a thing they want very much. They don't have any like legislation. He just, even if he gets what he wants, he still ousted him. Um, and they don't have someone they'd rather be speaker. They don't have that plan at all. It's between two guys. One of them is like a rape apologist and the other (laughs) is, uh, you talking about the backup guy? Yeah. Jim Jordan, apparently, uh, is like 15 people have come out saying he knew about the rapes that were happening on his college wrestling team and just told everyone not to talk about it. Um, And then the other guy is a racist. Apparently he speaks with David Duke, their buddy buddies. And he's like at these white nationalist things, raising money amongst racists with David Duke. Those are the two leading candidates to be the next speaker. Uh, Donald Trump. Are you going to not take their money? Well, you could go not speak at their events. I think that's the typical I don't protocol. I they'll give for... you the money if you don't. Yeah, touche. <laughs> and then the, the third one they talk about is Donald Trump. But that's not realistic because you can't be the Speaker of the House if you're under indictment charges that could lead to more than a felony indictment charges that could lead to more than a year in jail. So Trump isn't eligible. They can I don't change know that rule. Nope. I think the Republicans made that rule like. 15 years ago or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But I don't know what it takes to change the rule. 
Is it just like a house rule the Republicans can decide Probably on? Probably the speaker it, to, to get anything done. Do you so. need like the Senate to agree to it and the president That's to what sign I, off on it? I don't know. Right. As soon as so, I heard about the vacancy and everything, I was like, oh, man, is there any way to get Trump in there? Because yes. that's the funniest move. There is a way to get Trump Leave in Leave it there. empty um, for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if, if you like, if you're a Stats and Stories politics follower, oh, yes. it's just prime right now. This is like playoffs or something. This is like every day there's more like machinations and people going back and forth and details coming out. And it's uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I, uh, I I I followed the Trump court stuff a little bit. That's another one mm. where I'm not sure how they just. It seems like because he's, I know they've accused him of twenty or thirty different things at least, but him overvaluing properties and leveraging that seems to be a big part of it. But yes. I, I keep reading that they're going to take all of his properties away and auction them off. The New York ones, which is kind of well, I, that's well, the New York like company owns. The stuff though, like like his his. I'm like pretty Mar-a-Lago. sure like Mar a Lago, for example, is not at risk, but I'm I could be wrong. I, I, I see your look, and I'm not confident, yeah, so maybe I'm you're right. Either. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that we're talking about the New York real estate. I know he transferred Mar a Lago like out of it to his son, but I don't know if that helps him or not. Yeah, like um, Trump Tower may, is is Trump like, Tower's problem. Now Trump Tower, to be clear, he just manages that building. Those are condos that he sold. Like he doesn't own the whole building. He just sort of runs the elevators and the staff and maintenance fees and shit like that. Um, but those are condos. The people who bought the condos own their condos. Fair. So anyway, uh, but it looks like he got the corporate death penalty, which means they're going to auction off all his New York properties, which is interesting to me because this whole thing is about overvaluing his properties so we're going to see if his stake in the Trump Tower is worth seven quadrillion dollars or not. We're going to see if this, that, and the other property are worth what he said they were or not, because they'll be for sale. And who gets the money? This seems Trump. ridiculous. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so they're going to auction off his place. He's not allowed to do business in New York anymore because he's been committing, I guess, like unprecedented levels of fraud in this thing for a long time. So... um. I've never yeah. heard of such a thing. <laughs> right? No, it doesn't doesn't seem. <laughs> it never seems, seems like it. he's just like having the kitchen sink thrown at him. So they're just basically, trying they're going to take all his, This, is, this like, is what the defense always is, though. It's never that he's innocent. It's always that there shouldn't be any punishment. Like, yeah, it seems like they're going at him pretty hard. Well, it's for that his it fraud. seems. It's that it's very like flagrantly politically motivated. Like, you think there aren't other New York big real estate moguls who are doing this shit? Like. That yes. would be my perspective. Yeah. It's like, I, I like, think there's why levels is, why to is this he game? on the like, chopping block because Trump, he's running in the opposition if, party? If these numbers like, aren't perfect, then they're close. Like he has a penthouse apartment in Trump Tower. It's about 10,000 square feet, which is a lot. But he mm-hmm. just changed it to 33,000 on a whim and then like made the value eight times higher. But mind you, he didn't add any square footage. He just lied. He just made it up. And Again and again, every time Trump gets in trouble for something, it's never that he's innocent. It's that, eh, you know what? I bet the guy who's uh, like the attorney general is doesn't like Trump. I bet that's the true yeah. thing. It's not okay. The attorney he's general has come out and said he doesn't like. He Trump. committed these crimes. That much, you know, we can all agree on. But I think the only reason they're fussing about these crimes is that they don't like Trump. And I'm like, eh, it's- yeah, I think that's salient. Like, I think that. All of these I people think, at that level commit crimes like that, and it's no. because of who he is at this juncture in time. Why didn't they do this 20 years ago? Like he's There's been like in real a estate 10 year for a half span century. where Trump lost more money. This is on his 1040s. Like he claimed to have lost more money than every other American during that 10 years. Like he's the number one loser of money on his tax forms during that time. And I can't prove it, it's but I just income. don't buy it. Yeah. Um, it, it's uh, he claimed like he has like a billion dollars or something that he lost. It, it, I think he was the number, that's number one. It might have been number two loser in American over like this billion. like 10 year period of time. It was a good campaign, um, uh, debate moment where he was like, Yeah, I used the rules, I used them to my favor. 
That was a businessman. And then, then oh, I it, that. Yeah, it may have been a good about. debate moment, but it was a lie. Right. Uh, it really, he just broke the rules and lied about what he was losing and making. And anyone can do that. I, like I used yeah, to do yeah. taxes. I've done thousands of tax returns and uh, people are like, let's get creative or whatever. This other guy gets creative. I'm like, that's not creative. Creative accounting is like setting up a partnership so that you can run your expenses into it and have you know, tax pass throughs or whatever. That's creative accounting. You know, creative accounting is a way for you to deduct your health insurance that you couldn't do as a sole proprietorship. Cool, cool, cool. This is just lying. This is just making up expenses that you didn't really have. That's not creative in the slightest. That's just criminal. And yeah. I, that's I, how I think what Trump it feels is. like it's just to a me, curious time for it to come up. It's not even that. It's not even that. What it's curious is how quickly the wheels of justice move when we're going after Donald Trump. That's the only thing. I remember when I got arrested and they're like, yep, yeah, see you in two years. You know, it's it's like you knew it was going to be years from now when mm. they got this little this one little thing like moved down the road and this huge mass. Imagine the man hours that the dis, the the DA's office must have put in to getting this huge case together this fast. I would love to know how much money has been spent by the DA's office to get Donald Trump. It has to be thousands and thousands of man hours to go through that stuff. I know it was a lot of hours. I should be going case. to Ukraine. I don't think it's fast. I You're think it right. Two years <laughs> to bring the case to trial, but I'm. I'm I know that's positive. shockingly fast, though, for what this is, right? Like, like. Well, you just said two years, and now two years is for me. Two years. <laughs> it took okay, them two okay. years to get me. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I, I, you're your kind point. of Trump adjacent, right? <laughs> Billions of this dollars like, in real estate this is dealings, like dozens of charges. There were and like, grams and, and, and all grams this. in that package. You, you have to do like like what, what do they call the uh, forensic accounting, and there's expert witnesses, mm. and 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 come on, this is mm. a massive deal. I actually they, don't know how that timeline compares to the standard. I don't know. Don't they have yeah, him I, in court I, like I the know. day before Super Tuesday, something like that? Uh, I think actually. Or if it might be the day after, I'm not positive though, but it's something after. like that. Like one of the trials was set to that date. Yeah, that and they were really like, is an unbiased. I remember they talked about decision. it. They're, the that same judge had done like professional athletes, and they're like, yeah, we don't schedule trials around your job. We don't say like, eh, you know what, the playoffs are coming up. We're gonna this isn't, hold come on. back the wheels. Of you, you think you think they just the randomly president. were like, oh, that's when the that's when your I think that is. date's gonna change. It won't stick. Maybe yeah, I think so too. I, I, I I'm sure I'm sure that won't stick. First one but, up, rarely is the real one. But the the scheduling of that day feels like a, a almost like yeah, make make it the day. Yeah, they'll, then they'll have to ask and they'll make right. a big thing of it. It'll be funny. Trump's gonna. Kill I don't know. I, Tuesday, it won't matter. I think uh, I, I look forward to seeing this thing. What here's what I hope happens. I genuinely hope happens because it's the coolest timeline for me. And Trump Trump's got to be the president, and then okay. he's got to start. Um, you Pardoning know, really. You. Well, I mean. <laughs> Now, no, no, going after his his his, his rivals and his enemies and locking them up, uh, like, like like that's what I, I hope happens. Um, and I, I hope that it's 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 just a real meltdown of the entire system that we see. That's what I'm looking for. For just the hypocrisy that all caves in and creates a, just a mass that that can't withstand gravity anymore and just collapses on itself, and we get a new system. Where yes. we all just walk the Back earth wearing leather kings. clothes that last <laughs> our entire lifetime. Why don't we give kings a go again? Uh, Let's give I it think a shot. We're up for that. I, I mean, I, I nominate idea. king. Uh, I, Why? I think, look, we got, we got like, we, we, you got, you got a direct line of accountability with the king. Everything sucks. Like Whose fault is it? Fucking that guy's. Power corrupts absolutely. Yeah. Power corrupts absolutely. I think I've heard this before. Oh, I just made that up. That just that just came to me. I would be okay <laughs> with King. I, I, yeah. I would like. Yeah, uh, I'm down for kings and queens. Let's but see but if we go. get a king, then I want a whole like I want lords and ladies. I want there to be dukes. One hundred percent a return I want of, the of whole, culture. Yes, I I, I want to be able to. I, I'd like to, I'd like horses to make a comeback. I'm being honest. I'm fine with that. Or you can get and the, and the king. If we have horse based be economy, 70. Not be we launch them into space at recession. 69. If they mm. make it that long as king, which a lot of kings don't make it that long because everybody goes, now there's not a circle of bureaucrats with unaccountability. There's one guy who's the king. And so Who do you want to be a king. Pick your king. You got five seconds. <laughs> 
Fuck, this is hard. Uh, he called uh, it to Joe Rogan. You fucked up. The world's ruined now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You it's not Joe Rogan. It's, you know what? How about how about Joe Rogan can start, and we see where it goes. Actually, no, I don't want Joe Rogan as the king. Alex I, Jones. Who would be a good one? No, I don't want him hey. either. I don't want a fat. I don't want a fat king. He has to be fit. I mean, not that Joe Rogan's fat. Joe Rogan's fit. But how about that? Uh, I mean, uh, well, that guy's British. I was gonna pick your smart British guy. Maybe, maybe a black Frank science Rock. man. I nominate uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I want Black Science Man in there. No, and, that guy then, with his fucking smarmy tweets. None of that. None no, of, no, no, he can't he be king. Like you just don't understand taxes. You guys keep asking me about this money. <laughs> <laughs> All this is you can't do math. <laughs> 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 taxes, uh, money's not even real. It's actually just a system of numbers held together by central All banks. Right. And then it's we like, need a good king Neil. <laughs> with abs. Um, and he cannot currently be in politics. It would that would be a rule. Is when we move back to kings, no one who's been involved in any way at any level of American politics is eligible. You're all we all we send them all to Madagascar. Terry Crews, he John did great as Camacho. No, I don't like Terry Crews. That's the first one I've been kind of okay with. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you, you cut that guy's ass. He folds like a house of cards. That's John <laughs> Cena. How about John That's Cena? It's not nice. I pick He's John, popular. John Cena is popular in China, and so that's a natural. Oh, he speaks ally. Mandarin. He speaks Mandarin. He's jacked. He is always yeah. Went for his campaign to be seen, king. He can show fear. all those all those women. times that he helped people with uh, uh the Make a Wish Foundation. He's mm -hmm. like the most Make a Wish guy ever. So he's got a great TV right. show. You get me with the Make a Wish thing, but I'm on Colby Covington, and I think he can even beat up John Cena if you need him to. Oh, he destroyed John Cena. Yeah, for sure. And he's, he got a similar body type. Is he that really good looking Colby's, guy? Colby's got no, that Sage cardio. North He'll type. wrestle fuck him into that corner. Oh, he's the outrageously good looking he's one. Good Colby's looking. a good looking guy, though. Yeah. So far, he's the I'm, one, I'm liking uh, John a, Cena. Uh, on Colby's social media posts, he begins all of them the same way. He's like, what's up, nerds and virgins? And he's always got like a couple of bimbos <laughs> with him. And he, he's like, "You, I was going to beat up the, the king of stink, Marvin Vittori, on April 5th. But he's a fucking <laughs> coward and not an American. So instead... Yeah. I'm going to beat up that and his borderline oh. racist dog whistle. <laughs> like just I know who right I want. He's Sean fun. Strickland. That's who I want yeah. as king. I want a warrior king. That guy. He's oh. going to be coming out and about with, he's going to be direct with his people. He's going to tell us what's going on under the surface. Yeah. Sean I'm going to, my, my honest answer is probably going to be uh, Bill Belichick. I think that, uh, Bill Belichick, mm -hmm. not no. okay. Maybe ten years ago, Bill Belichick. You, you know, who, here's here's who I actually think could become president if they if they wanted to. The Rock. Um, I think The Rock is. I think betting that The Rock will someday be the president is a pretty good bet because you'd get great odds, and I think it's fairly likely. Do you think he'd this, be a good king? The Rock. Yeah. Well, no. No. <laughs> you know who'd be a half decent king? Michael Dubin. He's the guy that, that guy. founded Dollar Shave Club and made those funny commercials. He's been on the show. Okay. I don't know what he's why, up to. Wh why him? Why would he be a king? He's How about the funny. my pillow guy? He's funny and funny. he's a businessman. <laughs> That's yeah, enough. The, the my pillow guy. <laughs> funny yeah. businessman, please. We we put it out this road. It's great. Right. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, Trump is a funny businessman and there boom. you go. But he's been involved in politics, so he's ineligible yeah, he's, for he's king, ineligible. kingship. Yeah. No, Baron no, Trump. People. The tallest Ooh, king ever. Damn. The name Baron lends itself. To King kingship. Baron Trump. Yeah, and he okay. fucking and the fuck and like ten thousand big horns. Da -da! Da -da -da -da! And he fucking walks. I would out. like that. He's, but, got you know, lion, he's got a lion head on each shoulder as as like a like a shoulder piece. Okay, yeah. I, all right. Okay, all Every right. time he takes a step, a slave darts in front of him and gets their back in the way so that his foot. Will will catch perfectly. Never touches as, the ground. As he steps down from his you think litter. that King Baron would bring slaves back? I don't think so. Oh, he's bringing slaves back. We're gonna have white slaves this time. It's the classiest <laughs> of slaves. No, you know how you know there should be no discrimination. No, you, Every race should be able to be a, a slave. It, it's it's like in, the, in Baron's America. Like you can tell, like like the people who really have money have white landscapers. Joffrey, well, this is Baron Trump a, a foot and a half ago. King Joffrey, like dude. He's he's that yeah that's a while ago I I've last time I saw him he was gigantic like he looked like legitimately six 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 seven or something damn like gigantic yeah <coughs> so who would your actual king pick be Kyle and Josh it's who hard. would your king if pick you want some, be and they're gonna be like the de facto like king of America they're the king 
But it's a king, remember? And so if they really just fumble the bag, what happens to kings that fumble the bag? They get no got head. real fucking quick. And then the guy who replaces yeah. them, that guy better fucking fix shit. Otherwise, he's going to get got too. So you, you, would have, you would absolutely have to hit the ground running as king. You'd have to, you can't be uh, mealy mouth and, you know, deliberating. Yeah. You got to be Baron, immediate uh, king. Baron Trump, six foot eight, apparently. Um, I don't know. Like, like I, I would want someone, who, I think I'd want a smart person legitimately. I'd want yeah. like an intelligent person who, who also sort of had some sort of moral view on the world or at least had some patriot. Mm -hmm. Patriotism is important to me because yeah. I don't want some fucking do-gooder who's like, oh, inequality. Every American should be so much poorer. Like, I don't want yeah. that. I, I do want someone who's like an American first kind of guy. A Solomon kind of character. I, I saw something <laughs> the other day and, and, and it was these German people. We have American first. And we're like, fuck about us. And it's like, yeah, not you. Not you. That's what. Second place at best, bitch. Stay, stay in line. Like, like that's what. When we say America <laughs> first, we mean all of you behind us. That's what we mean. Just so Who you know, international people after America, probably that's China. What we believe we know. You know it's China. True. And you're like yeah. first yeah. in what? School shootings. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> true. Yes, amongst many categories, school shooting yeah. is one of yeah. them. What are you Keep first going. in Germany? Fucking also, probably engineering. So don't <laughs> count and nothing that you can't count engineering. Automobiles, German engineers. Wars lost. Okay. World wars lost. Like, like you're piling those up. <laughs> you invented the highway system, though. That's that's pretty sweet. We copied it, though. We did copy it, and we have a bigger country, so we got to have clover more leaves, off ramps, all that shit. They invented. We went again. It. Shit didn't exist before. <laughs> Maybe a professional athlete would be a good king. Someone Which one like though? that? Hmm. Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Why Wayne Gretzky? He can't even coach because he's the goat. At what? Playing reason. hockey. Yeah. He can't coach the team. Like, <laughs> it, it, does his team suck? No, okay, fucking you're okay. That's an excellent point. He wasn't a good coach. Not Wayne here. Gretzky. That's why I went with Bill Belichick. Like, but then I remember like since Tom Brady's been gone, you know, I think he's like a 44% win. How about someone fun like, like uh like uh throw Dave Portnoy in there? Dave Port Okay. No, they all right. So let me say this. I like Dave Portnoy. I like his content and I and I watch it always. He's got a mean petty streak to him sometimes which you wouldn't want the king. to be the king of the world got the targaryen in him huh yeah every now and then somebody will say remember that guy the other day it was a pizza owner he comes out he's like hey eat your pizza and go how about that how about i don't like being raided by the likes of you how about that i don't like what your business and he's like your shirt's five sizes too small you piece of shit get the yeah. fuck back in there <laughs> you know what 1.2 <laughs> you just made a mistake. You just made a mistake with your tight ass shirt. Five sizes too small. <laughs> in this business owner in front of his business, and I'm like, I, I scroll down to see how funny. many millions of people have watched it, and are all like, "Let's get him. Where does he live?" <laughs> I'm like, it's a little too petty. Dude, you know? that heavy. I, my politics don't align with Dave Portnoy, but I've looked past that recently, and I have to be impressed with what he's doing with his life. Right? It, it that business move he made. How did he get such a good offer? How did that tell you possibly he, happen? I saw him at like an Antifa type thing the other day. They got signs and shit down with capitalism mm -hmm. or whatever. And he's like, hey, you don't like capitalism? Mm -hmm. You know why? I bet you've never been to a, a $20 million house in Nantuck Nantucket. That's where I go. You know, I'm going to do I'm gonna go to my $20 million house off Nantucket. You ever been there? It's beautiful. Like, like <laughs> I almost verbatim, him. He's telling this poor kid this. He's like, yeah, of course you don't. You never, you never been in a $20 million house in Nantucket. That's where I'm going tonight. See you later, loser. And it's like, man, yeah, I, I think you're supposed to be above this. <laughs> no, that's why he's funny like, is he's not above that. He will just get in like, the dude. Aren't you worth nine figures? Why are you here shitting on this college kid bragging about your house in Nantucket? Well, which I'm sure day, is he's incredible. A, he's a content guy, so he's going for that, I would imagine. I like but, it. I've always liked yeah. it. Like Actually, he's he's my reviews. front runner for King so far. Throw Dave Portnoy in the mix. <laughs> no, see what happens. Keep doing pizza. That's all I need from Dave Portnoy. I'm happy that he's got so much money. He's got he can be like, you know what? Fuck you. Maybe I'll buy your business and ruin it. It's like, well, all right, hang on a minute. I'll do that. <laughs> like it's scary when someone worth a hundred million dollars doesn't like you personally in the street all of a sudden and you're a business owner, right? Especially when they got a media empire. Yeah. So there was that really viral he doesn't clip need more of him power. just like a week ago or so that he found out that some other news organization was writing a hit piece on him before they released it. And oh. he like live streamed himself calling the reporter and like 
roasted the reporter and like had an argument with her on the phone for like 15 minutes of like and it was it, it was like skeevy reporter shit the lady was doing he was like hey so i'm calling because you fucking said that i'm a a, a bad guy a bigot misogynist whatever and you're hitting up all of my because he, he he hosted a giant pizza event Huge. For a, yeah. a huge pizza event for a bunch of small businesses that he'd reviewed before to come and set up there so that people could go to this festival and try all these pizzas. And, you know, all, they're all small businesses. They're all pizza places. And he was like, so you guys are reaching out to the companies that I invited to my pizza festival and you're threatening them? You're like saying that things might go bad for them if they don't drop out or like don't give you dirt on me or something. Like, what's the deal with that? And she let off with like, no, that's not true. And like he was like, really? Because here's an email you sent that was just forwarded to me by one of those companies that says like and it was literally like the reporter threatening the business being like you're associating yourself with this person who we don't like at the Washington Post or whatever. This could go badly for you if it were to get out. And it's like just scumbag shit and then the reporter was like well that's a tactic we reporters use to get a response it's like really you just you just threaten mm. businesses if for, for associating with someone you don't like a guy who's like biggest offense as far as i know with about dave portnoy is like being bombastic and ridiculous like what the fuck that's a, just a just scumbag journalist behavior glad he live streamed that that was funny yeah, I, I like that he uh, he utilizes that power. He, he's well aware of the power that he has. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he usually uses uses it to help his buddies, which I guess is admirable as well. I don't have anything against him. I just don't think he needs any more power. He's plenty powerful enough. Like, like leave him where he is. Oh, yeah. Yes, Zach, do a couple ads. But no, I'll, I'll pull you around on it. Or maybe you can convince me out of Portnoy with a. a I'm going to try to think choice. of. I was going to ask the question, who do you think? And this will be good to think about while you do the ads. Who do you think who today is an admirable man like 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 in the public eye? Yes. While we think about that, we will hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. Ferrodistro.com, folks. Attention PKA fans, unlock a 20% discount on everything at ferrodistro.com. Whether you're a gummy enthusiast, starting with our 10 milligram Cub Scouts and 25 milligram Delta 8 is better, or HHC is better, or aiming for the 100 milligram worms, or even our 500 milligram sour belts for the pros, we've got you covered. For those who prefer to smoke, explore our carts, disposables, pre-rolls, and THCA flour. And let's not forget the Dab X Go and our premium dabs. For the holistic enthusiasts, delve into our range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms. Just use the code PKA20 at checkout, ferrodistro.com, quality you can trust. 20% off ferrodistro.com, PKA20. That applies to the Dab X, uh, which is the awesome smoking implement, the Dab Rig that Kyle and I use pretty much every day. Uh, also applies to disposables, pre-rolls, and the THCA flower, which they have. I need to talk to Sai, so he sends me a couple more joints of that. That shit is strong as fuck, mm. the THCA joints. So uh, go into that slow, smoking through it. Don't, you know, be chiefing it like it's, uh, you know, ditch weed in the 70s because it's not. It's, it's very <laughs> fucking strong, the THCA. Uh, also, the edibles. Don't be a hero. We say this every week. Uh, these are accurately dosed. They're incredibly strong. So if you think that you're a 10 milligram or a 25 milligram kind of guy, which are the lowest end of what they dose at, start there. There's no reason to, to send yourself to the moon and get uncomfortable because of how strong this shit is. And if you insist, because I've had people message me that do it, on getting the 500 milligram these fuck sour belts, uh, take the tiniest imaginable nibble off of it, please. Like, go slow. Don't be a hero. It's very strong, accurately dosed. And as we say every week, if you are unsure of your tolerance, be sure to start with the vapes. That's an easier way to slowly meet it, you know, get it into your system. Uh, you can make real-time decisions then. Oh, I just took two hits off of my HHC pen. I'm feeling pretty stoned. Well, thank God I smoked it because I'm not going to continue to zoot up to the sky. That's where I want to be. But if you're an edible person, as I am often, uh, check out the 25 milligram, the 10 milligram, or the 100 or 300 or 500 milligrams because they are just, they're apparently hitting every number between 10 and 500 at some point in time. So check it out. All sorts of edibles over there. Very tasty and very, very strong. Accurately dosed. Ferrodistro.com, PKA20. And uh, if you are interested in all in a dab rig, I encourage you to try out the Dab X Go. 
very clean, very easy. That little dish that Kyle mentioned that like collects the excess wax or oil or whatever you're using in the, the silicone base so you don't have any waste is super, super convenient. I'm glad you mentioned that a month ago or so because I had not cleaned mine out and I had a fuck ton of, of a, a mishmash yeah. of different stuff down there that, that got me high. Yeah, shit. that's some good shit down there. <laughs> that's some good shit. I rub it on there. my gums. <laughs> don't do that you're gonna have sticky gums and you won't get high <laughs> or i don't think you'd get high maybe you would but uh yeah just just um, use it as directed that's the much easier way to do it uh, ferrodistro.com pka20 for 20 percent off speaking of getting high as shit this episode is brought to you by freeze pipe our friends at freeze pipe just launched a bunch of new products that are taking the cannabis market by storm for the smoothest and coldest way to smoke cannabis, then you gotta try a freezable pipe, bubbler, or bong from Freeze Pipe. Their newly released mini bong and tornado bong are priced very affordably and punch well above their weight class. And for those who prefer smoking joints, blunts, and vapes, Freeze Pipe's new joint chiller brings much needed icy glycerin coldness when smoking any kind of joint, blunt, or vape. Say goodbye to harsh smoke and coughing attacks by shopping for the coldest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rigs at thefreezepipe.com and use code PKA for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com, code PKA for 10% off. Shop today and let Freeze Pipe's icy glycerin chambers do all the heavy lifting. So this thing that is new, their little, um, what did they call it? Freeze Pipe new joint chiller, a joint chiller, folks. So this side of it here you suck out of you hit and you put the joint in here and you freeze this and so it makes your joints and your blunts and shit and you can even if you want put like a, a vape in there because they have this little rubber thing to make it so it fits snugly and so i i have not uh had a cold blunt before still haven't had a cold blunt i used one of these with the joint but not with the blunt because i don't smoke Do i have one I don't of those have uh, you may not, because I have four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motherfucker. Well, tomorrow, One go get yourself just. a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this four. thing rolls. It's a great way to get icy cold smokables through your uh, a blunt or a joint. It's super, super convenient, and it's got these little legs here. And so unlike having to lean it up against something, you know how annoying it is with a joint, you can just put it down, and it holds itself up. Fantastic. Super, super convenient. This thing is great. Check it out. Also, uh, of course, they have this guy and a bunch of others. This one, I have the top part freezing in the freezer right now for post-show. And it is excellent. It's got a little cyclone perk down there at the bottom. So it goes... It goes up really, really fun. <laughs> wait, wait. How's it, how's it go? It goes... <laughs> you know, you cyclone sound. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I don't have to show you guys how to hit a bong. I imagine every single uh, person listening to this uh, may be high right now. So <laughs> check it out. Uh, Thefreezepipe.com. PKA for 10% off your entire order. Get yourself that smaller bong, or you can get yourself the big giant boy, which has like a freezable chamber this big. And it's beat a dog that, death, that big no around. Problem. Yeah. Really, really big and really, really cold. Uh, you can take sometimes when I take a giant rip out of that big bong when it's frozen, like the hit I take is so much bigger than the hit I thought I took. Like, you know, when the inhale is like, Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't a huge hit. And then you exhale and it's like five straight seconds of cloud. And it's like, Oh, I'm about to be <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> like I'm about to be pretty fucked up here. So check it out. 10% off links below for that. And this episode, of course, also brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement taking every industry by storm from mm. the podcast industry to potentially the pornography industry and the sex. Well, I guess that is the pornography industry. We need to get ourselves in the mix with porn stars with Lock and Load. Once they find out that they can get real measurable improvement in their ejaculation volume, they're going to love it. So if you or anyone out there is a friend or family member of an adult film star, loop us in with mm -hmm. them and we'll get to talk and maybe we'll do a sponsorship event. We'll get them a jacket or something. And then everyone's mm -hmm. going to notice they're going to be like, my God, uh, Joey Jizz used to just come a normal amount. But now that Joey Jizz is on now that Joey Jizz brought to you by Lock and Load, a PKA product is uh, what I'm jacking on to. Uh, he's busting a huge amount. And it's thanks to the Gross. efficacious dosages 
in here and lock and load code PKA code Jizz for 10% off this. And as we always say, it's a month supply. You don't need to be on this shit for two months to start noticing anything. You will notice halfway through the first fucking bottle that you are coming more. So check it out. Closest, Nine pills a day. I think our closest friend in the adult industry per se would be Finster. I think we would, we, he should probably, he probably knows some porn stars or, or something at this point. He's really, he's, he's just real deep in the, the land right. of Sodom and Gomorrah from what I hear these days, Taylor. Just then we're, is he, what's he up to? Oh, oh, I think he's making about $800,000 a month or something. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I don't know what he's making for real. Probably, probably 350 to 500 uh, more realistically. Just, just really just doing well. It seems well, like then let's get, is, is Finn making content where he's coming? I don't know, but I. Finn, I, if you're making com- content where you're coming, <laughs> let's make a deal. Let's let's, <laughs> let's <laughs> and get you on lock and load, and they'll be like, "My God, that pretty girl busts harder than I've ever seen a pretty girl bust before." So yeah. check it out. Or if you're not into coming more because uh, you're fucking lame. Imagine you can use how much someone with protein powder, energy drinks, weight loss supplements, any of the wonderful things over at Derek's shop. I don't, Links below. I don't know how Finster's OnlyFans works exactly, but I bet, I bet it wouldn't be hard for you to sort of donate a certain amount or pay a certain amount to get like a cum tribute, like a picture you would send Finster a picture of yourself, of course. And then, and so the lock and load would just do wonders for, 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 for something like that. You wouldn't be able to tell it was a picture of them. It would completely obscure the entire picture. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, Frost. that's true, Josh. It would. You, he'd have to intentionally miss off yeah, the side a little bit because otherwise you'd be like, "What the hell is this yeah. ectoplasm?" There's nothing under the Spider-Man been in here shooting web all over the place. Yeah, ropes in here, shooting. man. Ropes. Yeah. So if you want to be a web shooter, get locked and love. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good idea, Kyle. I don't think I don't think we have anyone else in the adult industry that we can tap other than Finn. Yeah. As far as a, a lock and load partnership goes going forward, or I think, yeah, like I, I think said, I'm sure he knows all sorts of degenerates who who come on camera at, at this point. So, um, you know, yeah. Well, then loop us in, Finn, with whoever mm-hmm. you're. You, I was going to say the heaviest comer, but even yeah. the lightest comer. Yeah, you know, yeah. we will. We need a before yeah. and after success story, and I have real confidence in this thing too. There's it no will. fucking doubt this person will hit new levels. That's why we're so confident pushing it because it fucking works. It's it's a great way to bust more. So yes. check that out. Josh, Stop. do you know any adult film stars that you could loop us in with? Unfortunately, don't, man. Not off the top of my head. Not unless it's like, you know, people I went to high school with and I hadn't kept up with them or something. But No, uh, not them. I'm stay well away. Okay, good. <laughs> not, not, not them. Let's say nobody not with any them. notoriety that I'm aware of. Ah, fuck. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't know any male porn stars. Uh, I think we talked about that a while back. Like I couldn't. You name can't that. name any. I think there's that one name that always pops up. Like James like, Dean is the one sense. I can name. Yeah, but he's known yeah, for like, uh, for the being a rapist. I think. Oh, what? I don't know anything uh, about. That's not you good. Dean. Oh, you heard it here, folks. He's been like blacked out, backballed from the. Uh... Is that a sex? He's, he's been uh, he's been blue balled. The... <laughs> oh, <laughs> he was serious about the, his work. Porn industry. Yeah, he's been blackballed. That's such Black a wild way to introduce industry. me to a person. Isn't that the rape guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my god. Whatever. Well, well, I thought James Dean died in the car crash in like the 30s. Different James that, Dean. Yeah, yeah, the spelling of yours is D E A N. This guy's D E E N. Um did he His name should have been James Peen. Hmm. I don't know who these made up people no. are, man. You, <laughs> you don't wrong. know you know Stoya? No? I don't know what Stoya is. I'm I don't sorry. know what Stoya is. Well, I can name like Four female porn stars and story is on that list. She's perhaps the like literally supermodel hotness in a porn star. I mean, well, I mean, shit, I'll write it down, but like, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's, it's one name, like Cher. Yeah, it's Stoya. Yeah, you could buy her um, vagina fleshlight. I was going for uh, it's called Stoya the Destroyer. <laughs> I don't have it. Beautiful. Someone sent it to my house. Did they really? <laughs> no, no. I, I, that's a request, not a not a thing that oh. happened. <laughs> somebody send it to my house. Oh, what if Stoya shows up, tries to take you away from it all? Oh, hard. With her, she, I imagine she's got a, like a, a Ukrainian accent because she. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretending she's Ukrainian. She's like, she. What if Stoya comes and she's like, Woody, come with me? 
Hmm. I need you to help me fight the Russians. That, ooh, that actually sounds kind of cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me Russian. You, actually, you, go, kind of cool. you, you go outside, and there's like a van full of guys who are all going with her to fight the Russians. <laughs> she's 37 yeah, now. I fan. knew she's been around for too long. Yikes. <laughs> In uh, December 2015, an article in the Daily Beast referred to Dean as the quote Bill Cosby of porn. <laughs> That's a bad what? adjective. You gotta be more specific. Like like 90s Bill or 20s Bill. <laughs> no, like he was teaching people life lessons while fucking. Like about uh, how to how to get into college. And <laughs> is that I don't think that's what she's saying. No. He gave everybody fudge pops and pudding. <laughs> no, apparently a lot of the male porn stars. Feel like uh, all the women are free use, and they're not all free use, and uh, that there's a culture of bad behavior in the industry. Are you meaning to tell me this industry attracts predators and like shitty people? Could have thought you heard That's it here unreal. first. Real, yeah, That's shocking. You think, whoa. They're, they're <laughs> <laughs> Were we trying to think of good people, celebrities? Because I have two for kings. Yeah, like or, an admirable, oh, I, I, like admirable yeah. dude. Like, like, who's I have your admirable two. man uh, celebrity? I, I didn't know it was tied into the king thing because the first one was the king, LeBron happen. James. It doesn't have to be the king. Um, thing. LeBron James impresses me in that he got like super famous at like 15 years old. And throughout all that time, there's never been anyone who's even had a bad experience with him, seemingly. He put a hundred million dollars into that school that raises people bad at math. But the intention was there. Uh, <laughs> the intention was there, where, where someone got killed outside of it, and, and nobody can do. It was a white kid. Don't yeah, it was a white kid. He doesn't even count. So, but but LeBron James, uh, apparently a super good guy, and I just know if he took fifteen year old Woody and made him rich and famous, he turned out to be a bigger asshole than he really did. Um, but the other one who I think you will all agree with, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, apparently super nice chick, um, does good things for everyone. I, I gotta say that I think that's an interesting proposition, but I definitely don't think that. I don't, I don't see everybody agreeing. <laughs> I, I, I think about Dolly Parton. She's very, very popular. Yeah, but I'm also aware that you know, there's she's uh tied herself up in politics. At least one side is perceived that oh, way or the other. You, you know, like my politics. She's not a political figure, though. That being said, oh, I got a figure though, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both left. Both you... left. She would have to have some wild takes to make me overlook yeah. those tits. <laughs> I think isn't she's it trans queen, issues then, or something? Isn't it trans Didn't, issues or something? Let her say whatever remember, she I wants. What she's into. I don't even know um, what side you're talking. I, what about. what I know about Dolly Parton is Dollywood is a great theme park when you're a kid. Went there many times, and hmm. uh, um, she's got big titties, which is always just wonderful. But uh, she's got this book program where. I don't know how many books they've given to kids who apparently need books for whatever reason, but it's like so many millions of books. Yeah. Seems like a good thing. I don't care what politics club. are. Yeah, I don't care what the politics are, I guess. As long as she's not like, I don't know. Uh, maybe I do care what her politics are. I agree with you. I think that's like the more important listen, part. Is what there are people who might disagree with her politics, but I don't think anyone's ever accused her of not coming from a good place. And that counts for yeah, a lot. Sure. For me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, she seems nice enough. That's it. I, mean, uh, I think that's not a bad contender in my personal opinion, you know. But I also know that a lot of people that were fans of hers throughout like the seventies and eighties nowadays really, really hate her. So, well, those are <laughs> not old, for any. Those, yeah. are, those are old Southern white people, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> they hate everything. You're right. Yeah, mm. that ain't um, nothing personal. Yeah, it, it's hard. Oh, <laughs> Trump hard. wants to be the Speaker of the House. Like, I, I there's been updates since the show started, and I guess he's saying that you know if you guys can't agree to Speaker of the House, I'll take it. I'm running for president, so you know maybe ninety days I'll be your Speaker. He's just going to yeah. add that to his resume and do the job. That would be really cool. Um, it could be anyone. You know, there's no prerequisite for Speaker of the House. You you can be the speaker. I didn't they, know they that. Be like, you know what? This Matt Woodworth guy making a lot of fucking sense. The only he, he'd be here I've by noon tomorrow ever heard of you <laughs> is the one about not being on felonies. But yeah. I just read like the Republicans are likely to ignore that rule. It's not a law. Remember, I said, I don't know. Maybe the Senate or the president. It's a rule. Rules are meant to be changed. So that's not what they say, but but I get your point. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to say broken. I meant to say they probably. I, I said what I did on purpose. <laughs> but uh, um, I love that timeline. Make him make him speaker of the house. I love that there these accomplishments that these hardworking other people who are like Washington ilk like would have dreamt of. Like, oh my god, can you believe there's only been whatever. 
57 speakers of the house in the history of our country. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's it's quite an accomplished to be one. And then you add Trump's name to that list and it stays there forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there only forever. been I forget. I don't know. I think I mean, there's been no three idea. speakers of the house this century. Something okay. like that. Like it's not one that happens a ton. Oh. Um, I see you. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I there might I don't be, pay attention. Maybe there's four, but they pretend there's three because there's that Republican dude who was the rapist and they just removed him from the wall. There's no painting of him. Damn. I don't know anything yeah. about that either. Well, Hats I hope they make him Speaker maybe? of the House. It'd be really funny. And that's all I care about. That's what I want from my politics. I want humor. I the want I want the I, I love and uh, and this is sports too, when they're like never happened before can you believe this sequence has never occurred before that i love that like you're seeing a first oh. a historic first it's great he was a pedophile rapist Shit. his victim was nine or ten years old he was oh. a rest yeah he was on his he was a wrestling coach or something and he <laughs> raped his wrestlers he's the speaker he, of the house republican speaker of the house yeah yeah, they kind of just removed him from the book. It wasn't long ago either. Like, but the asterisk really. on him, like it was Balco days. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I, I, again, I always go back to this. A lot of pedophiles. 99 to 207. 99 to 207. 2007. I said it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's why it works. Well, so, I, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about that. What was his name? Dennis Haster. Let me make sure that the Dennis. Yeah, I'm right. Oh. I don't know that name kind of rings a bell, but it's just something mm -hmm. I heard on the news a long time ago, as far as I know. Um, yeah. No, I'd love for Trump to get in there. I, I love the Trump story. I hope that he gets in and, and gets to do more stuff. And I really hope that he doesn't die before we get like, like his full story. I want to see the full Trump story. I want him to get to a clear conclusion. If he became president, that's a good book in right there. Like, like whatever, however this presidency ends, that's how we'll end your biography for sure. Like we're not going to continue on. There's going to be a happily ever after, or some, there's gonna be some text uh, right. after the presidency in your biography. I feel like biography. this ends one of two ways. One, yeah. he's the he's the president. He kind of pardons himself or he just says, fuck you. Go ahead. States enforce your jail against me. Get and try. Get me. Or the other is he ends up in some sort of gold plated, toilet prison thing right where like House he's arrest, confined to mar-a-lago to play golf for the rest of his days yeah People i hope that that's the worst they do i hope they don't try to put that man in a real prison because it what are you doing People say, for whatever that's worth, that that's not really on the list of possibilities. That he's he's never going to go to a real prison surrounded by Secret Service, kept safe. That right. yeah, like like I the think if he did of, go to prison, he'd have to go to the Florence, Colorado maximum supermax. I mean, I don't see any other. They'd either have to do that or that because they wouldn't let him mix with the normal population. Period. So it makes so much more sense. I had so a, much cheaper. Send him home. Put a put a bracelet on his ankle. Right. My <laughs> my idea was like empty out an entire wing of a minimum security place that's a little more comfortable where that's he's more realistic safe. to be yeah. fair you just need to sell somewhere you know you like like i don't know why he needs i don't know it, it's a it's an unfathomable thing i i really hope they don't try to incarcerate a, a former president while he's running and leading to become president again it just i that could end poorly like maybe we have a little revolution or maybe some of the military doesn't like the way that goes you know what i mean like that that seems crazy talk to me in that theory this gonna, New York case doesn't break him financially. Like, yeah. he is, they're talking about a $250 million fine, which presumably he has, and he'll certainly have if they sell all his properties, like against his will. They're going to auction off his stuff. So it definitely puts a dent in like his legacy to some extent. Yeah. But like, I don't he know. He'd probably just maybe. wave his hand over it and make it all go away if he wins, though. Like, let's say they, they order him to pay the $250 million and take all of his shit away. I, I would imagine that that takes more. They don't just do it instantly. I would hope there's like people who the He's ownership. An, I, 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 like so I don't it's, know, it, but. it's New York and it's civil. So the president doesn't have the power to make it go away, but does the president have the power to make it go away? It, like, yeah. if, you know, I believe that also technically means the prison wouldn't be on the line for it. I'm sorry. Um, say that again. I said, I think that also means that in this particular case, the prison wouldn't be on the line. Right. Can you go to prison for a civil suit? Oh, no, you can't. You're right. Yeah. yeah. But still, yeah, I mean, the, we're the whole thing is absurd. Um, I did. Did you see that clip? It's um, it, with uh, it's set to friends music. And it's like President Trump. The camera's panning around the courtroom. It's like Trump 
There's the prosecution, and they're over there oh. giggling and having a good time. There's I don't know Latita Brown or whatever her name is, the 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 lady from New York who's like pushed all these charges. She's back there staring daggers into the back of Trump's head, like clearly malicious, and like this is all about her hatred for Trump, or at least it factors <laughs> in. And then the, and then it like camera flicks up to the judge, and the judge is like, "Hi!" Like taking glasses <laughs> off, and he's smiling. He goes. Uh. Like, like, well, it's like it's so funny, and but but then, tr but Trump did not look like he's having a good time. I look the last time somebody upset Trump this much, it was when Obama tried to embarrass him at that at that correspondence <laughs> dinner, and he responded by becoming the president of the United States. They need to leave him alone. I hope he doesn't die because of this or during this. I hope we get to see, like I said, either find him guilty and he and it doesn't work out and he doesn't become president, or I really want to see him run again. I, I want to see if he can do it because Biden is just weaker by the day. Not that Trump isn't. I mean, it's not like Trump's getting stronger, but I, Biden's on a steeper slope. I'd like to see Trump literally run. Show me that. No, I don't want to see that. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it shirtless. Ooh. I don't. I don't think he could run really. He'd it'd be like a little one of those little like jog step jog sort of thing yeah yeah must be yeah most of the people in politics right now can't run i don't think dude it's getting older and older Physically like it's not wrong. just perception like the the average age at of these people is just climbing by way more than lifespans are increasing we had a They're sitting politician older. drop dead a few days ago at 90 years old i mean <laughs> feinstein feinstein yeah yeah, That's yeah. So that, just she, that was, out of nowhere. Like, she voted the same week she died so see what I mean? <laughs> I guess um, Nancy Pelosi wanted her to hold her seat so that uh, she could retire at the end of her term and Adam Schiff would run, but not like I'm trying to remember. So she wanted Adam Schiff. And then the rumor was Gavin Newsom, who gets to appoint it, wanted somebody else, maybe Katie Portler. And in the end, Gavin Newsom picked this chick that seems like a lobbyist insider kind of raising money for Gavin's campaign. And now she's a senator and gets the something of an incumbent advantage if she wants to hold the job. Felt dirty. And I don't I, I try to be honest in this stuff, like whether it's blue or red, but I have my biases. But this is blue and it looked dirty. It looked like he yeah. put this. She wasn't a politician. Like, I think if you're a senator. If you're, if you're going to put someone in the Senate seat, they should maybe currently be some sort of politician, maybe in the House of Rep already, you know, and or then escalate them. Yes. But uh, instead, he just grabs like the person who raised the money for his campaign and made her senator. Yeah. We were um, Halloween's coming up, of course. We were talking about Ooh, or I was yeah, yeah. I was in the chat yesterday telling Taylor and, and oh, Chiz candy yeah. that I'm trying to figure out what kind of candy to give the children um, in, in my neighborhood. And uh, I sent him that map of all the popular candies, uh, you know, every state in the United States, because uh, the rest of the world doesn't exist. We don't care what y'all eat. No, and, I don't um, think they do Halloween the rest of the world. Mexico does, right? Day of the Dead, such. It's basically Halloween, sure. Yeah. Uh, I like, uh, I think I settled on a mixture of Snickers and Reese's, like you said. Mm -hmm. But um, but I'm going to branch out and get like some Jolly Ranchers and stuff, too. But but I, I do like the idea. So I've got a refrigerator with like like one of the, like a big wine fridge that I usually just keep my sodas in. I'm thinking about wheeling that out on the porch, and you know, it's got a, it's got the clear door, and just stocking it with like I don't know maybe six six sodas at a time, so they can't clean me out. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and, and like half a dozen cold candy bars at a time or something that, again, so they can't clean me out. Um, and uh, and just keep restocking it because, like you said, like a cold soda would be so awesome if you were trick or treating. Oh, yeah, yeah. that'd be big. Like, I, I'm making I some you'd assumptions about Atlanta's population, but I'm right. trying to Google what is the most popular candy for black people. Yeah, Sprite, uh, Sprite's <laughs> the soda, and uh, uh oh, candy I'm Sprite. way ahead of you. Yeah, they love Sprite. <laughs> What are you way ahead of me on? Because did your Google search come up with cotton candy also? <laughs> No, I don't like it. that. What's that, Kyle? Black people like cotton candy. That's the that's what the internet says. <laughs> How would you hand out cotton candy? I think really you're missing gross. the joke. But that's oh, what I, it said. I, I, I'm there. Like <laughs> I'm there with the, with the uh, cotton. Okay. But yeah, I, I would not want to be given cotton candy ever. 
It's a There's, dog shit candy. It's it's real gross, and your when your fingers get sticky, like like what are you gonna do? Like I'm walking around the neighborhood all sticky and gross now. Yeah, uh, I don't want to do that. I disagree. Um, it's sugar, and I like it. Sugar, Not that I'm gonna pick sugar. it or give it out or whatever, but like it, if you got cotton candy and we were walking at the fair today, and you're like, Woody, can I share? You know, do you want some? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, do. I would say no. I would say no if I was off for cotton. Really? Candy. If you offered yeah. me a deep fried Twinkie, I'd be like. Oh, Fucking cut it in half. Let's split that thing. Let's do it. I think you're 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 that's big that's mogul moves having cold soda for the trick or treaters. I remember just yeah. <laughs> I remember just one time I was in a uh I don't remember how old I was, probably eight or nine, but I was doing that thing where like you hit one neighborhood and then your parents drive you to like a friend's neighborhood and then you hit that one and you get all the candy. And there was one house that was handing out like ice cold cokes and sprites, and I remember being like, "Oh, what!" Like the, <laughs> the 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 possibility of getting soda door to door hadn't dawned on me, and I remember thinking, "Like this is an awesome house. Like this is the best house I've come across." They know everybody else is given food, and that chocolate it makes you thirsty. You're parched, yeah. and you're 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 walking around, you're exercising, and now you got an ice cold sprite. To wash down your so your your candy mix, so never get I your think house you egged. should lean into it. Yeah, you'll never get your house egged because ever. Ever, people will defend your house. They'll Hell be like, yeah. "Protect <laughs> the like, soda uh, man's uh, house." Uh -huh. Soda man's house. house. Yeah. 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 War, an army of goblins and ghosts and vampires <laughs> protecting your home, <laughs> with each with an empty can of Sprite or mostly empty to throw at the the teenage hoodlum. So yeah, I think if you went cold candy bar and cold soda. I yeah, don't think the there's a house in Atlanta that could compete with you. You're going to be a legend. When I got the soda yeah. out of my main refrigerator, it made everything so much nicer. Um, it, I, I just I have a wine fridge completely stocked with sodas. <laughs> I do like the same I thing. stock it completely full, like it's an episode of Cribs, and sit back and like, yeah, that's eighty five fucking sodas in that bitch. <laughs> you know, I have like, a wine fridge or a beer it fridge takes also. A day to cool off. I, I cannot. Yeah, it, it does take a long time to get them all ice cold. I cannot remember the last time like an actual beer was in my beer fridge. It's Fresca, mm -hmm. Diet Pepsi, and like lemon waters. And that's, in my gym, I've got um, that, I've got one of those Red Bull uh, coolers or refrigerators, like from my um, a gas station convenience store with the lid you pull off the top. Um, and I just got that full of Gatorade. But um, like right behind my couch, because the kitchen is back there, I have that wine fridge stocked full of like my three favorite sodas, and uh, I, I love it. And now my main fridge can just be food, which is, is so much better. Just so it much is. Better. But yeah, Josh, I think I want to down on the the candy thing. Where would what are you giving out this year? Are you going to be a peasant, a pauper, giving out handfuls of trash nonsense, or are you going to go big? Candy corn. Man, I'm going to be surprised if we get trick or treaters. To be honest, in this where I live, we just moved into my own place. Thankfully, a uh, like a two months ago, and we're kind of on like a county road, a long driveway, and then across from a long driveway and far from the neighbors. I'm really not sure we're going to get any trick or, tre trick or treaters, but now you got me thinking that I better get at least a bag of some. Definitely least. something. I'm going to go with uh, like Kit Kat bar, the shareable size ones, man, and some Snickers and Reese's. I think Snickers and Reese's are always global popular, you know, or at least in, from the Southern perspective, I feel like those are, those are always King. Oh, it's like Dr. Pepper nasty. Mountain Dew. It's a W all the way. Um, yeah. So probably Reese's, just like some general chocolate mixed bag. Oh, I feel Reese's like and candy, Snickers you can't go wrong with. I feel like I got a small dick for my Halloween now. Kyle's talking about how he's got a damn fridge he's going to put out there and the damn well, actually, refrigerated I mean, candy bars is I, awesome. I mean, if, you, if you've got two hundred dollars, you can get yourself a refrigerator. I'm not. I'm, I'm not flexing that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and, <laughs> I have a mini fridge too, but I'm not. Well, them la me da with your fridge. It's more of an idea than like a flex. It's it's like it's hey, more of a I concept. Soda out there, yeah. there, there for now. It's I a theoretical. It's a physical the effort involved. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a good thought, man pretty strong I like it I, I think i could get uh yeah. i wanted something other than candy though i like the idea of like oh that's mm. the boiled peanut house <laughs> or, or or like oh yeah that's the yogurt man don't be the fucking yogurt man <laughs> Please unless you want man. broken right? windows <laughs> <laughs> that's dude if i would have showed up man. at a house and there was a yogurt man like i never terrorized homes after the fact <laughs> It oh didn't, shit! It didn't on the bottom. Me. Let's go. I'm but a just regular give out razor blades and explain you forgot to get candy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <biotic>. <laughs> Hell yeah! What do it's kids love? 
not probiotics. probiotics. Okay. Like, <laughs> they love granola that. and probiotics. They're gonna be fucking rizzed <laughs> out with and 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 goaded with the sauce. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> Just shit in your mailbox in no, two minutes. You know what? Some some guy who is alpha with his is you're gonna get full cans of Coke from his house thrown through your windows. Dude, I was th so here's my situation. I have a long driveway and no one comes. For the first like three years, we bought all this candy because like uh, we have. We have a big house, so I didn't want to like give out anything less than appropriate candy, right? Like big Snickers bars and stuff. Hundred percent. So, um, uh, and then every year we got zero trick or treaters, none. We had decorations and stuff like to attract them, but didn't work. They just didn't. <laughs> I guess the walk reward ratio wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So now we just don't even turn the lights on and don't do it because all the buying the candy did was make my family fat. And uh, uh, we're still going. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So now. If someone were to knock on my door, I have no choice but to give them edibles because it's the only candy. <laughs> don't be that guy. Do I got some that. gummies. So I don't know what else to do. Don't be that guy. Do not be it's that guy. genius. Do, do not be the give guy that cats. like myths are made do not from. Give them <laughs> oh, that's the biggest flex ever. Like, imagine if you were giving five dollar bills out. Ooh. You want to get like, robbed? Like, that's a flex. Like, yeah, like if, you're get, if, if you're just like 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 the kids are strippers and the parents look <laughs> the parents look and you're like doing this and the kids are all dancing and you're and, and, <laughs> no, yeah, they're, they're, they're kids I realize like bad look. Roll of okay dennis hastard good idea <laughs> yeah i'm giving away up. jared's not a bad uh idea actually that's for, a great uh, idea kyle costume. you could get on the local news yeah local <laughs> creep giving out money makes it rain on some yogurt local man kindergartners. <laughs> the, yogurt man. the yogurt man what, and everyone eat. hates him i've seen <laughs> people who had the same situation as you woody with the long driveway and mm. you don't want to do this but but people who are like super into halloween for whatever reason i always suspect, suspect pedophilia uh they'll set up this whole little pavilion at the end of the driveway with like yeah. square hay bales around and jack-o-lanterns and table the, you do this thing where you got a candle and a paper bag and make this like uh, like spooky thing you can that's real cheap and uh, easy to make have they'll have a, a whole little idea. thing at the end of the driveway I was like, i'll attach the trailer to the ta tractor we'll do hay rides which is like an october thing and i'll bring them but everyone said one that was like a liability nightmare that, like farm equipment yeah. and children are a rough yeah. mix and uh um uh, two i don't know if it would even work so it'd be a hard to, it'd be hard to like you know, you need a crowd of kids to show up at the end of your driveway to make that work. I've been, yeah. I did one of those. I was going to go into the subdivision, yeah. right? Like, oh, go to where the up. kids are, to, you know, haul them like a quarter mile back to the house. <laughs> so you're just like a really creepy Hello, like, pie children. Piper. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> driving Here's some weed around, gummies. collecting. Just, <laughs> how long? <laughs> how long before the police get Jared? called when a strange man in his own fucking farm <laughs> equipment is collecting children from the cul de sac? No, we've got even more candy back Imagine. in the house. Imagine <laughs> if a scarecrow pulled up driving a tractor and Jared from Subway's in the back beckoning the children in. Mm -hmm. Like, like that. handing out Pied Piper. six inches. Six inch sub <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, well played well played I like yeah it. that's yeah. that is a uh, that is disappointing that you had to eat your own candy because i know yeah. candy is a big love of your life woody you love the sugar and the sweets and so <laughs> that is tough i had so much extra candy after last year that like it it i easily gained a pound off of it in the following week because every time i would walk past my foyer i'm like <laughs> doo -doo -doo, they're so little <laughs> like <laughs> because i like i got some regular size snickers and those like i handed those all out first except i still had a couple of those left yeah it's not maybe those my favorite ago. candy is reese's miniatures it's the perfect chocolate to peanut butter ratio the mini you've had this so debate up good. and down i know and people need to know it people it. need to know it I, I say good. every week. I like mini better than the main ones. I told they you. got a little more chocolate. I like the yeah, the ratio is a little better. I agree. A little more chocolate mm. gives it just a little more stiffness, a little more, it's a little less grainy. Have yeah. you given any thought to your Halloween? You're wrong. You're but right. also don't really like, <laughs> you gotta also don't like peanut butter every that much. mini. What is this? Like the it's no, the you get them in a bag and wrap. They now. make them in bags and just one yeah, big ass. They're bag. just loose American style. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys shit, deny we're in a recession, and you're I raving was about, to call about them little the snow crab of Halloween candy, where you have you can to, put like, them out in a bowl, like meat. wrapped, but you can get them in the bag, like you can just grab them, like handfuls of popcorn. <laughs> what if you're like a like a Toblerone house? Now that's a wealthy man's candy. Damn, is it? I think you know what I like that, that uh, Pepper and Patties and Junior Mints are actually some of my favorite candies. 
Ferrero uh, Rocher. That huge Those I tried Ferrero them for the first Rocher time in things. ten years. That might be that might be the way to really like pretend like you're flexing because everybody thinks those Ferrero Rocher th- little uh, hazelnut balls are expensive, but they're, they're not. not. They're cheaper than hand candy. What are those the things with up? the cherries floating in the sugar? Cherry jet? cordials. Is that it? Chocolate yeah. covered those... cordials, I believe. Don't you, you trick like me that? into eating fruit on <laughs> <laughs> on this holy day of all days? No, it should be candy and nougat and sugar and everyone like not a single vitamin will pass my life. I, I've been looking yogurt. at Halloween costumes. Um, I've been putting a bit of thought into mm-hmm. it, and uh, I don't want to spoil what I what I'm thinking of doing because I'm I'm like eighty percent set on something now. But one of the things I looked at was those really hyper realistic masks. Um, I wanted a Vladimir Putin mask. That's and <laughs> at first they they seem kind of affordable, especially if you do mm-hmm. stuff like we do, and it's just like oh, I could bring Vladimir Putin out as a whole character. Like, hang yeah. on a minute, <laughs> but. It's like $550, $600 for the cheapest of masks, the realistic ones. And then you're like, they're like, you didn't want eyebrows, did you? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I wanted eyebrows. What kind of ghoul do you think? <laughs> realistic for a reason. All right, $250. For eyebrows? Yeah, it's real hair. Do, must- do you want a mustache? Well, show me what it looks like. Oh, my God. The one with the mustache and the glasses and the, that's Dennis Rader now. And then I saw that, that when you put the, the horse, uh, like 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 the, the male pattern baldness mm. and uh, the mustache on their old man, it became Dennis Raider, the, the BTK, BTK killer. killer. Yeah. Yes, wow. it looks so much like him that you basically became him. It's the mask. It's like it's the, it's like those masks that Johnny Knoxville would wear when he pranks people on the street or does the old man shit. They look hyper realistic, but once you throw all the hair on them, which you need to be to like fit in mm-hmm. with humanity, <laughs> and mm. they're like fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars for this mask, and I'm like, I'm gonna. I don't think I need a twenty-five dollars mask. That's way too mask. much, especially yeah. if like you're sitting on mic and it's like kind of interrupting the way you speak. Like that would that wouldn't be ideal. Dude, it looks. These are the ones that like you know it's going to be glued to the top of your eyelid. Like they're they're kind of seamless. Like you need a, a makeup artist to put it on or to help you with it. But it's mm-hmm. it's kind of glued on. We should we should the... all the mask of each other. <laughs> and that, and that, that episode i can be kyle woody can be me and kyle, oh, you that would can be, be woody that would be so upsetting to look at a man it was like the whole thing like yeah. immediately devolves into like i'm kyle i'm gay like <laughs> yeah, that's what i was thinking, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Fucking retard. <laughs> yeah, you guys would be roasting each other through the mask that's exactly what i was thinking <laughs> yeah, you know, I help know. me i forgot how to breathe or something yeah <laughs> The audience is like, this is stupid. And it's like, well, we're in 7,500 for that episode. <laughs> we're, we're but I do like, like those masks mask. and I kind of want one. Like, like I don't know what I want it for. I really don't. I just, it, it's cool. They look so real. They look Never so did. fucking real. They, you just pull that thing Why don't on you just, and uh, Hillary Clinton. Putin <laughs> does not have facial hair. So you would seal some savings there. Yeah, um, I didn't see the Vladimir Putin ones I saw were were sold out like long, and it, there was no way to get a Vladimir Putin. No matter, no matter I want to be Kim Jong Un. Mm. Yeah, have that one. They, I, they definitely have it. If they have Putin, they the definitely voice. have Un. You you could probably pull off a Kim Jong Un if you styled your hair just right. Anywhere, so. like, like I do need to, need to shave. You need to get off the diet. I'm gonna yeah. shave. <laughs> Yeah, get get Kim real. Jung. I need to develop a. No, Kim Jong lost something weight. That he that he eats a ton of Did cheese. It. I thought I read something that he's like <laughs> really. Oh, really the sacrifice him. Taylor would have to make. Well, I might uh, have to cut down. They say <laughs> he eats a pound of crab a day to maintain his his masculine physique. <laughs> My God, he did lose weight. You're right, but I don't know if he's. Yeah, man, I don't know if he's. Know that. This if he's is looking good or not. Yeah. Um, so, well, this uh, this doesn't seem like a reputable website, entertainment.ie, but it says Kim Jong Un may be dying because he's addicted to Swiss cheese. It's not even a good cheese. It's not the kind of cheese that you would just want to sit and munch on. Swiss gouda, like like a, like some a nice gouda, gouda, a nice Gruyere, <laughs> something like that is what you something might like want. Spread, I was like hoping I'd know the cheese you liked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you never had Gruyere or. or... I don't, not Gouda? that I know of. I like about the pepper Havarti. jack on a sandwich. A little mm. what? Havarti cheese? That's another good cheese. <laughs> oh, Man, cheese? your cheese knowledge Have you is seen... like my candy knowledge. I know, <laughs> <you don't> get... <laughs> I know you don't get commercials, but I uh, 
I I clicked some movie on like Roku or the other day and watched a couple of commercials to so I could didn't have to buy the thing. And Zaxby's advertised they have a chicken sandwich. Here's what they do: they got a, they took a scoop of pimento cheese spread and put it right in the middle of the sandwich, and then on the bun they take a squirt of honey. And they soak the bun in honey, and then they make the sandwich and wrap it up. That's disgusting. It's the pimento cheese and honey uh, spicy pimento cheese that spread. So it's well, not it's, so it's just like it's emulsified vegetable oil and bullshit. No, no, you can see it. There's like bits of cheddar cheese in there. I'm sure they make it there. Chick Fil A's like about as high quality as it gets. But that sounded like mm. the most unhealthy sandwich of all time. Pimento cheese is just mayonnaise and chicken and pimentos mixed together. As far as I know. I wouldn't uh, want that sandwich. I agree. I would with try it, bro. but it sounds disgusting. But I've also been shocked before. I've thought stuff sounded like it was going to be nasty. And I try it, and I'm like, it's actually a pretty good combo. It works. So I mean, I'd take a yeah, bite like of it. Pi- I guess I like pineapples on pizza. That's I don't understand why people uh, don't like that or think that. Like, like, do you really identify with pizza or like is your culture cultural like <laughs> relevance? It, does it matter? I, I, see, to this you is what the, happens with pizza. Like, I don't. This is the the, the thing I don't understand about the pineapple on pizza argument is if you're like. Yeah, I don't like that as a topping. I don't think it should be on there. I think it's gross. People are like, oh, are you some pizza purist? It's like, no, I also don't want Jolly Ranchers on it. I don't want sweet pieces of fruit on it's pizza. It's not good with it Jolly Ranchers match. on it. I don't think it's good with pepperoni, or not pepperoni, I mean, with pineapple. But if you said that you hated Italian sausage, ooh, I wouldn't be like, oh, there's jalapenos the worst. on it too. This is the best good. they could make that look. <laughs> look at the hunt. Yeah, the that honey. is how they do it. Look yeah. at the honey peeking out between the jalapenos. It's it's, it's just a puddle of that honey. Looks, that looks terrible. Mm. I mean, I'll take a bite of it, bro. Oh, oh my that, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll wait. He tells it. you not to worry about. Look how much. Like, like, <laughs> like, this is how it, this is like a customer photograph too. It actually does look mm-hmm. really good. Mm, That's not no. bad for for legit for a fast food place. I gotta yeah, say, it looks really like, it, good. What's not a bad uh, bun? You mentioned Josh. Like what? What's a food you guys have all starting with Josh? Obviously, that you guys thought would be gross at some point in your life and then you tried it and you had like a, a renaissance on that food bro i mm. i have a gnarly one but i was only like 11 years old right for we had chinese roommates whenever i was younger for a while and uh they prepared this thing for easter they didn't really understand easter he knew yeah. it. he got holiday and egg he didn't speak that great english yet even though he's going here to old miss right and um <laughs> So that's what he gathered. It's an egg holiday. So he made this thing. I think they call them black eggs where it's like hard boiled eggs, possibly or normal eggs. Anyway, they completely submerge them in a jar of soy sauce and bury it in the ground for a long ass time. Oh, my God. And, and then pull it out. Yeah. And and that's and when he opened that jar, not only did the entire house smell like straight sulfur immediately, my whole family started <laughs> gagging. My grandpa was over here, like retching over the trash can and all that. And I was the adventurous kid. I said, Josh, give it a bite, man. I ate that stuff until I literally threw up. And now I'm old enough to know. That it was probably too much sodium. I probably, I mean, I was the shit looked, it was like clear yellow, the eggs. It didn't even look like an egg. It's like a gelatinous Ugh. clear yellow. And I took a bite of it and it was delicious. It tasted like just kind of salty eggs. It didn't taste totally saturated mm. like you would think. It's like it had only absorbed so much and got saturated. So it was like really salty eggs. Um and huh. it was terrifying. I'm not gonna lie, I thought I was gonna throw up, but my whole family was kind of daring me to do it, and I loved it. That's why, almost exactly why, what they look like. These ones were why, a little uh, more transparent. Why did they, I don't understand if it's in a jar, why was it buried? I'm not sure. I think it's part of the tradition of it. I, I'm oh, not sure. Okay. Maybe they call them thousand year eggs or black eggs or something like that. Um, he didn't live with us at the time yet. He went on to become our roommate. So, so no one I didn't steals your disgusting eggs. <laughs> so no one steals your, your rancid rotten eggs. It might, yeah, it might have just been instinct. Just keep it away from everybody. You know, Nobody steal my eggs. <laughs> I would say eggs. if you're in a from culture animals. where that is a delicacy, you're that. probably... Don't have a lot of food, so you better hide it. That looks That's, almost exactly yeah. like them. That looks Look like what that mosquito got trapped in in Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. I was just yeah. thinking that looked like the amber. Yeah, it yeah, looks like amber. amber. Damn, I would not want to try that. But I'm, I'm glad that you found out that you liked century eggs. I Delicious. I'll called. never have them again. Yeah, I think that is it. Yeah, century century eggs. Yeah. I only know that because like when you watch like a reality show often that's the thing that's like an early on like get ready to eat something gross oh, and then really? they, they have to eat a century I like egg it. okay that's there's a good this, one um, that's very unique there's a southern dessert and uh you take mm. a pear and you, you cut it in half you got two pieces now and then you uh take mayonnaise and shredded cheese put on top of that and a cherry in the middle and that's the dessert i can't remember what it's called it's called like pear salad or something 
and it is a very pop. It used to be a very popular Southern dessert. I think it's from a time gone by to some extent, but I've had it. I've had it before, and uh, Zach will find a photo of it. It looks like what I just described. It's, and you liked it? You liked it? It's pretty good, you know. It's just not like, as bad as you would think. It's this weird mixture of flavors and textures that weirdly works, you know. I I, I haven't had it since. Um, My answers are so standard. One cranberry sauce. I think every child hates cranberry sauce, then grows up to realize eh, it's got something there, a little tang. It can be good. I like it. The other is Brussels sprouts, but I'm not sure I actually like the Brussels sprouts. As much as I found a place or two that prepares it, it's probably sh- filled with butter and other goodness. Mm. Oh, man. That sucks. That's gross. That looks nasty. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like yeah. that. You like deviled eggs? No, I don't like mayonnaise. Dev- I can eat so many deviled eggs. Love my, That's yeah, our- I love deviled eggs. Well, mayonnaise is a big part of our culture as white people, so you need to get the fuck on board. You're like a black I'm not person. on board with, with mayonnaise. No, nah, I, I don't braid like my that. hair. Like... Shazan, get the fuck over here and get them braids in your hair. <laughs> Taylor, get <laughs> your mayonnaise. Either eat, mayonnaise. either eat your mayonnaise sandwich and get the fuck on or get over here and get these box braids in. Just Shazan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how it'd go down. Like, like it's part of your culture. It's mayonnaise. So get with it on everything. No, mayonnaise in is everything. not part of my culture. Not my president. Not my condiment. <laughs> not my condiment. Yeah. <laughs> not my condiment. I saw, you know, that, that, that's one of the, uh, I saw like a bunch of, slurs against white people and one of them was mayo monkey <laughs> mayo isn't, right, it, that's kind of isn't funny, it funny how you can just be like <laughs> as a white person like who gives a fuck like, <laughs> like Dude, white people like, all not do even that good. yeah there's i can't think of a white person slur that like gets a rise yeah. out of a white person a, a two-word slur come on slur makers let's <laughs> let's get a little more concise here let's get I, something good I heard Mayo Monkey. It was like, oh, not bad, not bad. Yeah, I, I laughed <laughs> yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah. I do like mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah it's true. Well, I, I don't identify with that part of being white, the mayonnaise. Dude, I mm. fucking love mayonnaise. I put it on everything. I, I, I identify heavily sandwich. with the cheese part. I can eat a mayo sandwich, no problem. I could dip fries in it. Like, it's not my preferred, but like I wouldn't shrug it. I, if I had nothing, mayonnaise, sure. You'd eat a mayonnaise sandwich? I would absolutely. I could eat a mayonnaise sandwich despicable. right now. I'm a little hungry. Yeah. There's I'll definitely go for a mayonnaise sandwich. But I, like I would love a mayonnaise sandwich if it fit into my fucking diet profile. That's the challenge. Yeah, mayonnaise goes uh, on every sandwich, though. Like I, I it does. What do you? What, it's dry otherwise. Is that you know what the fucking that. English people do? They put butter on there. Like they're making a sandwich and they pick a big smear of warm room temperature butter so it'll spread on the bread, and then they start putting ham and salami and fucking cheese on that shit. Why are you saying that with like a grimace? Like that sounds so much better than mayonnaise. Butter? You think yeah, butter it loses to mayonnaise in a head-to-head battle? You're insane. I know that it loses to mayonnaise in a head-to-head battle as a sandwich condiment. One sandwich of them is, and one of them isn't. I would. Uh, well, clearly, England. Like this is the first good know. thing about English food I've ever heard. <laughs> like when I think about a grilled cheese sandwich, that's you know the the bread is just soaked in butter. That's like the best part of the grilled cheese sandwich. Man, the butter bread. Yeah. I don't Excellent know point. butter. On my, Thanks for no, jumping in use, on my side. Ah, you think it is, <laughs> but you're wrong because the best grilled cheese sandwich has mayonnaise inside and outside. You put mayonnaise inside, slice of cheese, and then the outside thin layer of mayonnaise. It browns up on the grill. It's it's way better than butter. No, that's what we, we butter do that does. Here. But better. No, mayonnaise. <laughs> 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 no butter. <laughs> we're in an impasse. And I need to say that it has to be. There's only one kind of mayonnaise that I consider to be real mayonnaise, and that's Duke's mayonnaise. Any other kind is some sort of weird white sauce that I don't want to be a part of. Miracle Whip. Ugh. That's not. That's literally that's not, not mayonnaise. mayonnaise. It, it like like. Sugar flow. Oh, fucking Mr. Pinky's up now. Don't, don't misunderstand. When he says <laughs> that's not mayonnaise, he doesn't mean it like, ah, that's not football. He means that literally doesn't. De- I don't that, think it counts. There's a definition for what mayonnaise is, and that doesn't meet it. it I, I knew that. I, don't think it has I eggs said just to, like, to fuck with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Marshmallow yeah. fluff. I don't think it has eggs sure. or something. The best no. kind of sugar is sodium chloride. Like, that's literally <laughs> not sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, more mayonnaise in your diet. It's our. It's part of our culture. It's uh, it's a wonderful thing, and uh, you should embrace it. It's like an Italian not enjoying spaghetti. Spaghetti is very every pasta is easy to like because you can just put all sorts of different flavored stuff and meats on it. I love pasta it's because of that. It's so versatile. Yeah, My issue with pasta versatile. is it's often difficult to eat. It comes in a thousand different shapes, and none of them work that well on a fork or a spoon. 
I like mustard. Ravioli goes pretty good. That's my favorite noodle okay. shape. Zach, pull up noodle shapes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we can have an argument about that for, for an hour. No, I remember I, as a kid, like thinking that oysters were going to be disgusting, and after like one of them being like, "This is great. This is fantastic." They have to be you good oysters, though. Cracker. I love oysters. I, yeah, I've oysters had red great. lobster oysters. They were atrocious and a little yeah. sandy. And uh, but then I've had really expensive oysters like like at, at a nice restaurant in like Chicago or in Seattle or you know, they're just fantastic. They taste completely different, a whole different texture. Um, mm. And then the presentation, frankly, is, is a big part of it, too. I like when they br- bring me that big three tiered silver platter with dry ice. And yeah. I remember one place <laughs> they had dry ice and then they had um, lights buried under the dry ice. So it so that the platter glowed faintly when they put it down and like the the, the dry ice is making like that fog like that. and, the, and totally. the, the lights are coming from within it like underneath all that all that and then there's these cute you know the shrimp on one side and then the crab and then the um the oysters and everything that i love that's the, oh, but but yeah they're, they're disgusting to look at though they're just they, awful they can at. look a little rough but like once you've had enough oysters you know like this is gonna be good just don't care what it looks like it's gonna taste great it's been about a year since I've had oysters. Um, I think I did like a birthday dinner last year and wasted a bunch of money on some oysters that I didn't like. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily like a fancy man food, but I feel fancy eating oysters. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I think it is. A, depends on where you live, I guess. I think it can be both because I, I think, you know, I guess it depends what kind of oysters you're eating, right? Like like whether you're eating some a big pile of oysters or something that's like $10 an oyster or something. I want high quality oysters. Like, I used to buy oysters at Kroger when I was like 17. I used to love them shits. Isn't that they horrible? sell oysters? Yeah, like they used can? to have... No, no, no. It was like a... <laughs> you put it in the oven, man. It came and they were open shell. Open shell oysters. And they came in a sauce and a little tray. You just stick it in your oven, man, for like... Aren't they dead if they're minutes. I, I would eat yeah, them. Yeah, they, they weren't fresh. They, they were like were there frozen in process. So they were kind of rubbery. eat them if they're dead. Nothing I'd heard of. I mean, they, I never got sick uh, off them that I know of. I learned that oysters survive. that happens? If they were frozen, I don't know. No. I didn't hear what anyone said. If you buy an oyster, is there ever a pearl in there? No. Well, then these, they were open. I've never never found a pearl in there. I've actually Pretty never sure. dug around and looked. When you when you order them, they so they they go ahead and open it up and like clean the shell up and then they take this tool and sort of separate the oyster itself from the shell slightly. They do a little little maneuver to it. Mm-hmm. So, if there were an oyster in there, I think they'd catch or a, a, a pearl. pearl in there. I'm sure they'd catch it. Hmm. Look at that. I've seen that's that in the PC. store. And that's kind of similar. I always shiver when I walk past those in yeah. the fucking groceries. Now I do. See, this now is I'm where we man. differ. I, teenager, I, would, I, like, mm. I, I would eat that. A little mayonnaise mm. on top. They, they were good. No. I would not. I'd, rather, I'd, I'd rather eat 36 of those than one dollop of mayonnaise. <laughs> I guess that's not a fair comparison because I like oysters and I don't like yeah. mayonnaise. I'd oh, rather eat a oh. huge amount of this thing I like than a small amount of this thing I don't. So... Kyle, I know you have Max. It used to be HBO Max. Um, have you watched Naked Attraction on that show yet? <laughs> I'm so glad you brought this up. <laughs> uh, I have watched about half of an episode just to get the gist of it. Thought it was just wild and then turned <laughs> it off because it's so the, absurd. The gist of this, it's a dating show. Um, they'll have one person looking at, I think, five or six people. And they reveal their naked bodies along the way. So right out of the gate, the like little window raises to their belly button. I thought for sure there'd be a round where you're like, oh, well, she's got nice knees, I guess. And I like, can maybe I, infer yeah. a body type by calf. Nope, nope. You're just like you're looking at six pussies right out of the gate. And and the guy's like, you know, that one seems nice. <laughs> uh, it, by the and by the Kyle, did you want to say something before I keep going? Yeah. So so like the there's a person who the show's kind of about and he or she will be standing there clothed and then there's five or six potentials in these glass booths behind glass and they reveal first like they're just their bottoms they're just all standing there bottomless like dicks hanging it's out and she's, i thought it was going to be thighs or something uh-uh, but no. no cocks Straight out do it that's yeah nice. just in the first and we're like, zooming in, opening... in just to be clear with no blurring oh I, I, that, yeah. that should be just so everyone understands what we're talking about here i am she, that we're going from cock to cock in the first episode, and this black chick is like, "I like that." And you're like, "Not too yeah. small, 
and and she's like, no, not too small. It's like another chick with it. And it's like, what about that one? Ooh, a bit fuzzy, isn't it? And like they're talking <laughs> about these cocks one by one, and and yeah. we are really lingering on a we are lingering. <laughs> <laughs> we'll spend a it's minute medical. and a half. Like if it was in real life, my nose would be touching this dick. And <laughs> they're they're discussing the bush. They're discussing whether it's cut or uncut. How cute the dick is. And and they're choosing the guy. By the way, like they go, there's like I don't even know, maybe four rounds. Like first they raise it, you see his dick, and then they raise it a little more, and you see like neck down, and then you see his face. Oh, okay. And it's not until like the fourth round that they talk at all. You are completely choosing this person based on the shape of their body, and it really spends a lot of time talking about the genitalia, right? It's they turn around, they look at the ass, they discuss whether the ass crack is long enough, how hairy it is between the ass crack and in the taint. They're like, oh, that's a bit of a hairy taint. You know, I like a hairy taint, though. Okay, all right, well, this is the guy for you then, maybe. And, and like, I'm watching this with Jackie, and, like, we're like, like I guess that's a nice dick i guess like <laughs> what do you, what do you think, think? <laughs> is there is there money in it is it just a no, date, show? Like a date. do, do no, they look, quiz so the, <laughs> the naked people other than just looking at their penis and pussy no oh, oh, so really. like on the fourth oh, round they ask the naked person that this is after you see their face they say what is your favorite and least favorite part about your own body and they'll be like i really like my calves and i really dislike my belly or whatever mm -hmm. and uh then they're like, oh, so what'd you think of his voice, right? Nothing about the content of their character at all. I'm like, oh, I thought his voice was a little yeah. deeper than I expected it to be, you know? And, and it, like, it's interesting to me because most dating shows are probably dating in real life. Like, it's <laughs> they just completely ignore personality altogether. Yeah. It, but so, they don't know what job they have. They don't know some, anything. This is like a very Sodom and Gomorrah kind of show. Oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, we... We're it's we're about to have that big meltdown. It's coming. World War Three. Like, <laughs> Lord's coming back. Go, y'all better get right. Because uh, eventually, the lady who's been this cock, that cock, not that one, he can go. Now she's naked, and she looks pretty good naked. Like her titties are do. like perfectly symmetrical and looking the right direction and everything. And they're like, That's nice. tits, if I, her tits are fantastic. And she's like, Yes, I hear that often. And she's like a little <laughs> bottom heavy. And uh, and she's got pubic hair and she's got armpit hair too. And and the guys are like, ah, is that too much pubic hair? Well, I don't know. Does it go away to the back? And she turns around. And it's like, nah, looks good, looks good. But she has through this weird process of elimination that they've gone through, she's gotten, frankly, an alpha male exotic type with a big dick, and like a pudgy ish ugly guy with a small dick somehow it comes down to them at the end and i'm just like how did she get here because i'm fast forward and just to kind of get the gist of the uh, yeah. <laughs> just to get the gist because so kyle's process. right i know the, the I alpha care. man with the dick uh he has one amputated leg right so it's like a steel thing from like the knee down and Kinda he cool. has a tattoo of an elephant where his cock is the elephant <laughs> oh that's trashy Oh my that's a different God. One. I think that's a different one, maybe than I watched. Uh, maybe oh, this, this is, is with the, the black first chick with the with the with the armpit hair. I think, yeah, that's why I thought okay. it was the same. I didn't. One. I fast forwarded, so I, I yeah, yeah. So I, I, yeah, dude's got a uh, one. <laughs> oh, oh they leg. asked the two look contestants, "What's your favorite part about that guy's body?" And he's like, mm, "I'd really like his other leg." And I thought that was a solid answer. That's a um, one. But uh, um. Yeah, so like I don't know. I, I guess it is just awkward for me to do all this like dick rating and stuff with Jackie. <laughs> the all the contestants and the um the like host of the show is a girl. They don't mm -hmm. seem to understand anything about this shower versus grower thing. It, they all seem to think they've gleaned everything there is to know from a flaccid dick. And I just feel like they're really missing out on something major there. I, they should get the guys to like caress or I, I don't know what it would yeah. I, 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 I thought that there was a lot of small penises on the show, frankly. Uh, like, like, and Two of it, the first four women reject people for having dicks that are too big. I didn't see that coming. Mm. Interesting. Rare problem. Yeah, so what if you skipped weird... ahead, you might have like oh. not realized that some of the better dicks were like... I also packing. thought they were all very unattractive dicks. Like, like I wouldn't have chosen any. I'd have been They're like, uncut. try again. Mostly. Try yeah. again. Mm -hmm. I, I try again. Oh, I like, just found the elephant home. guy. This isn't even a good tattoo. 
This no, is like this is a badly done elephant. <laughs> Do you have a link? Oh, it's bad. Yes. We, we can't show <laughs> oh, this, man. Zach. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, I just it's want to be H- sure. It's on HBO. I, I do recommend it. I think it's a funny show. I, I, I watched one episode and fast forward and just thought the novelty of it was worth yes. like that much. I don't think I want to watch anymore because it's just I think I've said like, like anything that's that close to pornography is it's, it's like I, I'll just work, I'll just go do the pornography instead. Like I'm not yeah, gonna be able to disagree. watch a show. So I, I, can't, I, I can't watch a vagina show judging show without jerking better off. the show is. That's how Rome works. That's how Game <laughs> of Thrones works. That's how all shows work. I like hey, the boys. Does, does anybody get like hard while standing there hands free to show their virility? Oh, no. Just that, flex it. I swear to God, I would be doing moves. If, if I was on that show, I would either rock the hard on as uh, to stand out or... Try to pull a semi off as a flaccid, uh, right? It just just get a little moves. inflation in there. Give it a couple <laughs> pumps, like my Jerry Air Max. Yeah, I got yeah. an Air Max thing in my gooch. I just <laughs> oh, we did yeah. catch. There's a guy who did. A guy got a semi on the the show, and Jackie's like, dude, he he grew, he grew, and I'm like, you're absolutely right. That guy is a chub. <laughs> and then in the next scene, he was back down to his flaccid size. It's like uh, confirmed, confirmed. This guy's changing Jesus sizes God. over the course of this episode. But that so did could you show get the, a... the woman picking, like, oh, this guy, virile-ish. He's he's starting to get hard. He's getting hard at my voice. Man, when he Bring sees my attention. face, he's gonna. He's what gonna if he busted attractive. on her? Like, like right there, like like, <laughs> like hands free, just bust all over the place. Just everybody's standing back there, and you just hear one guy like. Ugh. Like every time, <laughs> get him out! Get him out! Every, every time someone gets like voted off, and the that's island, why we have glass. They hug before they go, right? So these are two naked people just sort of like doing the hug, and then he says, "You know, thanks for considering me, or whatever." And they ask him how his experience was on the show. And I pay a lot of attention to these hugs. Like, are these guys like <laughs> rubbing cock and pussy on this hug? Or, or is he getting like a, a chest full of boob? Or do they really do like the collarbone to collarbone distance butt out hug? That <laughs> 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 like quarantine L bump. <laughs> dude, the, the yeah, yeah. Hug. One person did a handshake. I was like, ah, just fuck, get out of here. You don't the boner. Like some of these guys, like I'm gonna suck on a titty a little. Like, why would you volunteer for this show? <laughs> With when you're as overweight as some of these guys and girls, because like they they're, oh, oh, I guess that might be so, that. so. Every contestant on the show has an aspect of them that the um, like target person, the prize person said that they liked, but they don't tell us what that is. But they might be like, Look, I'm totally into long feet, I'm totally into cute butts, or, or whatever it is. So while I see a pudgy guy, um, they see something about him that they think is cool. I don't know, beards or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to... 401k. 401k. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, dude, the, the show really draws me in to some extent because of the complete removal of personality. Like, there's rules against talking through most of the selection yeah, process. I like that. Mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. hear your voice, but that's all that matters. I'm glad they incorporated yeah, some, of, some, some of these people of are very fat and have very little penises. Yeah, yeah. you got to head out, Josh. Yeah, I got I got a dip, man. I got a little bit of a YouTube meeting here shortly. Oh, YouTube right. meeting? Where can everybody find everything Josh Pilot? Well, you can search Josh Pilot on YouTube. I actually just returned to YouTube. It took a really long time off. We we're having some living situation struggles. Uh, I'm back and I've got people helping me now. I just did a video not long ago that was about a joke video about how to survive prison. And then I also announced at the end of it that I'm trying to move past doing videos just about me being in prison. And I released a video about uh, Filthy Frank and my me talking about a meme that I miss and, you know, the Harlem Shake and all that because people have asked me a lot about it. So I got oh, some new yeah. videos out, still up five days a week on Twitch. So everybody come hang out. And I really appreciate you guys having me again, man. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah of course. Good nice to see you doing on. well, man. Absolutely. I'll see you guys again soon, hopefully, man. Y'all have a great evening. Good everybody good. enjoy you, the show. Hmm. Did you? Uh, did I'm you transfixed ever- on trying to find a good clip of this show. <laughs> <But you're right. laughs> this is not a sit and watch a whole episode show. Like, beep, I, I, beep, I, I'm yeah. surprised beep, you like beep, beep, we're we're chaining. Man, some of these girls' asses are so much worse than like the girl to their left. Like that's got to be that's got to be. In, or maybe they don't see the other naked women next to yeah, them. I, I mean. 
I, I they're going to watch the know. broadcast on HBO. I would imagine that you yeah. know where it'll stay for the rest of their lives. <laughs> how did you make grandpa well let me show you boom 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 <laughs> well okay, your HBO grandfather rolls. had the nicest ass in birmingham i told the producers cock. that i wanted an uncut cock and there your <laughs> grandfather was and he as long as the day I, I i'm a little too, when i think about how attractive a person is guy or girl Body fat percentage plays a huge role in for me. As a matter of fact, I would say body fat percentage plays a big role in like how good someone's face is. You know, suddenly the cheekbones, the jawbones, everything like you just look better all over the mm -hmm. place. And uh, but watching them, other people don't seem to share my opinion. You know, pudgy guys are getting far. Pudgy I girls are getting that. far. I wouldn't trust that. I don't think that's real. I I'll say this on Tinder, like. You get the lay of the land for real Z's. The rub the rubber has hit the road. No mm -hmm. one's being nice. No one's help. No one's no one's like, oh, let's be inclusive. Everybody's the, the rubber has hit the road. Okay. And mm -hmm. and you see what rises to the top and like what gets the most attention and what gets the least attention. And you know, it, you can you can do some real easy math to figure out that no, nah, actually people like m less fat than more fat and like mm -hmm. more symmetrical to less symmetrical and like, like there are things that people like and they, and they work and they're always going to work. Yeah. I, being I, fit I, is universally popular. They may have found someone on there who's like, yeah, I just like fat, ugly bitches who are interesting and funny. And, uh, man, I, I hope you can help. Could you, where are they? Where are they? Could you find me a fat, ugly, funny bitch? And they're like, ah, we're swimming with them. Have you met me? <laughs> One thing that happens to me, like I see on the show anyway, all right, there's six naked people up there. I probably have picked the two who have a chance in a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Even just by the time I saw their pussies from the neck down, I've made assumptions about their butt, their legs, and whatever else carries mm -hmm. through. Boom. I would, something really weird would have to be revealed for me to change my mind by showing me the top half. I've learned a lot. Yeah. But that means that the other four I can eliminate in any order I want. I can keep the fat chick around and make myself look not superficial. I can, I, in fact, I can keep a guy on. I don't give a fuck. It, it only matters is who's the last one. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Victor, but I'm going with Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so close. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep under a bridge now. Do they ever have yeah. like a dwarf? And it's Ooh, like a very that'd low, be the fucking move. Very <laughs> like, low like, <laughs> no, they do raise the uh, the little glass. I threw a dwarf the in there. Can you imagine if you lose to a dwarf? That would be embarrassing. A... But I, I, to Woody's point, if I were the picker, I wouldn't knock the dwarf woman out right away because I'd be like, this this seems mean. I'm gonna be honest. I'd fuck, the I, I'd fuck the dwarf just to That's fuck the dwarf. I might the dwarf might win. Single Woody is like like look this. I'm not agreeing to marry this person. This is a person who I get to see naked, who probably puts out. I, I'm putting a menagerie was... together. Give me that little bitch. You're putting together a team. Yeah, <laughs> a menagerie. Was... I, 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 one of one of the women was bisexual, so her uh, cast had like men and women. And one of them might have been gay, gay woman. And I was like, I don't see why we can't all be winners here, right? Like the the lady picks her person, but can't the contestants pick each other and fuck around? Yeah, they yeah. should get to fool around backstage. I bet they do. I bet they're they're probably I their self esteem so. just took a hit. They need a little affirmation. They're already naked back behind the scenes. They do a little bit of they, that. They I'm had surprised that drink you would... the producer gave them. They're feeling a bit dizzy. But, uh, <laughs> right this way to the car? I don't remember coming in. Uh... So you would Thank pick the you, dwarf? You wouldn't be afraid of catching it? Catching the dwarfism? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean... Is that how that works? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <it laughs> you could. fuck a dwarf and the next morning you wake up like, Oh no! <laughs> oh my god well why didn't first. you tell me you have oh, this god. you could have been protected myself but that's how it works like at first your penis shrinks to dwarf size and then it spreads throughout your body everything else like to match. Just, you wake up in like adult clothes you're crawling out of your but, shirt you wait you come out of the coma and the doctor's like don't worry we stopped it before it got to your legs wait what 
<laughs> Start it up again. I got a match. Like, like you, I have to fuck right. a tall person now. Uh, would you rather be a regular sized person with a micro penis or a midget with a, you know, let's say a six incher that's just an average, you know, male male penis? Yeah, I'm going to be that, that little sucks. guy. I'm going to be that little guy because that six inches is going to look like nine on my little frame. All right. I think I would I'm, also have to go dwarf. I already have the yeah. head size. Yeah, like, I think I so. Just, you sort of do that walk where you wobble around. Yeah, used your hips to don't work right. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> you have fucking Labrador retriever hips. hips. My hips hurt all the time. <laughs> oh, but you. All, how about this? You have that voice too. <laughs> oh no! Uh, how small is the micro penis though? Is it like just small? Like... Whatever standard micro penis size is. Like, like, all right. So here's how you determine it. So, so take your finger. Um, the the last little digit part that that's like your fingernail to, to oh, there. Oh, that. that's your dick. Yeah, this is what you got to work with. Like like I've, like this uh, to this. Online, like, I've seen clits that. Size. Yeah, there are clits bigger than that. There are clits bigger than that, and that is why it's called a micro penis and not a tiny dick. Well, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess that's also true. But like, you don't couldn't even get me started about you... nano and pico penises. A pico penis? <laughs> that's where it's like so small that you need that's, to go to Sweden and have the hydron collider or whatever. <laughs> We're taking two tiny penises and slamming them together in, in Sweden to see if it opens up a black hole. A pico yeah, penis. I, uh, I would rather be the little guy. Um, hopefully, I can be like, uh, you know. I don't know, a handsome one. Uh, those are few and far between, but nope. Your face changes dice. to your face changes to dwarf style. Also, I don't know. That could work. Like, 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 how about this? How about, how about let's see if this decision is as easy for you. If it's not Peter Dinklage dwarf, it's Vern Troyer dwarf. Oh, I just off myself. No, nope, you can't yeah, kill I, your. No, you can't take it out. I go to a couple auditions as Vern Troyer size. If it doesn't work out, I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you do. If it, like, even like, with your average size penis on his body nah nobody's gonna want that there's i mean look i i there's a reason that little guy drank himself to death okay life was hard being him you know like that would have been a very difficult life everything yeah. after mini me was probably difficult is uh i've told before but like his manager is also dan Vilzerian's manager and and we knew him and them so got to like talk i know i know i never got to meet him but we were talking about doing a video where he shot a gun before i completely understood how tiny he was i mean i've seen austin bowers but he was like the size of a three liter soda dude like like he yeah he wasn't even three feet tall he was like two and a half feet tall something you like can that. sit him on this table and he'd like stand right here on this table right here in front of me like like a little like like he's infant sized so so tiny like yeah it, it was uh he couldn't he didn't really have any uh, he was clearly a real depressed person. Yeah, I would time. be too. That's a really rough roll of the dice for life. He'd have a bottle of absolute vodka as big as him. Two foot eight. Jesus Christ. Two foot eight. R.I.P. Yeah, Vern Troyer. Yeah, I wouldn't want to live like that. No. Mm. You wouldn't, but you'd live, instead of being Vern Troyer, you'd live as the regular sized micropenis man. No, no, no. Neither one. I, that's what I said. Like, if it's between regular sized micropenis or. Vern Troyer with anything. I just take the way easy way out, I think. No, you can't posit your own hypothetical and then say you would kill yourself instead of go suicide is always an option with any of our hypotheticals. You can always say, <laughs> nah, I just kill myself. Because that's so funny volumes. how quickly you go to killing yourself in hypotheticals. <laughs> It'll be like, would you rather be yourself, but you're five nine and you're like, oh, it's just train tracks. <laughs> Get on the train right, so, tracks. Well, let me ask you. I immediately become 5'9", or I've had to live my life as 5'9"? Oh, man. Uh, like, you you, you have to live your life as 5'9". No, no, no. I've had to live my entire life as 5'9"? Or are we rewriting He was an enormous story, baby. His mom was he just wrecked. Yeah, you, <laughs> you would have to live your whole life as the 5'9 guy, which 5'9 is the average height for guys. I mean, I'd give You'd it a good fine try. Five nine, yeah. I, I I do my best, you know. But if things don't work out, <laughs> if things don't work out <laughs> at five nine, you you, you <laughs> it's up. like it's like you know you sometimes you, I'll be playing Baldur's Gate right, and I'll roll the dice, and I'll be like, if I roll a seventeen or better, I get through this door, and I don't, so I'm like, fuck it, you just restart, you know. So you know I feel what like I that's would what you pick do? is if it were between being 
uh, Peter Dinklage, like what I like to think is a high cast dwarf or a high dwarf, a high dwarf, like, or being like five foot four. I'm taking the Peter Dinklage side. Cause then you can at least mm. get like disability and everyone's like, Hey, what's up with that guy? No well, one nobody, Nobody's going to make fun of you because it's like, you have a disability. Yeah. Whereas the five yeah. foot four guy is going to get bullied ruthlessly ruthlessly there, that guy doesn't even have a fucking support group out there there's no like short kings <laughs> anonymous or anything like like should be if you're if you're a five foot maybe if you're asian and you know what hang on i'm gonna pull back on that because i've seen it work because kitty's cousin jj i've talked i always bring him up when we talk about short guys he went and found himself a japanese girl who's tiny as fuck and it just works like they're the right ratio of heights mm -hmm. oh, okay you know what i mean like he found an exceptionally tiny girl Ooh, so that they that would work well with the micro penis too just go to like south korea are they known for their penises. small penises yeah they're Smallest known for their penis. small vaginas penises oh i guess then yeah you, you could have like a penis. i don't know micro is pretty small apparently but like if you had like a three and a half four inch penis and you go to south korea you're normal there is no way the average penis in South Korea is. Zach, show me the average penis size. Show us South, South Korea. Korea. <laughs> Bring yeah, it I up. saw it on a, There was a Netflix documentary. I talked about it once years ago. And uh, it was the guy was a filmmaker and his girlfriend dumped him because his penis was too small. And he was like, all right, I need to figure out. Was this just a measure of cruelty where she, you know, disliked me or is my penis really that small? Like, I, I'm aware it's not big, but what, what are we up to? And uh, he goes to a urologist. He goes like to other experts and it confirms that, yes, it is indeed a small penis. And uh, then one of his solutions was to go to South Korea and be normal. No, you're making this up. That's hilarious. Wait, so he went to a doctor instead of like getting a ruler, like and just uh, yeah. Well, yeah. He, he knew how penis? long it was. He wanted to know how he measured up. Couldn't he just like yeah, Google well, it yeah. and then measure his dick without making he, it oh, a, here, a doc, without it. wasting a doctor's time? It's called he Unhung Hero. <laughs> Unhung. Okay, that's a that's a good name. That's a good name. I bet he started with that awesome name and then worked backwards into his, yeah. like, what he's going to do with it. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to oh. go to South Korea because they have a little bit Here, let me read this, the overview. Patrick Mote very publicly proposes to his girlfriend while being shown on the Jumbotron screen at a UCLA basketball game, and she refuses his proposal. A video clip of the failed proposal ends up on YouTube and gets millions of views. She later says the reason for rejecting him was that his penis is too small and he travels the world to find out if size matters. <laughs> that's uh that's a rough uh, one. So instead of killing himself, he made a documentary. This? Showtime? <laughs> Showtime put money distributed it. it. Yeah. I think it, it was real. This is why the Japanese killed themselves so much. You know how they, they do that thing where they they cut they disembowel themselves? It's because they already have a small penis. So if one thing goes wrong, why go on? <laughs> You think that's the reason? <laughs> that's what it is. I thought it was they're, honor they're, they're on the edge. They're right on the edge because of the micro penis thing. So any dishonor at all is just how well, how long it. could this movie be? Probably not very. Like three hey inches. An hour and twenty four minutes. How long? <laughs> like how many times did he have to be told? I'm sorry, sir. You have a very little penis, and he's like, "Well, maybe a Cambodian doctor will have my back." <laughs> no, just... it's not all doctors. The, the doc, the chick was cool. The doctor, apparently, you can measure an erect penis size by just stretching a flaccid penis, and it's really good estimate. It's not perfect, but like you find out what you're working with. Don't, um, don't do that. Yeah, why would you? If you're going, if this guy's going to get his fucking, I'm penis just imagining like the guy's even... like. Ah! You expected the female urologist to just suck it for a little while, get it properly hard. No, and then put that's a inappropriate. I'm saying he should eh. do a, he should do it himself. He paid good money for that appointment. If you're going to a penis measuring doc and you're you're gonna let them just stretch it like taffy instead of instead of getting hard, I would get hard. <laughs> doc, can you come back in three minutes? I'm almost ready. Doc, well, can you jump to... up and down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how to facilitate this, but, but I, I was talking about the other day. I really want to do like a PKA family feud. 
where mm. we, the, you know, we we poll 100 of our uh, viewer listeners and, uh, and and they're the ones quizzed or, or the patrons. They're the ones who are like quizzed on the various questions. And then we basically play family feud. We need a, someone to participate as some sort of a arbiter of the game so that we can compete against one another. And uh, but but maybe patron uh, Patreon's the way to go. Uh, do yeah. we? Ha- I, I, I'm guessing we have an email list of like everyone who's ever been part of it, or maybe everyone who's currently. I don't know how it works, but yeah, we just use um, the current people and like select randomly somehow to get a hundred out of that. I promise this isn't even just a way to like bilk another dollar out of each of you, <laughs> you know, since a dollar. But join the Patreon for a dollar, and then that way you'll be part of the email list and you'll get to take part in the the survey. I did, I think you probably need to again not not even trying to milk thirty yeah. extra dollars or anything. I just need I would need a hundred people total. To, mm. to to poll for family we need to so think the number good, adds up to 100 we need to think of good questions too i've been working on questions i've got a bunch um but okay. i'm lying i'm kidding we gotta work oh, hard fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this how about like in between games of code names next time we're on we'll just spitball some some good family i think feud. i think the way to do it is a mixture of questions straight stolen from the show because there's a reason they're there and mm. some things that are relevant to us specifically uh, or the show, or its mytho- mythos and history and, and such. We asked 100, you know, PKA listeners, what's Wing's favorite snack? Oh, see, I like the, I like subjective. 97 people are going to choose the same answer. <laughs> banquet Mill. I win. Bing, 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 bing. 67 oh, no. Wendy's people Chili. said Banquet Mill. Yeah, Wendy's, Wendy's Chili is going to kill that. Banquet Ooh. meal or so would it? Meal. That's the game. You see my point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, what's Woody's favorite hobby? Oh good god, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's a good one because there's like there 15 hobbies in there. Yeah. So and then I can phrase the question differently. What's Woody's least favorite current hobby? You know, you could you could have a lot of fun with that. Um mm. so so mm-hmm. yeah, join the Patreon. There's a link down below. Um I uh, or um yeah, what is join Taylor's it. favorite the, slur? The, the cheapest one's a dollar. You don't get anything for a dollar other than what I'm telling you right now. Um, $10 is it the R word? in early. And, uh, if that counts as a slur, yes. Submit I didn't questions, even and then <laughs> 50, you get everything, and you get to join us in our Discord where we play, mm-hmm. names, where we play code names. You can be yeah, one, of, you can be one of our retarded code name partners mm-hmm. that piss us off so that we make fun of you later on in private chats. There's a guy we're hey, still hey, making hey, fun hey, of. Hey, I make fun of them while they're still there. We did that, too. There's a guy Angus we're still Wolitech. making fun of. <laughs> yeah, we do a thing of like bad cop, horrible cop, and then I'm pretty nice. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> the guy's like, oh, this was my first game ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's going to be your last now, Pedro. <laughs> oh, I got I got shouted down. I'm like, hey, guys, it's his first time being the clue master. And Kyle, I think, was like, and hopefully the last. <laughs> like just <laughs> this, this uh, fucking retard doesn't know that, and the guy's yeah. like, "I'm learning the game." <laughs> yeah, it's harder than you thought. I, I maybe there's a narcissism issue here, but like Kyle was saying, if you get people to guess three words, you're doing pretty well, and four is like a really uncommon thing, but possible. Mm-hmm. And I thought I would be hitting a threes a lot and fours sometimes. Like like I would instantly walk in and be one of the best. That's not the case. It's tough. And also Very like hard game. there's tactics to it that people don't know right away. Like some people mm-hmm. will be like, oh, there are four kind of related words to this clue. I'm going to go for the big swing four. Uh, and it's like often a solid two guess is better than a stretch three guess because mm-hmm. like you're going to get more consistent. Whereas like just because you can do a four doesn't mean you should. And, I like and some people don't lot. know that early. It's Here's fun to I try, like but it has to be in. It if has to be the time. An early three or four, like with skinnies. I loved skinnies. That's that. That's that. you needed me on your team because I got oh, those. Oh God, I needed you so bad. Your like, team oh, did boy. it. I laid it out for your team like two, three I, rounds I later. I'm like arenas, and also <laughs> like I thought there was an African tribe called the Tutus, but it's the Tutsis or some shit. Mm-hmm, Close mm-hmm. fuck enough. <laughs> and I've the, been in that situation with Ivory League. <laughs> but you immediately put the other team in this really shitty position where there's already a little pressure to come up with a clue quickly because everybody's waiting on you. Come on, we're on mm-hmm. you. Everybody's mm-hmm. polite about it, but every now and then be like, hey, who are we waiting on? And the guy be like, yeah, it's me. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, no, no. No rush, but we're all waiting on you. 
<laughs> deep in my heart, all I want to know is that you're trying. Like, no one's yeah. ever taken oh, yeah. 30 minutes, but it's yeah. if you're aware it's your turn and you're at it, three, four, cool. five, maybe. Just wanted to make because yeah. what happens is like the other team's going and that can take 10 minutes. So yeah. you might not realize that like now I'm on the clock and it's just I just want you to know it's your turn. Yeah, yeah I yeah I love code names and uh, so, but yeah join the Patreon we'll we'll uh, send you our uh, and and check your email regularly we'll, we're going to send you some questions soon I'd like to do it for the Halloween episode that'd be neat that would be fun I would like that mm. we, how how many questions do we how do we do it with three people do we have a well we, we would need like, a like Zach send like put the well we the would have a guest and everything up? well we'll probably have a guest I don't know who that's going to be but then we could even have um like someone run the game um. I don't, I don't know. We'll work, we'll work it out. You know, I'm not here, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll, we'll need to get like a, a tried and true get someone like Tucker, Tucker or like Dick Masterson. Someone like that would be very good. How about me and Woody versus you and someone I pick? Well, <laughs> I, I don't feel like this is fair. Now. Who are you going to pick that, for me? You're going to pick the game. fucking, uh, the fucking Costa Rican LSD guy. <laughs> like, yep. Like, yep, like, he's oh. coming back. That's better than my pick. I, I forgot the name of Kyle's floofy dog, but it's who I thought he'd choose. <laughs> you know, I have to play with Toby. <laughs> Toby, yes, oh. yes. Taylor and Toby. <laughs> I'm like, for the last time, what is a Netflix producer do? Like, yeah, that would be tough. I, I would need to. I, I would need to have a little pick in my own, or we could do randomly random teams. Either way, yeah, we, I mean, this is something we can even... figure out later. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll think about how to like split the game. We could do two teams of two with a with a fifth person running the game. It wouldn't be impossible to set up. Um, but uh, you know, it'd be Halloween too. I'm looking forward to Halloween. Uh, th this year, like like I said, not just the candy. I, I kind of want to fuck with somebody, like scare some kids. There's such a fine line, though, right? Like, I still mm. think of myself as a kid. I'm aware I'm not yeah. a kid. I'm a I'm a very much an adult, middle aged man or so. <laughs> and so and so I can't like jump out as dressed as a ghoul and frighten an you eight certainly year old. can't you don't even have children Dude, i made inside, a video about though, this when i was I, 37 I, on the <laughs> like, inside I though i feel like in here <laughs> yeah dude like just so you know if i jump out and spook you like i thought you'd giggle about it i'm still the guy that egged those houses when i was 17 i would love to go out right now and egg my neighbor's house just for shits and giggles and just hoo -hoo 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 -hoo. And if they caught me i'll hose it off tomorrow that ain't how it works no more, though. No, nope, that's a crime. <laughs> that, that's a crime. It I'll is. have to go to a courtroom. <laughs> and you'll have to and stand there like in like you your again. Sunday best. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to go get in my suit and go to a, 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 a early, get up early in the morning and go before a judge. You might fuck me. You know, you, you, you can't have that kind of fun. So it's almost like Halloween's not even for people like me anymore, unfortunately. Because I want to scare no. kids. That's what I want to do from being real. I want to scare the shit out of them. I want to open my garage door and have it so they got to walk in and around like, you know, cardboard boxes that are made to be a little, little, little spiraling tunnel to where the candy pot is. And I want to be, uh -oh. come out. It's like a, oh, like, uh, it's like legends of the hidden temple. It's like, Oh, now you yeah. have to run through the lube shoot. And I'm like, chasing, I want to be chasing screaming kids out of my garage. And, you, but I, I, I don't think I recommend you don't do that. I can't, but I, you know, I want to. It's just like a couple years ago when my neighbor had those two little uh, girls. They were like, I don't know. It's hard to tell with kids like eight, nine years old, but these cute little girls. And they're like, hey, what do you do? You live here? Is this your car? It's like the one I'm driving? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, they're children. So yeah, they're, idiot. They're just curious. They're just curious and they want to talk to me. Like, do you have a dog? We've got a dog. His name is Ray. And they just want to talk. And I'm just like, I hate. From your father's very large point of view, it appears that I've stopped here in the cul-de-sac to talk to, to chat you girls up. <laughs> are you, like, are you like, like, like arm on the wheel and like lean in like this shoulder out? Mm. Like you're uh, like you're what's How his else? name from like my car, my car's window comes up real high. So I, you know that's what? the thing I like about grade school. <laughs> I keep getting older. <laughs> they were eight years old. Oh, <laughs> these little ass girls. And I'm just like, I got to go, girls. Like, I can't talk. I'm not allowed to talk to you, I don't think. <laughs> but the, you take advantage and be up to the line of scary, but not over it. See, I don't want to do that, though. Like, like I don't want to be like a lame costume where I'm like something goofy. Like, oh, look, it's Mickey. Why is his mouth bleeding? Oh, God, why is his dick out? I want a real Halloween costume. I want to frighten uh, people. Be Jared. 
That's terrifying to kids. Jared from Subway. Mm-hmm. I don't think right. kids know that think of him as a scary guy, though. You're right. That would be more a way to scare the parents watching their kids go up to your door. It's probably yeah. better. Frankly, Woody's, I always go back to this, but Woody's clown friend is one of the scariest, like real life people that I've ever seen a picture of. Like the fact that I think it's because if I were to see a clown on the internet, I'd be like, ah, who knows? Probably a cosplayer or maybe he does makeup effects for fun. But mm-hmm. I know for a fact that Woody's guy is just a clown. Like, like he's a clown. He's into clowning. It's just he's thing. into clowning, and that's true. He is a he. I think he lays hardwood floors for a living. It's not like he wears the clown thing constantly. It's his passion, though. It is, but what gets me, and I don't think it's true anymore. But at the time, like that crazy facial hair that his clown character had was his. That was real facial hair. It was like an inch long. Like he took seven months to grow out some weird lamb chop thing. All those piercings—they're not fake piercings. He got clown crazy so piercings. upsetting. We could be the that. insane clown posse. You want to be Violent J? We drink Fago. I'll drink Fago and be Violent J. <laughs> I, like, I don't. I don't care. Sure. Like, like, <laughs> I think. I think it would probably be dangerous for me to do that because they're literally uh, recognized federally as a gang. So Ooh. I probably shouldn't actually dress as a gang member. <laughs> But not a real gang. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. No, like a real gang. Like they recognize them as a real gang. They're like the juggalos. Like, yeah. Like, like yeah. Where are like it, it, are, are there any clips of like juggalos committing crimes and like no, doing they, crazy stuff? Well, as you can imagine, they Violent known for... J is very upset about them being designated a, a a gang. So they've been fighting it legally. But there's not much you can do once they've decided you're the gang. A gang. They fight, so, right? Aren't juggalos no not that they're skilled fighters, but they're known for being a enthusiastic fighters right um i don't know of any i don't think of them, i think of them as fans of the band and people who drink fago and do whippets when i think of um you know juggalos and juggalettes i think are you gonna do guy- whippets on how the halloween episode if you dress up as violent jay I mean, I have to. I'll, I'll stick with the character. Like, like when I was Joker, I was chain smoking. So I feel like if I'm Violent J, I need to be, I need to be dropping them whippets like it's hot. I need like I got a whole pile of them around me, jingle jangle. Yeah, I would love if every single Halloween you just selected someone who smokes, so you can, so you can just rip six whatever character you're doing. My old friend. My old this friend. won't spiral into three or four more. <laughs> it's like Kyle, you got to have another three or four because it's you know part of the character. You can't. And is that 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 first puff off that cigarette when you were the Joker had to have been divine? It hits good. You get a little heart, like like you get a little head, uh, like like rush thing. Your head gets a little little spinny. Yeah, it's real good. It's like now if I, oh yeah, I could like (laughs) like the idea of throwing a pack away wouldn't have even occurred to me. I don't know. There's something very wasteful about that that I just wouldn't do. I couldn't imagine doing that actually, like throwing away half a pack of. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You have to be, you know, go green. Plus, they're fucking delicious and addictive. I mean, they're wonderful. Um, and 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 I stand by cigarettes and tobacco not being all that bad for you. I mean, not good. It's not a health food or anything. It'll it'll kill you. But just don't do it every day for twenty years, and you probably be all right. Yeah, it's like the same level of bad as like chicken nuggets. You wouldn't eat I, those every day, but it's yeah. you know fine every so often. I I I don't think that's too far off. I, don't I wasn't being sarcastic. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know you weren't. I, I just don't think it's that bad for you. Just tobacco uh, in general. Um, I, I think decades of of habitual daily use probably going to give you something you don't want. But I think if you want to enjoy it occasionally, like, like it's not a problem. Yeah. You just, just can't have an addictive personality. Some stuff. Vasoconstrictor have... can't be good for your heart on. And it makes boobs sag. These are like key things. That yeah, but true. in what dosage? I never wonder. I always go back to that sweetener that was poisoning, killing the rats, and it made me stay away from sweet and low for like my whole life. And then I found that they were giving it the equivalent of like 20 mm-hmm. pounds of sweet and low a day when I used mm-hmm. two packets in my coffee. And it's like, fuck you guys. You ruined that's a good sweetener. <laughs> yeah, they ruined aspartame with their fucking lies it's, about, about it's rat like cancer. You know what I deal with in this house? MSG has been ruined. My wife is convinced MSG is like a terrible that's racist. for you oh, poison. Yeah. And I have I, bottles of it. 
Yeah, I, do too. I show her Back studies then. and she has like counter studies. And I, how do you tell someone that their studies are not as good as my Josh studies? Weissman or whatever has a video about it. Like the YouTube chef guy who's like, mm -hmm. he, he, he's like, let's talk about MSG. And he'll like break down a whole thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Uh, I put it in everything, monosodium glutamate, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I remember learning about it back in the day, and then like, oh, yeah, they put that MSG in it. That's why it tastes so good. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but you're telling me you got some secret ingredient that makes everything taste good. Why don't I have something? Oh, it's bad for you. Really? No. So I just ordered like three <laughs> pounds of it, and I put it in every soup and chili and, and everything yeah. now. And I don't know. My it's not at every like, like grocery store, MSG. It's not just on the shelf next to the salt or something. Yeah, you can get like the brand I have is Accent. It's like just right there next to the other spices. It's just a white powder. Like it's just a white powder, and like the marketing on it is like sixty percent less sodium than traditional salt. Yeah, and it's so, a different taste, but it's really good. It gives that umami flavor that, that you can also get from it does. things like soy sauce. And that's what it says on the bottle. It says wakes up food flavor, and mm -hmm. it does. It wakes it up. You we put that. What on about some foods without flavor, like a baked potato? It'll wake that flavor up if you like roast vegetables in the oven. And you want to arise that flavor? Throw some MSG on it, and it makes right. those. <laughs> and you and it will. It makes vegetables so much better. Oh, I I watched a video today, thirty minutes of this guy shitting all over the battle at Pelennor Fields, and he completely convinced me. He completely convinced me, dude. He he compared it to the books, and 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 he went step by step and shit all over it, and I was totally convinced. And but from I what disliked, perspective? I know this isn't believable. Let's pretend I don't know anything about the battle. The of end of Return Bellinor. of the King when they have the big fight at Minas Tirith. Like he said, first oh. of all, the idea that the Witch King is going to fly down and unhorse Gandalf and just speak a word and smash his staff is absurd because Gandalf is a Gaia and uh, and the Witch King is just a man, a corrupted man, but a, a servant and a, and, a, and a minion of a fellow Gaia. So he's a, clearly a whole step below Gandalf, but he's performing like he's two steps or or a step above him, and not not even just tied. And then they talked about how the reveal of the ghost army is in the books, and how like all hope is lost, like it's over. They're dying. They're not going to win. And it's only and at the last moment, like the orcs are like like see think it's their ships, and everyone looks, but it's 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 the flag of um it's you know the the tree with the seven stars or whatever. They mm -hmm. see the flag, and how like in that moment. Um, everyone's spirits are uh, like rise and it's this big, like, we're not going to die. They go from thinking they're dead to we're going to win like instantly in that moment. And you don't quite get it laid out that way in the, in the, uh, in, in the movie. I don't know. I really liked, uh, I agreed a hundred percent. I've always no, thought that ghost guy. army is the weakest part <laughs> by far, uh, because it trivializes everything that came before it. If you're laying that, he said, imagine you're this guy. And he shows a clip of that, um, that Gondorian soldier face down or stepping on his back as they flood into mm -hmm. the city. Imagine you this guy. You died five minutes ago. Oh, what's that? Green Army's here. None of that mattered. I had to sweep in the castle clean. Didn't even matter, is that? But, but if, if, you know, they let it play out like the books a little bit longer and they don't let Theoden have his speech. They, they put it where it's supposed to be. The, the death, death speech. Then... Uh, his point was it plays better. And I think I agree. I think I agree, Taylor. I think I agree. I've always hated that green fucking army coming in. It looks like shit, too. I mean, it was a movie from 2002. So I changed my mind on it looking like shit. But when I saw it a few months ago, I thought it looked horrible. But somehow when I saw it more recently, I thought that's what it, they were trying to make it look like. Like It does look a lot like the... Mon the ghosts that sit next to you at the haunted house in Disney mm -hmm. World. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I mistakenly thought they were trying to make the ghost look amazing. That's where their bullseye is. They're going for these sort of silly looking ghosts that don't move quite right. Yeah. So. More more kind of ethereal specters, just kind of I didn't like that liquidly moving and, uh, across. And I also liked his point about Liquid, the uh, the Nazgul and how they in the books they're more heard and not seen. They're sort of, they, I think they're described as always just out of shot and sight, meaning, you know, you can't shoot them. You can't even see them. They're just always just mm -hmm. around the corner in the corner of your eye, almost in the clouds above shrieking and how that was just this incredible psychological warfare and how when Gandalf was nearby, though, it would remove that sort of magic and, and the men would be emboldened and, and they, they do do a good job. There's this scene where Gandalf is rallying the men, like 
riding the horse through the streets. That's a great scene when he's like, right, like, like that's that that's awesome. But so you like your big you. like you just wish that they waited longer until they introduced the the ghost army. I wish all hope had been lost. Um, I, it had been the ghost army. Like they they showed like they'd lost. They had already lost on the on Pelinar Field. Like yeah. they they had already lost, and they were pushed back up to the seventh level of Minas Tirith. You had the troll banging on the door. Trying Dude, I don't to like get that in. either. He made the point that in the books, when uh, the men inside, when um, the men inside see that the ships have arrived, they're emboldened. The, and they don't stay inside hiding behind a door. They do what Theoden did in um, in Helm's Deep. They ride out and meet the enemy in that moment when they all like, help us here. Let's fucking go. Don't, we're not going to stay here and be rescued. They ride out. And his point mm -hmm. was like, that's a good moment when they, they're not hiding in the city. They're like, fuck this. And they, they leave the city and ride out and, and encircle the enemy. And, and and win that way with with their ghost army again, which I still say is just I, I don't Deus think Ex Machina. You could write anything you wanted to, but but he wrote a ghost army, and that's I hate that. That's true. I don't mind it, but like I also don't think that like the Gondorian soldiers that died died for nothing in the way the movie presents it. Because like I thought it was well established that like if they hadn't fought, like they would have died and been fucked, and they all would have been killed well before the ghost army showing up it's only because they fought so hard and like battled on the pelinor fields that like they were able to hold on that long like they were going to lose they had no it, chance of winning it didn't and if seem they like they were going to get in the city vehemently, they would have lost they they all got into the city easily grand smashed the gate down and they, they well, snuck like in. like grand well, is the thing really snuck. I, I, is grand in the books i don't recall yes hmm I read the book in jail, and I still I, I have very little memory of it. It's weird. Me too. I, I I only remember the things I hated about the book because Tolkien actually he's good. He's an idea man, but he's a terrible writer. So the books drag on. They're tedious to read. It is brutal. Three pages of how dark it is before they beat the spider chick. It, I remember it, Tom Bombadil and yep. enjoying the singing and, and the cute then the cutesiness of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, but thinking, it's probably best they cut this out. It's probably best we don't we don't need this song. This yeah, but less also because better. like Tom Bombadil was such a powerful character that like if he just decided to tag along, like it would have been a little op. Like what did he, he do? was basically a magic man of legend. Tom Bombadil who, is. There are a lot of theories about what or who he is. Whether he is mm -hmm. God. Or he is the stand-in for the writer. Um, he he's your o overpowered character. If he if he held the ring, it would tickle, and he think he he he'd, he'd have no interest in the ring. It'd be a silly little thing. He's like, like above it, it all. He's like he's not tempted by power and has no interest in engaging in the conflicts. They run into him oh. right out of the Shire before they even get to uh, Hobbiton or whatever the fuck like mm -hmm. that or whatever that little town is where Bree. they meet Strider Bree. Like between Bree and the the Shire, they encounter Tom Bombadil, and they're they're in they're being accosted by like skeletons or zombie ghouls, spirit specter things that are like taking their. That sounds exactly like from Harry Potter, the um, Dementors. Pretty sure mm -hmm. she just stole that. Um, <laughs> like Dementors attack Whatever. them, and uh, and Tom Bombadil sings, sews up, and he starts singing the. Tweedly two and Tweedly tay, here I come, have a wonderful day, and the and, and the Dementors are just like. Argh. And then just yeah. bounce away. Almost like, kind of like that. Like just like just skipping into the battle. Not not even yeah. really battle. But like he, like kind of sh he shoes away the demons like they're like, eh, get on out of here now, demon. <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a it's bizarre. If you've only if you watch the movies before you read the books like I did. Um, it, it's, it's I weird. forgot all about him. And yeah. that's crazy. Like there was a Dr. Manhattan all along who could have just saw oh, it yeah. easily oh but it yeah was above it all yeah yeah hmm. he could like control animals and there's a bunch of really long youtube videos about tom bombadil and uh oh, there, there's that one youtube channel that's called like nerdcraft or something but they must have 10 different videos what if uh galadriel took the ring for herself like what would happen and then oh it, yeah you know what if frodo took the ring and uh what if i Sam should watch that it? It'd be a great garden. Ooh, I, I might actually watch that one. That sounds cool. Yeah. Well, hmm. I enjoyed it thoroughly, gentlemen. Good um, times. 
click the jo join our Patreon down below. I need a hundred of you to answer your email so we can play our fun game. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, happy Halloween soon ish. PKA six sixty eight.